Today, we got a story of a teacher who actually tries to sue their 13 year old student for bullying them online. Like, imagine that as a teacher, you get so mad that some kid says something mean about you that you actually try and sue them. This is a pretty crazy story time, so sit back, relax, subscribe if you're new, leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing, and let's jump into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who submitted this story, Colin. So Colin was in sixth grade, and in one of his classes, he had this teacher who we're gonna call, uh, we're gonna call her Miss Sensitive, because bro, if you're actually out here trying to sue a 13 year old kid for calling you mean names online, then you deserve the name of Miss Sensitive. So we're gonna call the teacher Miss Sensitive, bro. Yeah, so anyways, uh, Colin, the subscriber, had a friend, and we're gonna call this friend Ben. So anyways, Ben kind of self-identified as a roast god. Ben was definitely the type of guy to have no chill, as some people might say, and go after literally anyone. Um, he was still like a cool dude to be around. I don't know, I feel like definitely in like middle school, like a lot more kids are ruthless, but they're not bad people. They just think like to be cool, they gotta be ruthless or whatever. But the thing is, right, Ben was like, at least he wasn't going up to kids and roasting them, being like, damn bro, those shoes look terrible, bro. Or wow, man, like, you should invest in some deodorant. That'd be the best investment for you bro like he's not doing stuff like that but anyways they all have a class together and they have it with miss sensitive so anyways miss sensitive was a, a you know a slightly larger woman there's literally nothing wrong with that man i mean you live your life bro that's all i'm gonna say so on this fateful day uh, miss sensitive was going around and decided to give out a pop quiz I don't, I've never actually received a quote unquote pop quiz before. I've always been informed before I have an assessment. I just think it makes a lot more sense if you're really gonna, if you're gonna assess someone, like if you're gonna give them a quiz or a test, at least give them an opportunity to study for it. Like I get that you're trying to check if they've been doing the work, but at least give them a heads up. I just think pop quizzes are kind of dumb. But anyways, Miss Sensitive decided that today was the, the day that she was gonna give out a pop quiz. And uh, this also happened to be the day that Ben just didn't do the reading. I know for a lot of classes, like English type classes, where you have to do a lot of reading or whatever, that, look, man, you're not going to do the reading every single day. I know that I don't do the reading every single day. And it's kind of like you got to do like a little risk reward. Like if you don't do the reading, you have more time. But then again, you also have a chance of going in and getting absolutely owned by the test or quiz or whatever, right? Or just like the, the I don't know, she'll like call in you to be like, oh, so Jimmy, what happened in chapter seven? You're like, um, I think chapter chapter seven happened in chapter seven. Like it's, I, I get it. Right. But you know, Ben kind of took the risk and he kind of got owned. Um, so sure enough, like, you know, Ben got it probably like an F on the quiz or a zero or just didn't like get good points on the quiz. He definitely knew that he didn't do well. And Colin was sitting next to him and Ben was like very visibly like angry. Like he was, was just like really like PO'd by the whole situation. So Colin is kind of like, yo dude, like you good. Ben's like, bro, Miss Sensitive is literally the worst. And Colin's like, yeah, that, that pop quiz was pretty unfair. So Colin did kind of feel like, okay, that pop quiz was kind of out of left field. I don't know why she did it, but I mean, hey man, it is something she did say that like, she will sometimes pull out pop quizzes on the reading, especially, especially if she feels like people were not or had not been doing enough of the reading, right? Like, or, you know, so she said it was something that she might do. So in all fairness, bro, like, Ben didn't do the reading and he kind of just paid the consequences, but bro was still pretty upset. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Ben was like, no, dude, like, Miss, Miss Sensitive is literally the worst teacher ever. Like, she sucks. And Colin's like, yeah, whatever, right? Like, yeah, I kind of agree with you. Miss Sensitive overall was kind of a mid teacher. Like, she just, I don't know, dude. Like, she would always, like, have these kind of, like, she would be, like, one of those English teachers that was, like, kind of, like, super arrogant and everything that she said kind of had this weird, pretentious entitlement about it. Like, she's like, oh, and what the author really meant here was insert something that just never happened. Like, I swear to God, like, English teachers will read a sentence, the red, like, the book is read, and they'll be like, well, what the author meant by this is that the the book has depth and perspective like no dude maybe the book was just read i swear to god if you actually were able to bring back these authors from the grave and bring them back and be like hey man so what did you mean by this they'd be like oh well can you not read dummy like the book is read i said the book is read because the book is read and, and the english teacher would be like no but i thought it meant that like no, no, no. yeah so uh this teacher was kind of like that anyways, but uh, Colin also just was like, okay, that's like all English teachers. However, when they got home from school, they had this really big grade group chat. So people had little group chats with each other, maybe Discord messages, maybe be along the lines of that. Uh, but they also had a really big uh, group chat that had basically everyone in the class. So they had like a class-wide group chat. I, I think I say grade-wise, I meant to say class-wide. 
So uh, Colin got back home. He was just kind of chilling, doing his thing. And he like picks up his phone and looks at it. And he sees that there's a new message in the, you know, the class white group chat. So they made that a while ago when they started the class, just, you know, because they're like, okay, if we have any issues or if someone forgets the homework or whatever, it's probably just a good idea to have everyone together in communication. Um, but it wasn't used casually. Like this group chat wasn't a group chat that you would go in and just like, I don't know, drop like a, anyone want to play duos on like Fortnite or something. Like no one was going to go and chat and say something like that. However, uh, Ben used this chat to vent his anger. Yeah, but however, so Colin checks his phone and he sees a message from Ben. He opens it up and he's like, he gets the message. It basically reads something in lines of like, Miss Sensitive is annoying and fat. <laughs> like it's just, I don't know. I think Ben was just really just PO'd that day. I think Ben was just genuinely annoyed. Just so like annoyed by the fact that like he got called out for not doing the reading, which he's like, everyone doesn't do the reading. The one day I don't do it, we have a quiz, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. So he's like, yeah, Miss Devon, or sorry, I always use Miss Davenport. Miss, anno Miss Sensitive is lame and fat and sucks. So like very childish insults, like whenever you insult someone just based on their appearance, Normally that means you really just can't, you have nothing better to like insult them on. Like if you go for the appearance, bro, I don't know, kind of just like, oh, so you're not creative or maybe you just don't have anything actually bad against them. But you know, Ben was just mad and like someone replied with like the skull emoji, like bro, another person's like, yo, chill out. <laughs> like people were like, all right, bro, like calm down. But like not a lot of people chatted. It wasn't like, oh my God, he called her fat. It's like, okay, it's a sixth grader, AKA also the kid who was known who, or not was known, but was the self-proclaimed roast god, so it wasn't as if this was out of left field for him. So most of the kids were like, all right, bro, chill out, whatever. And uh, yeah, Colin and Ben and everyone else in the class kind of thought that it was going to end there. However, somehow the chats got leaked. You know that meme where it's like me and the boys of the gamer chat got leaked and it's like all the people walking into the courtroom? Yeah, that's basically Ben here. Yeah, so somehow... The chats got leaked because, and, and, and they got leaked within a day. So someone must have snitched real heavy or real quick um, because the next day they, they come in and Miss Sensitive is looking all angry at all of them. Even though she knew who sent it, she was somehow like found a way to be mad at literally everybody and was like, guys, we need to have a little talk before we start class. And at this point, Colin didn't realize that, you know, Ben's message got leaked to her. So like Colin was like really confused. He was like, oh, did like, everybody cheat or something and then everyone got exposed for cheating or what's the word like what's going on here um, i'm just really confused so colin sits down and everyone else sits down and she's like guys i want to let you know that words have impact and that everybody is a person so at first colin's like oh did someone like is there like a bullying issue like i don't know stuff like in middle school and high school there will be a lot of like I don't know, a lot of like internal scuffles and bullying. And sometimes teachers will make, I don't know, this happened to me actually. I didn't bully anyone and I wasn't bullied, but I had, I had to sit in on big meetings with the entire grade because one person was mean to another person. So I need to hear about it. Like, dude, I'm just a good individual. I'm just like a good little boy. You know, I'm doing what I need to do and I need to waste my time listening to, oh, don't be mean. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no, no number two, Sherlock, bro. Like, of course you should be nice. Like, are you serious right now? This is how we're spending my time? Yeah, so, uh, everyone was kind of just super confused because, you know, Miss Sensitive was like, yeah, you know, words hurt, whatever. And then she's like, and also, just so you know, um, you know, your actions online and out of school are, can still get you in trouble in school. And at that point, Colin almost immediately realized what the situation was about. He was super confused, and still to this day, he doesn't know who leaked the group chat. But he was, like, super confused, like, oh, wait, uh, I I'm, like, 90% sure that Miss Sensitive is talking about what, like, Ben said because, like, Ben dropped in the group chat that she's fat, lol, or whatever, because he was mad at her. But how on earth, like, did this happen? So Miss Sensitive continues to go on to be all like, uh, eh, your actions out of school can have consequences in school. And like if, you know, all this type of stuff and says like, you guys should learn to be nicer to other people. And while this was like kind of like a weird, awkward interaction, 
Like, I don't know about you, but it's always just so awkward when, like, the teachers would just, like, scold you in front of everyone, especially if it was, like, a group punishment. Like, I remember this one time back in eighth grade, like, some kid had, like, peeped into another kid's, like, uh, stall while they're taking a number two, and they, like, got mad about it or whatever. And this guy, like, this, this guy, is, I'm sure he was just doing his job, but he brought the entire grade together, and he's like, guys... I'm so disappointed in everyone. I'm like, dude, I wasn't there. I was doing my math homework. I don't care if someone's being a little bit too curious and mega sus. Like, that's not on me, bro. Like, why am I, why are you disappointing in me? I'm doing what I need to do. Anyway, so yeah, while that whole interaction was a little bit weird, um, Colin just kind of assumed that the whole thing was going to end here. Like, uh, Miss Sensitive was going to have a whole, like, uh, like, my mightier than thou, be nice to people speech or whatever, and it was going to end there. He would have never assumed that uh, things were going to escalate, which they did. Yeah, so uh, basically what ended up happening was Miss Sensitive was pretty upset about this, which, I mean, look, if someone is calling you insults, and maybe it's something that you are personally sensitive about, like, I can understand why you take that personally. However, also one thing, these are sixth graders. These are little kids. They don't, okay, uh, not little kids, but these are kids that are still growing up. They're going to be mean. They're going to be cruel. And yeah, sure, reprimand them, whatever, right? Uh, but also realize you shouldn't take it that deep. Like when I read my comment section and someone's like, yeah, your videos are trash. And then I see their profile pic of some like uh, anime profile pic. I go in their account and they're making like Roblox shorts. I'm like, bro, they're just a kid. Like, I don't, I don't really care, man. Like you shouldn't care. However, Miss Sensitive was, like, really upset about this. So Miss Sensitive takes this whole issue to, like, you know, the principal's office or whatever, and uh, she was trying to get this kid, like, expelled. Like, apparently she was asking for some crazy punishment. Like, she was going for something really insane. I think the principal's office is like, oh, well, okay, this kid said something pretty mean about you outside of school. There's not a lot we can do about that, but if you want to have, like, him come in and we force him to apologize to you or make him do some report about how, you know, bullying is bad and saying bad things is bad or I don't even know. And, you know, the teacher must have been missensitive, uh, was like, no, he needs to be expelled. This is unacceptable. There's no redemption. Which, like, no redemption, bro. Dude is, like, 13. What do you mean? He's got all of his life ahead of him. Like, what do you mean there's no redemption? Oh, a dude says something mean when he's 13? Nope, there's no going back. He's officially a bad in individual. Nope, that's done. He's done for. Yeah, but apparently Miss Sensitive was really gunning for him to have a really, really bad punishment. And uh, she was really upset by how she didn't get what she wanted. So I guess Miss Davenport decided to take the law into her own hands, or take the punishment into her own hands. Um, and uh, this is where the title of the video becomes kind of integral to the story. Miss Davenport decides that she wants to try and open up an actual legal case against this kid for emotional damage. This is the most insane thing I've ever heard, by the way. So, uh, the way that they all learn this is probably one of the most inappropriate way. Okay, I don't mean, like, sus inappropriate. I mean, like, inappropriate, like, just to do it. Just, like, it's just so ridiculous. So, the way that Colin and Ben and everyone else learns, and the way that Ben learns that there's a court case going to be against him, well, doesn't get that far, as you guys will see, is in class, um, basically, Miss, uh, Miss Sensitive's like, you know what, guys, this is, like, a couple days later, guys, I want to teach you a little something. Sometimes the systems of law and governance, they don't, they don't do what needs to be done. So sometimes you need to take it into your own hands. And she then goes on to say, Ben, I know about the comment that you said to me. And Ben's like, um, what? Because <laughs> I, don't, I, I, I don't think Ben put two and two together. I think, so Colin was able to put two and two together and he was able to realize that, okay, well, you know, I, I don't know, like, uh, yeah, it was probably Ben's comment that would make the most sense in the context, yada, yada, stuff like that. But I think Ben just was, like, completely oblivious, and he's like, what? So when she literally calls him out in front of all of his classmates, he was just so stunned, he was barely able to speak. Uh, speak will be the secret word of the day, so if you made it this far into the video, comment speak in the comment section. And while you're in the comment section, check out the pinned comment on this video. There's a link to my Spotify page in which I upload all these stories as podcasts. And if you do listen to them on, 
If you do listen to these stories on Spotify as podcasts, it actually does help me out. And also, the second link in the pinned comment is to my second channel. I upload daily stories on there, but those are from Reddit, where these are from you. So if you just want more stories and you want to help me out, subscribe to that channel and check out some videos after this one. Anyways, let's get right back to it. So yeah, the teacher is legitimately, like, calling this kid out right now, like, putting him on the spot. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty awkward to read. Like, Colin is, like, super, like, awkward. Like, this is so awkward. He's just like, oh, this is so cringe. But Ben is like, oh, my God. So she's like, yeah, I know what you said about me, Ben. She said, you called me fat. And I'm super insecure about my weight. Like, okay, that's totally valid. Like, I know that, like, weight-based insults are pretty low blows because a lot of people deal with that stuff. Totally fair. But also, is the right context to do this? Like, is the right context to call this kid out in front of all of his classmates? Is that really the best way to go about this, Miss Sensitive? Are you serious right now? Like, yeah, sure. Pull this kid aside, be like, I know what you said, and just so you know, like, this could affect a lot of people if you keep, if you, if you, if you use these insults about other people and they, and they hear about it, it could really affect them. But no, let's call them out in front of the entire class. But it gets even worse. It gets even worse, man. It literally gets even worse. Because then she goes on to say, and I went to the administration, and you know, I wanted a fair punishment, but they were taking your side. They were just saying that you should apologize to me, or you should do, like, learning about, you know, harassment and bullying, and that is just simply not enough for what you did. The entire class is like frozen right now because they knew that Miss Sensitive was a, well, it's in the name, man, a little sensitive and a little weird and a little strange, but they were just like, oh my God, the overreaction on this is just insane. Yeah, so that's when Miss Sensitive decides to drop the bomb that, you know, she's like, you know what? You know, this, what you did to me was actually personal harassment and it caused mental damage. And like, okay, like it's kind of on you how you take this comment, especially remember this is some kid and you're an adult, but whatever, right? And she's like, so I've decided that I will be opening up an official lawsuit against you for a, like a mental, I, I don't, I forgot what I said earlier. It was what I said earlier. I don't think it was mental damage. It was like, um, emotional stress or something like that. Like, people actually have lawsuits about that. And maybe they're, like, legitimate circumstances, but I just feel like so many people could try and use, quote-unquote, emotional trauma, emotional stress. Like, is that even something you can actually sue someone on? Like, I think the teacher didn't even do their research on this. So the whole class is, like, silent, but even more silent than before. Because at least before, they were like, okay, whatever, this teacher's pretty weird, but now they're like, oh my god. Like, wait, 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 pause, 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 pause. You're gonna sue a kid, huh? Like, are, like, did I did I hear you correct right now? Are are my ears jammed? I, is there something? Am I hearing things wrong? Do I need to get my ears checked? Do I need to go to the doctor? Is there like a secret animal living inside my ears, blocking the noise going to my eardrums? Like, am I is is, is, is am I actually hearing this? So yeah, um, obviously Ben was like, what? <laughs> Which I mean, I totally get. And Colin even though he was kind of saw some of this coming, did not for a, a millisecond ever see this coming. Not even the slightest possibility. You know how you guys kind of like think about stuff really hard and you think, oh, well, there's like a 1% chance that this will happen. Like, you know, I don't know. You know this girl and there's like, oh, there's a 1% chance that she would actually, uh, you know, like, like me. And then you know it's so ridiculous and it never happened. But this is like a 0% chance of happening. This wasn't even on the books. This wasn't even on the possibility list. This wasn't even like, I, I don't know, man. Like, how could you come up with this? Even some random number generator or some random idea generator couldn't come up with something this random and insane. So obviously everyone's like, whoa. And then Miss Sensitive's like, all right, well, we're going to go back to teaching class because enough of class time has been used to talk about this. It's like, bro, huh? Yeah, so this was pretty crazy. And I love how, like, Miss Sensitive literally is like, oh, well, we've been wasting so much class time on this. Bro, you set the class schedule. You choose what we do. You brought this up. You're suing the kid. Like, why are you blaming everyone else, bro? Like, this is 100% on you, and it's pretty obvious. But yeah, then she tries to go back to teaching, just like nothing just happened. And obviously, Ben is like, just like, his face is white, like, all the, uh, like, he's freaking out. Which, like, look, I think, like, now, if, like, a teacher said, I'm gonna sue you for being mean to me, I'm gonna, I, I, I at least have, I would be, like, a little freaked out, but at least a lot of me would know, okay, well, this has zero merit, this is, like, grounded in literally nothing. However, I would still be like, okay, this is, at a minimum, going to be a headache to deal with. 
And the fact that they're my teacher and control my grade is pretty annoying. Um, but if, if I was in sixth grade and a teacher like heard me being like, oh, this person sucks. And then she's like, I'm going to sue you. I would actually freak out because I was pretty gullible. And also, it's a sixth grader, bro. Like, you don't think that they're going to like overreact on this? So obviously, he's pretty upset. And they all go back home. And when Colin gets back home, his mom's like, oh my God, like Colin, like, like, did you, did, you weren't going to tell me about, like, what happened with Ben today? And he, Colin's like, relax, I just got back. Whoa. He's like, okay, yeah. The teacher, is she actually serious about this? So basically, all the parents had been abuzz. Like, they had just been talking with each other about this. Because, I mean, understandably, bro, like, this is a crazy situation. Like, this is insane. Like, a teacher actually says that she's going to sue one of her students for being, a mean, like, a mean comment. So yeah, Colin's mom's like, well, yeah, all the moms have been talking and like, we're not going to let this slide, basically. Yeah, so basically the parents all came together and said, okay, if anything happens, we're going to band together and make sure that, you know, you know, Ben is fine. Like they, they agree that maybe Ben shouldn't have called the teacher fat. Like, yeah, that's not a good thing to do. But obviously what the teacher do, is doing is so like unacceptable and a billion times worse, right? So at this point, they were kind of thinking, okay, what the teacher said is pretty crazy. And uh, if nothing else happens, we might just approach the school administration to reprimand the teacher for just really stepping out of line. But for the minute, let's hold and wait to see what the teacher does. Because they were kind of thinking, okay, the teacher says, I'm going to sue the student. It was probably a scare tactic to like show other students like, oh, you should, I don't know, like, oh, you should fear me, you should be a good person, whatever. Terrible, terrible way to go about it, right? That is the most, like, ridiculous teaching method I've ever heard. Like, I've heard of a lot of some kind of, like, stranger teaching methods that are a bit more obscure. Like, you know, there's the flip the classroom where you learn at home and do work at school. Like, bro, that sounds like the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing. There's uh, teachers that refuse to teach the subject matter. My uh, ninth grade geometry class, I literally, the teacher would refuse to answer any questions, but that was on purpose. Like their, their idea was, oh, well, uh, uh, oh, they're going to have to learn it themselves. I'm like, dude, I'm not some like, it's 15th century mathematician genius who can just figure out like the Pythagorean theorem by myself. I'm not Pythagoras, bro. Well, I'm just some kid. But anyways, right. This is a crazy teaching. So they were like, you know what? We're just going to hold back and wait. So the next day in school, um, the teacher wasn't bluffing because in class, uh, Miss Sensitive, like in one class starts, walks up to Ben and hands him basically an official court order or whatever. I don't think it was like an official court order. I think it was like she typed up a statement pretending to be a lawyer or whatever, being like, you are being sued for being mean or something. But she tried to make it as official as possible to give off the vibe to everyone that she was actually going through with this. Which is just actually so insane. Imagine being so sensitive that like a like that you're act that your student says something mean about you, so they so you threaten to sue them and try and sue them and like show off. Like she's literally trying to have a power play to sixth graders. Dude, these are sixth graders. You're already in the position of power. You're the teacher. You don't need to be like, oh, well, I'm going to sue you, so you better do what I see. Dude, they're going to do what you say because you can get them in trouble. They don't want to go to, they don't want detention. They don't want a bad grade. Like, what? Yeah, so anyways, Colin gets back and Colin's mom's like, hey, little update. Uh, the group of parents who were tonight, we have demanded a meeting with the school administration because of what happened today in class. So yeah, apparently the parents all got together and uh, basically what happened was that they all got together. They demanded a meeting with the school administration. The school administration's like, sure. The school administration had no idea what was going on. So even when they just said, oh, the teacher was like calling Ben out in front of everyone else, they're like, oh, that's a little tough. And then they're like, oh, you didn't hear the best part. She's saying that she's suing him and gave him an official lawyer letter today. And the school administration's like, um, come again? Like, whoa, 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 come again? Yeah, so the school administration is like, whoa, like, that's really unacceptable. So, uh, yeah, um, let me just say the Miss Sensitive was no longer a teacher of that school, which some of you guys might be thinking, oh, that's an overreaction. They can't fire her over that. Yeah, dude, they totally can fire her over that. That is like a breach of like teacher-student trust. You're going to sue a teacher? And also, you might be thinking, okay, well, she might have been fired from the school, but that doesn't mean that there's no, like, the lawsuit won't continue. Dude, there was no lawsuit the whole time. She made up the lawyer. She made a fake lawyer name. She made up the whole thing, and it was literally just a scare tactic to try and, like, prove how alpha she was and how, oh, I'm going to get my bullies back. Dude, they're not bullies. They're your students, dummy. Like, you could have just been like, look, you should be a good person. You don't have to pretend to sue them. So, yeah, not only did Miss Sensitive lose, like, her job, she also lost 
lost the fake court case that she started by herself. Like, bro's taking infinite L's right now. So this all happened on what felt like a normal day. The subscriber walks into school, and there's a kid who the subscriber goes to school with, and we're gonna call this kid the spoiled kid. The spoiled kid is notorious for lying. This kid is known for all types of attention-seeking behavior. This kid is known for saying stuff just to get the attention of other people. So yeah, it's not really a surprise when uh, the spoiled kid came in on this day and made a little bit of an announcement. So anyways, they were in class, and the subscriber has class with a spoiled kid. Spoiled kid comes in, and he comes in all proudly. His chest is all puffed up and all that type of stuff, right? And so the subscriber is kind of looking at him and kind of just like, okay, man, like, what's up? And the spoiled kid is like, hmm, wouldn't you like to know? And the subscriber is like, I mean, I don't, I don't really care, but yeah, like, what's up, I guess. Like, he bro really had to say I'm guess afterwards to just to, just to kind of remind the spoiled, the, the spoiled kid that it's not that deep, bro. I really don't care. Anyways, though, the spoiled kid's like, you know, hmm. I actually have a girlfriend now. And at first, the subscriber's like, what? Because, uh, you know, I mean, this was a little bit of a uh, jealous reaction because the subscriber does not have a girlfriend. And uh, basically, no one else in his class has a girlfriend. Being the spoiled kid would more or less be the first person in their entire grade to have an actual relationship. And the spoiled kid was, um, or the subscriber, was a little bit like, wait, the, the spoiled kid? He got a girlfriend before me? What? I know that's a little bit of a, uh, I don't know, an entitled mentality. The subscriber admits that was not his finest moment, but he was genuinely just super, super shocked. Yeah, so anyways, right, the subscriber is low-key a little bit upset, which is kind of funny, and he does admit that this is kind of funny. But anyways, right, he's he looks at the, you know, the, the spoiled kid, and it's just, it's just it's such a look of, like, disbelief and uh, a little bit of shock. So at first, he really kind of... He's on the fence, the subscriber's on the fence if he wants to believe that the spoiled kid's telling the truth or not. I mean, he could have actually gotten a girlfriend. Like, it's not out of the question. It's not out of the realm of possibility. But anyways, right, the subscriber's like, who? And the spoiled kid's like, um, I want you to guess. And the subscriber, Loki, isn't trying to play these games, right? He's not trying to play these games with the spoiled kid. But at the same time, he is genuinely curious. So he's like, fine, okay, whatever. Fine, I will guess. Can you give me, a, like, you know, I don't know, a little bit of context? And the spoiled kid's like, mm, she's actually quite famous. And at this point, the subscriber's like, what? Because he's thinking, like, in his head, he's like, okay, let me go through the list of girls in our class. Who could he possibly be, you know, dating or whatever? And then when the spoiled kid says, here's the hint, she's actually famous, the subscriber's like, wait, 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 what? And the spoiled kid's like, fine. You know, I'm just going to tell you anyways. I'm dating Jenna Ortega from Wednesday. And the subscriber's like, bro, no, you're not. <laughs> just straight, no, you're not, dude. You're just straight up not. I'm so, I don't know how else to put you're just not, bro. And the spoiled kid's like, dude, dude, I am. And the subscriber's like, bro, you're so obviously not dating Jenna Ortega. And the spoiled kid's like, no, dude, I actually am. And the subscriber's like, dude, I'm not, okay, no. Nope, sorry, goodbye. The spoiled kid's like, fine, I guess you, you're a hater and you'll deny our love. Anyways, right, so the spoiled kid goes around the class and he starts telling people. So a lot of people have the same reaction as the subscriber, basically like, yeah, okay, bro, yeah, right, yeah, right. And here's the thing, like, most of the kids were not believing the spoiled kid, but, like, a few were like, oh, dude, really? That's awesome, man. Like, I watch her on TV. And uh, so the thing is, though, the, the subscriber was kind of getting annoyed. Because over the course of the day, because the spoiled kid and the subscriber have a few more days together, or have a few more classes together, the spoiled kid would be like, oh, it's so crazy how I'm dating, you know, Jenna. It's like, you know, you guys have to say Jenna Ortega, but guess what? I just call her Jenna now because we're just on a first name basis. And the subscriber's like, oh my god, dude, shut up. And he's like, oh, are you jealous of our love? And the subscriber's like, you guys are not in love, but she doesn't even know who you are. And the spoiled kid's like, nuh-uh, we're dating, so that's why she knows who we are. And at this point, right, the subscriber's getting kind of annoyed. Actually, lie. He's getting really annoyed. And so anyways, they're sitting at lunch in between classes, and the subscriber's sitting there and be like, dude, he's sitting with his friends. He's like, dude, this kid in my class is being so ridiculously annoying right now. And the other guys are like, oh, what's up? 
and he's like, hey, like, he, this kid is, like, saying that he's, like, dating Jenna Ortega, like, the, the famous actor from, like, Wednesday on Netflix. And they're like, dude, okay, he obviously isn't. The subscriber's like, yes, I know, but he won't shut up about it. And he keeps talking about how he's dating this girl and how, oh, I call her Jenna because we're on a first name basis. No, you don't. She doesn't know who you are. She doesn't know you exist, and you guys are not dating. And the subscriber's like, uh, like, just like, I, I, I just don't know what to do. And, and the other guys, his friends are kind of like, bro, it's like, it's not that deep. And the subscriber's like, I know it's not that deep, but it is that annoying. Because everywhere I go that I see him, he comes up to me and says, oh, like, I'm dating her. No, you're not, bro. Yeah, so anyways, right, the subscriber's just pretty annoyed by this. And so anyways, the next time he sees the spoiled kid, once again, the spoiled kid, without fail, is like, oh, oh my god, dude, it's just such been a crazy day. Because I, I keep getting um, c- phone calls from my girlfriend. Uh, I don't know if you know her, but she's in a little show called Wednesday on Netflix. It's just a little show, though. I don't, I don't think you'd actually know it, but, like, I just want you to know, I, I, I'm still getting a lot of calls from my girlfriend. The subscriber's like, okay, dude, you know what? You know what? Guys, circle around. So there's kind of, like, a crowd of people walking the hallway, so they are like, okay, someone says circle around. Bet, I'll do it. So anyways, right, the subscriber has everyone's attention now, and he goes up to the spoiled kid. He's like, let's make a bet. The spoiled kid's like, okay. He's like, let's make a bet for $10. And okay, $10 might sound like nothing, but I think these guys were in like sixth grade, and $10 is like, dude, if I saw a dollar on the ground when I was like in fifth grade, bro, I'd be like, man, I just tripled my net worth. Let's go. Anyways, though, so he was basically saying, look, I'll give you $10 if you can prove that Jenna Ortega is actually your girlfriend, which, pretty safe bet on this one. And the spoiled kid's like, uh, okay, well, what if you win? Which you're not, by the way. And he says, if you can't prove it, that we all agree that it's proof. He said, looking around at everyone, like, they all gotta agree, right? If the proof is definitive, everyone's gonna agree with it, right? He said, if you can't prove it to a degree that we're satisfied with, and we'll be generous, we'll be generous, then you need to shut up about her because she is not your girlfriend. And the spoiled kid's like, hmm, I can't, I'm already thinking about what I'm going to do with my $10. I'm already thinking about how I'm going to spend your money. Mm. And at this point, the subscriber's like, okay, whatever. So he walks over to his friend and, you know, he's like, all right, man, well, this is probably the best, the best route through this. Like, I mean, he obviously is not going to have proof. And uh, this is going to be the only way to get him to shut up about this because this has been extremely annoying. So the spoiled kid said that he would bring definitive proof in tomorrow, and that after that point, everyone will bow down to him. This is his quotes, not mine. Everyone will bow down to him, knowing that he is dating the super famous Jenna Ortega, and he is actually the coolest guy ever. Uh, No cap. That is the end of the quote. That is the end of the quote from the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend. Anyways, right, so the next day in school rolls around, and uh, not only the subscriber, it's not just the subscriber who's super interested to see the quote-unquote proof, but also everyone else is. Because everyone is pretty much in agreement that, yes, the the spoiled kid is lying. I I think it's pretty obvious here that the spoiled kid is not telling the truth, right? However, however, on the off, 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 off chance that he is telling the truth, right? They're super curious about that. They know he's lying, but, you know, they just want to know. It's it's like when the Ghostbusters come with quote-unquote proof. You watch it anyways, even though you know it's going to be fake, just because, like, maybe it's real. Maybe, right? Anyways, though, so the spoiled kid comes in, and uh, he comes in, he walks in super smugly, and people start gathering around him, and the subscriber walks up to him. He's like, all right, man, I'm ready to see this definitive proof. I'm ready to see the proof that is basically 100% guarantees that you are, in fact, dating very famous superstar Jenna Ortega. Right. Let's see it. Let's see this proof. I'm ready to be blown away. And the spoiled kid said, oh, oh, but you will. And he takes out his phone and he shows the subscriber this. Real quick, if you made it this far into the video, 
Uh, comment uh, spoiled down below. That'll be the secret word of the day. I want to see how many people made it this far into the video. If you don't listen to us on Spotify, make sure to go ahead and do that is the link in the pinned comment and the description. And finally, I announced this last video, but now until the start of summer, we're having a binge watch tournament. I uh, just basically to supercharge the channel up into the summer. Uh, we're having a little challenge of Every single day, uh, comment down below how many videos you binge watch today. So if you watch four videos, uh, comment down below. Here are some comments on screen right now of people commenting how many videos they binge watch. So thank you to those people and thank you to you. Anyways, let's get back to it so I can tell you what the super definitive proof that the spoiled kid apparently has that he is indeed dating Jenna Ortega. Oh yeah. So yeah, what exactly did the spoiled kid show the subscriber to show him that he has definitive proof that he is in fact dating Jenna, right? Um, so <laughs> he turns around and shows the most goofiest thing you've ever seen. So basically what the spoiled kid did is he went online and like Googled Jenna Ortega, went to the first Google image. Bro didn't even look, he didn't even try and find a slightly obscure, uh, obscure Im image or anything like that. He found like her headshot from like IMDB. Bro actually found the first image on Google Images. Probably used her profile pic from Instagram, bro. Anyways, he finds the most generic and probably the most popular photo of her. And then what he did is, you know how on Snapchat, there's like, oh, you can like cut someone out of a photo or cut something out of a photo and put them on the Snapchat. So basically he did like the crappiest Photoshop version ever because he used Snapchat and not actual Photoshop. He basically just like <laughs> poorly cut himself out and put him next to her. But it was like the worst cut out. The proportions were wrong. The spacing was wrong. The depth was wrong. Basically everything about it was just absolutely incorrect. Um, so yeah, sure enough, the, uh, the subscriber sees this and just bursts out laughing and the spoiled kid's like, what? Well, what do you mean? This is a photo of me and my girlfriend. This is, this is me, and my girl, Jenna. And the subscriber's like, dude, no way, no way. Everyone come look. So obviously everyone is super interested. They all walk over and they see the very obviously fake photo. Like it is just so incredibly blatantly, obviously fake. So everyone's kind of laughing at this point, and the spoiled kid's like, no, no, it's real, it's real. And the subscriber's like, okay, man, you know what? You know, if it's real, get her on a call right now. Get her on the phone right now. I mean, you said you were texting her all of yesterday, and the subscriber's, or the spoiled kid's like, um, well, I was, but I'm not going to show you her number for her privacy. And the subscriber says, look, dude, we're all not convinced. And you agreed to the deal yesterday that, you know, 10 bucks if you can prove it, but if we're not convinced and we're going to be generous, which we are, that photo is the worst Photoshop I've ever seen, then you know what? You need to shut up about her being your girlfriend. So the spoiled kid's like, fine, you know, you know what? I, I got a deal. Um, I'm going to text Jenna right now. And he goes on his phone and he's obviously just like opening and closing the calculator app. He's obviously not doing anything, but he's like, oh, I'm texting her right now. Oh, I'm actually texting her your number. She's going to call you. And the subscriber's like, what? And the spoiled kid's like, yeah, um, I'm, I'm telling Jenna to, to call you to, to tell you that she's really my girlfriend. And the subscriber's like, I mean, okay, I, I guess. So, so Jenna Ortega is going to call me and say that, um, you're, uh, her boyfriend. He's like, yes, that's what I'm texting you right now. Okay. She's going to call you in like a minute or two. Um, by the way, guys, I need to go to the bathroom, which is really awkward, but I mean, when you got to go, you got to go. Am I right, boys? Yeah, so obviously, right, the spoiled kid did not just accidentally happen to need to go to the bathroom, right? But anyways, the subscriber kind of let it happen because um, he kind of knew what was coming. He was assuming the spoiled kid was going to go into the bathroom and try and make a fake girl voice and be like, oh, it's actually me, whatever, right? Um, but the subscriber... Uh, yeah, here's the thing that uh, the subscriber remember that the spoiled kid forgot. They worked on a class project before. The subscriber has the spoiled kid's number saved, meaning when it pops up on his phone, it's, it's a saved contact, bro, and the spoiled kid totally forgot. So anyways, the spoiled kid, quote-unquote, goes to the bathroom, which huge quotations, right? 
Um, and then, you know, two minutes later, as soon as the spoil kid's gone, he just gets a, uh, he gets a call. And he's like, oh, I guess this must be Jenna Ortega, guys. And he takes out his phone and he, like, shows it to everyone and it says the spoil kid's first and last name. So everyone starts laughing a bit, but he picks it up. And, but wait, before he picks it up, he, like, ta- he, like, looks at something and says, look, this kid's definitely around the corner somewhere. We should definitely sneak up on him. Can someone, like, scout out and figure out where he is? So someone, like, nods their head and disappears. Anyways picks up the phone and the subscriber's like uh hello and then he hears the the worst the crappiest fake girl voice ever it was like hello um my name is jenna um i am dating this spoiled kid it's true and the subscriber's like really trying not to burst out laughing right now like he's genuinely doing everything in his power every drop of willpower right now is being used to make sure that he doesn't just d- dissolve into laughter, bro. He's like, oh, um, Jenna, oh, I didn't know it was actually you. And it's like, yes, I am actually Jenna from the show on Netflix. Um, don't ever question if I'm dating the spoiled kid again. He's so hot and cool. You guys should really f- think he's really funny. He's really funny. Uh-huh. <laughs> At this point, subscriber's like, okay. And the kid who he sent off to go find the spoiled kid, like, comes back and motions at him to follow him. So everybody, the big group of kids, including the subscriber, like, follow the spoiled kid. Uh, follow the kid who's found the spoiled kid. And they walk out, and they see the spoiled kid crouching down behind a corner, being like, Yes, so don't call me back and don't leak my number, because I'm really famous, and it would suck if you leak my number. So please don't do it. The spoiled kid's like, uh, the subscriber's like, spoiled kid. The spoiled kid like looks up and it's just like, he's on the phone making the voice and the subscriber's looking at him. He got caught red-handed. He, he, he quickly like hangs up. He's like, oh, oh my God. Like, did my girlfriend call you yet? And the subscriber's just looking at him with a blank face of like a really bro, really, really bro. And he's like, oh my God. Uh, so my girlfriend called you, right? She said, cool, right? <laughs> they're just, that's not, they're like, no. No. So, yeah, eventually the spoiled kid admits, okay, guys, I'm sorry, I lied. I'll shut up now. And, uh, yeah, the subscriber got what he wanted, a.k.a. the spoiled kid shutting up, and uh, all's well that ends well. So, if you want to support the channel, click on one of the videos on the screen right now. If you're listening on Spotify, listen to another podcast. With that all being said, uh, peace. Today we got a story time of a Minecraft kid who actually thinks the Ender Dragon is real and like actually exists in real life, as well as does a bunch of other stupid stuff, which is pretty funny. So yeah, sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing. Not even a joke, bro. You can actually get your free nothing leaving a like. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. So anyways, right, the subscriber who we're going to call Kevin, you know, he sent in this story and this happened to him when he was in third grade. He's currently in sixth grade right now, so this was a little while ago but basically right for kevin back in third grade there's this kid in his class and we're just gonna call him a minecraft kid and i have to say this every single time because i'll always get a comment saying oh my god connor i play minecraft do you hate me man bro 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 do you see the background gameplay right now obviously minecraft's a cool game i love that game bro like i don't play it all the time but look the parkour is cool. The, like, just going into a survival world by yourself is, like, kind of fun for a little while. Mad respect if you play Minecraft. But if you're a Minecraft kid, that's a whole different story, man. But anyways, right, so one day in third grade, there's this kid in, his, in Kevin's class who's the Minecraft kid. And I'm not going to give him a real name. I'm just going to call him Minecraft kid. Um, but anyways, right, one day at recess... At recess, right, the Minecraft kid, you know, was kind of like walking around, wandering around, and Kevin was hanging out with his friends, and then the Minecraft kid comes up to Kevin and his friends, and they were always kind of friendly, like they weren't enemies, they never fought each other or anything like that. But basically, right, the Minecraft kid wasn't, like, boys with Kevin and his friends, so it was a little strange that he came up to them. Basically, right, the Minecraft kid comes up to Kevin and his friends and says, Hey, man, did you know Minecraft is real and everyone's like bro what do you mean by that he's like bro trust me on this minecraft is actually real and they're just they're just like dude okay bro like 
what do you what what do you mean by that, bro? Like that makes no sense out of context. Even in the context, it would make no sense. But out of context, some kid comes up to you and says Minecraft is real. It's like, yeah, it's a real game you can play, like on Mac and Linux and Windows and Xbox. But what do you mean by real? He's like, bro, let me go harvest some wood for you guys. At this point, right, they're just like. What is this kid talking about? Because, look, Kevin and his friends, they play a little Minecraft right at that time. It's a fun game. It's a fundamental game that it's just great for the childhood, bro. It's just good for the spirit, good for the soul. Everyone could, like, everyone could gain something from going in a single player, single, single player, cheese, single player Minecraft world, just loading it up, I don't know, punching down some trees, you know, making a little dirt hut. Like, everyone's soul can grow a little bit from doing that. But the Minecraft kid basically says, hey, man, I'm going to go harvest some wood. Be right back. So Kevin and his friends are like thinking about it. And they're like, how does one harvest wood in Minecraft? Yeah, once you have an axe, like it goes by much faster. But I'm sure most of you guys know that one of the first things you do is you punch a tree to get wood. Yeah, you punch a tree to get wood. So Kevin and his friends were like, wait a minute. And then they look over the Minecraft kid, and he starts, he takes out his fist and starts whapping at this tree. Bop, bop, bop. And he's like, ow, ow, ow. And Kevin and his friend's like, bro, stop. Stop it. What, bro, stop, bro, stop it. Eventually, right, the Minecraft kid comes back with, like, a stick in his hand that he obviously found on the ground. He's like, all right, I successfully punched the wood. I got the tree for us. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to be raising awareness for a cause. And they're all like, okay, weird segue, but what's the cause? So they were all like, all right, what's the cause you're raising awareness for? And he was like, ender dragon awareness. And they're all just like, bro, what? He's like, yeah, I'm raising awareness for the ender dragon. And they're just like, bro, bro, what? Bro, what are you talking about? He's like, guys, it's a really serious issue. No one at this school is prepared for an Ender Dragon attack. By the way, comment Ender Dragon, uh, two words in the comment section. I'm going to heart as many of those comments as I possibly can. But anyways, right, the Minecraft kid was like, I've been looking around. I've been doing some research, some really intensive research. Uh, and all he can say is the school is not at all prepared for an Ender Dragon attack. And Kevin and his friends are just looking at each other like, bro, what is this kid talking about? And at this point, Kevin and his friends kind of look at each other and kind of smile a little bit. Like, they're trying to hold back a bit of a laugh. And the Minecraft kid starts to get annoyed. He's like, what is so funny about an Ender Dragon attack? Have you ever seen those things? Like, they spawn massive crystals to regenerate themselves. They ram into you. You know how much damage those things do? I mean, we don't even have supplies of enchanted golden apples, diamond armors, bows, and everyone's like... Or Kevin and his friends are just like, Bro, what are you talking about? And he's like, today in class, because, like, they had a class. So basically, Kevin and some of Kevin's friends, as well as the Minecraft kid, had a class together. So the Minecraft kid and, and the class was happening after recess, which they were just chilling at recess. And the Minecraft kid goes up to them, or not goes up to them, but while he's talking to them, he's like, I'm going to bring this issue up at class. It's super serious. And, like, you you'll thank me. You'll thank me. You'll see. You'll see what I mean, like, kind of like one of those people's, like, the world is ending yesterday, trust me, bro, like, you'll thank me or something, like, you know, one of those guys who's just like, bro, you must repent, the rapture is going to happen in one minute, and a minute goes by, I mean, the next minute, I didn't mean last minute, sorry, my watch was off, and, like, another minute goes by, it's like, the rapture's coming, trust me! Yeah, but anyways, right, Kevin and his friends are like, okay, bro, whatever. And then recess ends, and they have one class before that class they all have together. So Kevin goes to his other class, and he's actually, like, sitting in that class, not really paying a ton of attention. Because you know what he's thinking about? He's thinking about the class that's coming up next. And he's thinking about the Minecraft kid. And is he actually going to make a scene talking about Ender Dragon awareness, bro? Like, is he actually about to make a scene in class talking about how everyone needs to be prepared for an imminent Ender Dragon attack? Guys, it's coming. Trust me, bro. Sources. Sources. Trust me, bro. Like, you just got to print out one of those, like, MLA citation pages for your history homework or whatever, and it goes to, like, sources. Trust me, bro. Ender Dragon attack imminent. 
But anyways, right, class eventually ends, and Kevin kind of rushes to his next class, and he gets there, like, a little bit early, because he's so prompt to the class, because he's excited to see what the Minecraft kid's gonna do, and we get when he gets there, there's not a lot of kids there, but the kids that are there are his friends that have the class with them, and because they're also interested in what the Minecraft kid's about to do, if he's about to do that Ender Dragon awareness skit or whatever. It's not even a skit to the kid, like, he's taking it mad serious, but anyways, right... Uh, they're all, they all get there, and they sit down, and Kevin's like, are you thinking about, and they're like, yes, the Minecraft kid, and he's like, yeah. He's like, do you think you're gonna do it? And, and the kids are like, bro, I don't know, but if he does, I gotta be here to see it. I gotta get front row seats, too. Because the Minecraft kid always sat in the same seat. Uh, it was kind of like front of the class, but kind of towards the left, so they all sat, like, behind him only one row though because they wanted to get the perfect seats in the house for this whole thing but anyways right eventually the class does start and the minecraft kid is there and everyone else is there and the teachers like starts going off about like all right class we're gonna talk about european history and all of a sudden right the minecraft kid raises his hand and the teacher who's like about to start a lecture or something looks at the minecraft kid and is like Okay, um, okay, also, maybe it's not a European history class, they just, like, the, the person who sent me a DM, which, by the way, if you want to send in a story, Instagram or Discord server, both are in the description, he basically just said history class, and I was like, oh, because I'm taking a European history class right now, most likely they were not doing intensive European history in third grade, but let's just say a history class, right, the teacher was about to go on about whatever they're talking about, and the Minecraft kid raises his hand, and the teacher's like, oh, like, yes, and he's like, I have a presentation. And the teacher's like, well, I didn't really ask for anyone to do a presentation, but I guess if it's on your, if, if it's on history, like, sure, but keep it brief. And the teacher's like, yeah, so is it on history? And the Minecraft kid kind of like gulps for a second and says, yes. I'm sure his logic was, this is so important that like he had to, he's going to get in trouble, but he has to do it for the safety of everyone else. He has to lie for everyone else's well-being. He's taking one for the team, man, or whatever, right? But anyways, right, he's like, yes. And so the teacher's like, all right, go ahead. And the Minecraft kid steps up to the front of the room and Kevin and his boys are just sitting there like, dude, there is no shot this is happening. There's no shot I'm living in an era where this exists. Like, this is the greatest moment of all time. Thank God I was not born, like, six months earlier and was in a different class or whatever. And the Minecraft kid gets up and says, guys, this is really serious. And the room kind of goes quiet for a second because they're really, like, concerned. And the Minecraft kid says, everyone, the school is threatened there may be an imminent attack. And at this point, bro, everyone is starting to, like, panic. Even the teacher's, like, really worried about what where this is going. And the, the kid goes, yes, guys. The end of the wagon can attack at any time. And everyone's like, bro, bro. What? Like, I mean, no one said anything, but their face is just, like, turned. They're just like, what did this kid say? He's like, guys, I've done a lot of research. I've gone around the school, I've done all the checks, and we are in no position to withstand an ender dragon attack. And the teacher is just looking at him with this face of, bro, you cannot be serious. And he's like, guys, the ender dragon is extremely serious. I need you to understand, if the ender dragon attacks us, we'll be all goners. At this point, the class is like, starting to realize that this is like the weirdest thing they've ever been and like some kids are like holding back laughter most of them are just so shocked at this point that they don't have any emotions they're just they're just inter they're just absorbing information and data at this point they're just like what is going on and he's like guys i have a three-step plan to protect us from an ender dragon attack and at, like mid-sentence the teacher's like all right, that is enough, Minecraft kid. I, he said his actual name, but he's like, that's enough, Minecraft kid. I invite you to sit back down. And the Minecraft kid says, no, this is really serious. Teacher's like, Minecraft kid, sit down. He's like, no, I'm doing this for you guys. He's like, nope, this is ridiculous. The Ender Dragon is not real. And the Minecraft kid's like, what do you mean the Ender Dragon's not real? And he starts getting all mad. And the, the teacher's like, if you don't sit down in the next five seconds, you're going to the principal's office. And the Minecraft kid says, if that shall be, if you want to sacrifice the school, the students, me, and yourself, and not listen to my safety 
precautions about the Ender Dragon, then so be it. Send me to the principal's office. And he thought that this was going to, like, I don't know, strike a chord with the principal's heart, and he'd be like, oh, you're so right, or whatever. Nah, bro. He went straight to the principal's office. Lol. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some that recommended. Go watch. I'll be very happy. Today we get a story time with this Minecraft kid who spent tens of thousands of dollars on his parents' credit card, getting better gaming gear, getting like in-game purchases, so that he be could become the best gaming Minecraft player of all time. Yeah, his parents eventually found out, and uh, he got in a ton of trouble, and it was pretty funny. So yeah, sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's. Let's get right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who sent in today's story. We're going to call him Steve. And by the way, if you want to send in the story, Discord and Instagram in the description, that's where you can send them. Anyways, right, so Steve was friends with this guy, and we're just going to call this guy the Minecraft Kid. And I have to say this every single time. Obviously, if you play Minecraft, I have nothing against you. I mean, dude, look at the gameplay in the background of this video, like... Bro, obviously, I enjoy a bit of Minecraft myself. But anyways, right, so, you know, Steve was friends with this kid, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna call him a Minecraft kid, because he was super obsessed with, like, a lot of, like, mo Minecraft, like, multiplayer games, so, like, Bed Wars, Sky Wars, uh, any kind of game on Hypixel, or any of those, like, Lunar or something, any of those, like, sites, or not sites, but servers. And basically, right, you know, this kid was getting more and more and more into it, and while Steve and his friends, because they kind of had a friend group, it was like Steve, the Minecraft kid, and a couple other guys. I don't think I'm going to end up giving them a name, but if I need to, I'll do that later on. Anyways, they all did enjoy Minecraft, and that was kind of the game that they played together. They would hop on after school and after they did all their homework. I mean, sometimes they wouldn't do their homework, but basically, after school, they'd hop on and like all play like Bed Wars 4s together. And after a while, they actually got pretty good. But the thing was, right, the Minecraft kid got much better than all of them or like any of them individually because they all got better because they played a lot after school but the minecraft kid would stay up to like three or four in the morning just grinding minecraft getting better at it doing like 1v1 duels and such this kid was putting in like crazy hours just to get better at minecraft right and you know his friends including steve were starting to realize that like oh the skill gap between us is getting pretty large like maybe this kid is like like, I don't know if he's going to want to play with us. Like, we're not we're not keeping up. And, you know, anyways, as time goes on, right, you know, the Minecraft kid gets more and more and more obsessed and focused on actually doing well. And they actually, you know, started to see, like, his grades were slipping a little bit. Like, his the teacher was handing back tests, and the teacher normally hands it face up, but will occasionally hand it back face down if, like, the teacher's trying to, like, protect your bad score. And no one, like, the Minecraft kid never really got it face down before. He never, like, aced the test. He was never, like, crazy good. But he started getting all of his assignments back face down he wasn't turning in the homework all that kind of stuff so his kids his friends were like all right this guy's getting in a little bit too deep but anyways right there was a long weekend coming up and they wanted to have a sleepover on one or maybe it's just a regular weekend i don't totally know but anyways the weekend was coming up that's all you need to know and they wanted to like hang out together and kind of have like be able to like you know sleep over together and they will, they're all going to bring their laptops, so they're still going to play Minecraft together, and they'll go to, like, they'll bring a bunch of desks into his room, or they'll go to the basement or something. Basically, so they can all play Minecraft together, but not just be on voice call on Discord or something. Speaking of Discord, I have a Discord server. I'd love it if you joined it. I hop in there every once in a while. It's in the description, so if you haven't already. But anyways, right, so this one day they were all, like, or this weekend, they were planning on all coming together and, like, hanging out and playing Minecraft together. But anyways, right so you know the week goes on and the days go by and eventually man it's saturday and it's a pretty exciting day because you know steve is pretty excited to go over with his friends to the minecraft kids house and play a lot of minecraft with them because bro that was just like that's just what they did they had a good time eventually right the time comes around and steve steve's mom you know you know drives him over steve has his sleeping bag his you know his kit with his toothbrush in it and he also brings his backpack which has you know his gaming laptop which i think is like i don't know some windows something a mouse a mouse pad uh, i think he just used the built-in keyboard and you know he was pretty excited like he was kind of hyped this was going to be a cool night so anyways right when steve gets to the minecraft kid's house you know he's greeted by the minecraft minecraft kid's mom sorry he's greeted by the minecraft kid's mom she's like oh 
you know, the Minecraft kid, you know, said his actual name, is so excited for you to be here. If you want to go upstairs, they're actually starting to set up right now. So, you know, yeah, Steve goes up and he goes up there and the Minecraft kid and all of his friends are really like, they're taking out their laptops, they're moving desks around to make a mega desk office reference for anyone who got that. And uh, yeah, they were, you know, Steve got up there and it was pretty hype. I'm not going to lie. Like, if any of my friends wanted to do that, like, I know I'm 19, but that still sounds pretty hype, I'm going to be honest. But anyways, right, so, you know, they set up the desks and everything, and all of a sudden, right, you know, Steve is looking around, and he sees the Minecraft kid, he pulls out his computer to put it on a desk, and it's not like a laptop, bro, it's a desktop, and it's a crazy desktop. Personally, I don't know a lot about computers, so I might say some stuff that isn't, like, factually correct, but dude, he pulled out like a desktop computer that was probably like four to five grand. And especially when he started telling them the specs, it was definitely four to five grand. Just by like, because like the kid who like Steve, the subscriber, knows my like knows computers better than me. This computer was definitely in the range of four to five thousand dollars if you were to buy it. Uh, maybe if you were to put it together yourself, it'd be like three to four instead of four to five. But either way, it was a lot of big bucks that went into this. And he also took out his keyboard, which is probably like the most expensive keyboard you can get. It was like, I don't know, probably like three, four hundred dollars. He got like a very expensive wireless mouse as well, which is like, I don't know if any like people who play games actually use wireless mouses, but whatever, bro. He like took out all that stuff. And Steve was just like looking at it and ah, oh, like, bro, when did you get this? He's like, I got it recently. And, you know, Steve is like, bro, how did you afford any of this? Because look, these guys were, I think, in like sixth or seventh grade. So they weren't like, they didn't have a lot of disposable income. I think Steve had like $25 in his bank account from doing some lawn work for his dad. Like, he's like, yeah, this is a little bit more than $25. And the Minecraft kid says to them, so my mom actually invested in my career. And they're like, bro, what are you talking about? And he's like, I explained to my mom that like, this could be a really lucrative career. He probably didn't say lucrative, but he's like, I can make a lot of money being a Minecraft gamer. And she was really excited about it. So she decided to get me all this stuff. And while that story sounded a little bit suspicious, Steve honestly didn't care because he like, Hey, bro, like his friend had some cool gaming stuff. Maybe he'd be better. Maybe he'd carry him a little bit harder, get his like Bed Wars stats up a little more. Steve didn't question it. And all of Steve's friends that were there there as well also didn't question it. Real quick, uh, comment Minecraft down below. I'm going to try and heart as many comments that say Minecraft. Uh, I just want to heart, like give you guys some hearts as like a thank you for watching. And the easiest way is if I filter it by a certain word. And also while you're down there, if you haven't already, leave a like on the video. You'll get Get some good luck. Actually, you won't. You'll get nothing. I lied. Anyways, right, so, you know, Steve eventually gets his computer out, he gets it all set up, and, and, and everyone's set up at this point, they're all ready, and they log into Hypixel together. If you don't know, that's kind of like a server where they play this game together called Bed Wars, and they were planning on grinding out some Bed Wars together. Uh, they had, like, a strategy going and everything. And when the Minecraft kid logged on, before he used to be, like, an MVP, which basically was, like, a, it, it's a rank on Hypixel, you, you get, like, cosmetic stuff it doesn't actually help you that much but when they logged on they noticed that you know this kid was like mvp plus plus which basically is like costs a lot of money and it's like cost money per month and they're like whoa like when did you get that and the minecraft kid was like this is part of my mom's investment in my career and anyways right as they were in the game they noticed like they were playing some like bed wars or whatever and they realized that the minecraft kid had all these new cosmetic items like and like all these stuff in bed wars and they're like wow man like how did you get all this stuff? Because you can get a lot of those stuff for free. But he basically said, part of my mom's investment in me was buying a lot of mystery boxes. And they were like, dang, bro, like those mystery boxes cost like a lot, like decent amount of money. And he's like, yeah, she really wanted me to have the best chance, which is kind of funny because the cosmetic items literally do nothing to help you. I think like the pig bed break or something can help you a little bit if you know how to use it. But other than that, they really don't help you at all. And anyways, right, they were just kind of like going about their day, but they all realized that the Minecraft kid had basically a much, a ton of money went into this setup and his account. Because they also played on like Lunar Client, which is a specific type of like, a specific client. It, 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 it's like 
different from the Minecraft launcher, but it allows you to like do extra things as well. And they saw that he had all these like cosmetic items on, like he had a hat, he had like a cape or something. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is they, they saw that he had a much better gaming setup and he also had a ton of like in-game purchases. So they were having a pretty good time and everything seemed pretty normal. They were playing some Bed Wars, they were just grinding that out. Up until, right, they heard the Minecraft kid's mom scream his name. And I'm just going to say Ben for this because I need a name. But we're going to go back to calling the Minecraft kid the Minecraft kid after I call him Ben for this one little segment. So the Minecraft kid's mom was like, Ben, get down here. And the other kids, including Steve, realized this was pretty serious because... Probably the Minecraft kid's mom wouldn't have tried to embarrass him with his friends over unless it was a really, really big deal. Steve looked at the Minecraft kid's face, and the Minecraft kid's face went, like, white. Like, all the blood rushed out of it, because he knew that the gig was up, and he was in a ton of trouble. So, right, Steve doesn't, and his friends, they don't go downstairs. But, you know, I guess the walls are thin enough or it's just, like, it's easy and sound travels really well in the Minecraft kid's house. Because the Minecraft kid, like like runs downstairs and Steve and his friends they get up and they go like to the door to listen to hear what it is and basically right the Minecraft kid's mom is like like Ben or Minecraft kid either one right she's like Ben why is there a ten thousand dollar charge on my credit card and they're all just like oh my god like, she didn't actually invest in his Minecraft career. I knew that sounded suspicious. He just stole the card and paid for it anyways. And she's like, Ben, what is this? And Ben tries to play it off. Like, Mom, I have no idea. You probably got hacked. And she, like, looks at the credit card statements and sees, like, because Ben didn't, like, transfer to, like, another account or something. He just made a bunch of purchases on, you know, with his mom's credit card. And she's like, really? Then why is it a, you know, a X... $3,000 gaming laptop, a, you know, a whatever. She starts going through the purchases, and then she starts running through the purchases made it, and she's like, what is this Hypixel.net? And then she's like, wait a minute, I remember you talking about that with your friends. That's like the gaming server you're on all the time. You did do this! And then all of a sudden, right, they hear, like, Ben is, like, crying a little bit. He's like, I didn't mean to. And she's like, what do you mean you didn't mean to? Because, like, bro, here's the thing. Yes, you did mean to. Like, maybe you're, like, you felt... You can feel bad about doing something, but, bro, you definitely did. Like, you can't say, I didn't know what I was doing. Dude, you took the card, you put it in, you saw it say, this costs $3,000, $4,000, and you said, okay, that sounds good. You knew what you were doing. You can still regret it, but you still knew what you were doing. So then they hear, like, his mom, like, talking to the Minecraft kid a little bit more, but she's talking in a lower voice than, like, the screaming voice, so they could no longer hear it. So they all kind of, like, press up to the door really closely to try and hear on what's going on. But, you know, all they hear is, like, Ben's footsteps walking back up the stairs. So they all, like, run away from the door, run back to their chairs, and pretend like they have no idea what's going on. So Ben walks in, his eyes are all red, he's obviously been crying a lot because his mom is really, really mad. And he's like, guys, I'm so sorry, you're gonna have to call your parents to pick you up. I, I can't have you guys over anymore, my mom is forcing you guys to leave. And they're like, oh... Okay, they're not going to ask what happened because they know exactly what happened and they're not trying to, like, make this situation worse. So, yeah, they all call up their parents and the parents are really, like, at first, like, Steve's mom is like, did you do something? He's like, no, it's not me. I'll explain later. I'm all good. I didn't do anything, but I need you to pick me up. Steve's mom was a little bit upset because she was had plans to go to, so she had to, like, call the people she had plans with to, like, push it back by an hour. And so eventually, right, parents are coming up and picking people up, and at this point, right, Steve and his friends are kind of hanging out together, but the Minecraft kid is not hanging out with them because he's having a long conversation with his mom. And when the Minecraft kid's dad gets back, he's having a long conversation with his dad and going over like probably, oh, how much of a refund can you get and how much work will he be doing this summer to make it up for them and how much will he be punished for this basically. And yeah, eventually Steve's mom comes, picks him up. He's in the car, and Steve's mom is, like, almost a little mad at him because she still thinks it's his fault. And Steve is like, all right, do I have a story to tell you? 
subscribe if you haven't already and now go watch another video there's some on the screen some of the recommended go watch Maybe i'll be got happy a story by. time of a minecraft kid who actually tries to fight his teacher with one of those like stupid floppy like diamond sword toys that you got as a kid yeah i'm not even kidding so yeah sit back relax leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing and let's get right into it enjoy Anyway, so we're going to call the subscriber who sent in the story, which, by the way, if you want to send in stories, you can send them into my Instagram or Discord server. Jeez, I can't talk. Both are in the description of the video. We're going to call the subscriber Sophie, right? So anyways, Sophie is in sixth grade, and in this class, there's this kid that she's, like, not really friends with, but she's at least friendly with. And we're just going to call him Minecraft Kid. In every single video, I have to say this. I'm going to make it quick. If you play Minecraft, I don't hate you, bro. I mean, look at the gameplay in the background. Of this video but if minecraft kid has a different connotation to the name and if you've watched my videos enough you'll know what i mean when i say minecraft kid anyway so there's a pretty big test coming up and this was a math class so you know in some other classes you know it's a little bit more subjective the grading and this is big this is going to be pretty important later on um but in some classes such as english or history or maybe like some art class you know the teachers have a bit more say in how they grade it however when it comes to a lot of math classes a lot of the times you either get the answer right or you get the answer wrong like maybe with an english like essay the teacher likes how you wrote it. Sure, there's grammar and syntax that you could argue is important and will be kind of like you can't grade it like you can't like say, oh, the syntax is right or wrong. It just is right or wrong. But at the end of the day, right, I feel like math and a lot of sciences are a lot more, you know, you know, objective. You can't like give someone an A if they get all the answers wrong and give someone a B even if they got all the answers right. So this is like pretty important later on, but they're in a math class and there's a pretty big test coming up. And the kid in Sophie's class that we're calling the Minecraft kid, you know, he wasn't doing a ton of studying because he was, you know, he was grinding those Bed Wars levels. He was grinding that Minecraft. He was on that Minecraft grind. I don't know how else to say it. But anyways, right, you know, he wasn't really, you know, studying or doing the homework or anything. And he was definitely unprepared for this test, or at least Sophie thought so. Yeah, I guess Sophie didn't follow him back to school, like back from school to his home and like watched him to see if he actually did, you know, just played Bed Wars or actually actually did his math homework because that would be a little weird and by little that's a bit of an understatement i mean very very weird but sophie you know she had her reason she had her you know because of the minecraft kid not paying attention in class not getting any of the answers right never handing in homework and also some of her friends that were friends with his friends kind of confirmed that whole thing so sophie was pretty sure that the minecraft kid was probably not going to do well in this upcoming assessment Anyways, right, so a day before the test, the teacher randomly assigned people into pairs to study with each other, as he thought it would be a kind of an interesting way to study before the test, as the day before that, he kind of had like a kind of like a come in with any questions you want type session and by the end of the class the kids were kind of done asking questions so we kind of felt as if having another one of those might not be you know might not yield the the best results but he was like you know what why well, might as well like pair people up with random people and have them go through problems maybe they'll be exposed to different ways or of different kind of like ways to see these math problems, different ways to solve these problems. Maybe they'll, you know, discover that they don't understand something and someone will be able to explain it on a micro level. I don't even know, but he was just like, this will be interesting. So he did the names kind of randomly. I don't think he like went ahead with like a random number generator. I think he just kind of paired people up randomly. But yeah, Sophie got paired up with the Minecraft kid. And Sophie then got firsthand account of how behind the Minecraft kid really was. They were sitting down, the Minecraft kid and Sophie, they were going through some practice problems, and the Minecraft kid would be like, how do you do this? And look, here's the thing, there's no issue with asking questions, especially like in a math class, and even if it's very simple, like, that's totally fine. If you don't get something, even if you're at a point where you should probably get it, it's totally fair to just be like, you know what, I should, you know... It ask someone. I mean, obviously, like, look online is pretty good, too, and you don't have to, like, worry about being embarrassed. Shout out uh, the Organic Chemistry Tutor and also Khan Academy. But at the end of the day, right, if you got to ask a question, you got to ask a question, man. But anyways, right, the Minecraft kid basically asked a question about every basic component of every question they had for every single question. Like, he didn't even know how to start any of them. And at one point, right, about halfway through asking questions, he kind of just gave up and went to, like, doodling on a notepad. And, and Sophie was just looking at him like, bro, we have a test tomorrow. 
Like, I, because Sophie was pretty prepared. Sophie took the class pretty seriously, and she was at a point where she felt pretty confident because she had studied quite a bit for the weeks prior and had just been doing the homework and, you know, did well in the quizzes, whatever. And she kind of thought to herself, like, hey, man, like, I, I'm willing to answer your questions, and you're in a position where you desperately need, you know, some questions answered because we got a pretty major assessment coming up. Like, come on, like, I'm here to help. I'm literally just here to help you. But the Minecraft kid just decided to start doodling and he was like drawing a creeper or something. And she's like, all right, bro, whatever. Like, it is what it is. I'll just do some projects by, or some, not some projects. I'll do some problems by myself, whatever. Anyways, right, so the next day comes around and it's the day of the test. And the night before, Sophie actually ended up studying quite a bit and she was feeling pretty prepared. In fact, she felt like she was, if anything, a little bit overprepared. And sure enough, when the day of the test came, she sat down, she saw the problems, and the studying paid off. She saw, like, all the problems that were on the test were basically stuff that she already had, you know, had practiced many, many times, and she felt very confident going through it. However, she looked over towards the end of it, the Minecraft kid, and he was still on the first page, and he had not even started anything yet. He was kind of just, like, looking at the clock kind of like scribbling on the side like bro was not even trying to make any progress at this point so after the minecraft kid gets his test back things get really interesting as he gets really really angry with the results so i'm just gonna have the secret word now so if you made it this far into the video comment test down below t-e-s-t what? T-E-S-T, -E sorry. My brain kind of malfunctioned for a second. I'm going to filter the comments by the special keyword and heart as many of those as I can. So if you'd like to get a free heart and maybe farm top commenter on the channel, go ahead and do that. But anyways, right, Sophie was looking over and with like 20 minutes left of the test, the Minecraft kid was just like made no progress. He was not doing it. Like, understandably, if you don't study for a test, you don't do well in the quizzes and you don't do the homework, Bro, you're not going to be able to solve, like, math. You're not going to be able to be one of those, like, 1700s math ma mathematicians being able to figure out how math works on the day of the test. It's just not going to happen. And, yeah, with the Minecraft kid, it just didn't happen. So the next day rolls around, and the teacher had the test graded as the teacher was... I've had a lot of teachers in high school and so far in college that, bro, they take so long to grade that stuff. Like, I get it. I procrastinate on stuff as well. I, you know, want to have a life. Trust me. I understand. But, like, I get the grade for the test back, like, three weeks later. I'm like, bro, you only have 20 people in this one class, and you only teach one section. What are you doing? But... This teacher was pretty good. This teacher was pretty proactive. And the teacher had the grades for the tests back the next day. So, you know, the teacher's walking around handing back tests. And the teacher was, like, handing, like, some of them face up and some of them face down, which... You know, the thing is, the idea of, like, ha handing back a test face down on the surface makes sense because you're trying to, like hide the bad grade from everyone but the thing is if you don't hand back every test face down then people are gonna know that anyone who got a test back hand down like face down maybe they don't know exactly what their grade is but they know their grade is pretty bad so it kind of defeats the purpose but anyways the teacher wasn't really thinking about that as he went around handed sophie's test face up because she got a 95 congrats sophie the subscriber congratulations good work if you want to send in the story by the way discord server in the description go ahead and join it i'm there sometimes anyways good work sophie and the teacher's going around handing out the test back and eventually gets the minecraft kid and the test obviously face down sophie was sitting one row across from the minecraft kid and like one or two seats back so she was in the perfect position and the perfect angle to see when the minecraft kid eventually picked up his paper his test flipped it over she was able to see the big red circle with a 28 in it and this wasn't like a you know 36 possible points and you only get 28 of them this test was out of 100 the the minecraft kid got a 28 percent which for the fact of not even trying at all i think 28 percent might have even been generous but hey man hey man i've been there bro i've definitely been in the trenches down bad in some of my classes so i can definitely relate to that but anyways right the minecraft kid almost looked shocked and like oh my god this is impossible i didn't study at all why didn't i get a hundred percent like bro you gotta study for this i don't know how else to say it oh my god i didn't try and i failed this is so, this is so upsetting. I can't understand it at all. I didn't put any effort in and, you know, my actions, my actions have consequences. My favorite line from The Simpsons, one of my favorite childhood shows, is when Homer Simpson says, 
Oh, why do my actions have consequences? This is a perfect example of how beautiful that line is. But anyways, right, the Minecraft kid was not gonna have this. And today he wanted to show his friends his new, like, Minecraft creeper doll plush thing, as well as his new Minecraft diamond sword. And I don't know if you guys had one of those as a kid. I think I still have mine from way back in the day, but I'd have to, like, dig it up and I'm not at home right now. But anyways, there's these kind of, like, foam diamond swords that you, like, you can play with, and I used to get one as a kid. Anyways, the, the Minecraft kid recently got it, like a creeper stuffed animal thing as well as a uh, a Minecraft diamond sword and he brought both of them to school to show his friends. However, the Minecraft diamond sword was also still in his backpack that he brought to class. So he's looking at his paper and he like raises his hand. He's like, teacher, there must be a mistake. And the teacher looks at the Minecraft kid knowing very well that he one, failed and also two, failed because all of his answers were wrong. Like, this wasn't some mistake on the teacher's part. This man failed because all of his answers were basically wrong. If anything, the teacher was generous with the amount of extra credit the teacher gave. So at this point, the Minecraft kid is starting to realize that there's no coming back from this. That, like, the teacher, he's not gonna be like, oh, my mistake, you actually got 101%, like, that's my fault, I just, like, my hand slipped, you actually did really well. Obviously, the teacher's not gonna budge at this point, so the Minecraft kid says, you have disrespected my honor. And everyone, like, was like, bro, what's going on? Because the Minecraft kid didn't really talk much, and Sophie didn't have any other classes with the Minecraft kid, so she didn't really know, like, what he was like. But this was very weird, because this kid who just failed the test, like, got up, and it's like, you disrespected my honor. He reaches, then he goes, reaches into his backpack, whips out his new, like, floppy Minecraft sword, starts waving it around, and is like, we must duel. For my honor. Apparently, he probably watched, like, some kind of, like, movie from, like, medieval fights or something. And now he was like, everything is about one's honor and we must have a duel to, like, figure out whose honor is... I don't even know. But I, I, I can't follow the logic if there is none. I'm sorry. And the teacher at this point is this so startled and taken aback by the series of events that just occurred within like a 45 second window. First, the Minecraft kid says, you made a mistake when obviously he didn't. Second, he says, you have disrespected my honor. Then he pulls out a like one of those floppy Minecraft diamond sword foam things. And then fourth, he said, we must duel all with it. This is what did I say? Sixth grade? This is like a sixth grade class. This is in kindergarten, bro. What is going on? So yeah, the Minecraft kid is like, all right, the duel shall commence. And everyone is just looking at him like, dude, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and Sophie is so taken aback because she knew the Minecraft kid was maybe a little weird and he didn't study for the test, but she could not in a million years have predicted this at all. Like, even if someone said, yo, the Minecraft kid's about to fight his teacher PvP style with a fake Minecraft sword, she would have looked at them like, all right, buddy, like, all right, bro, like, I know for a fact that's not happening. And then, all of a sudden, the Minecraft kid shouts out, FOR HONOR! and glory and he starts running towards the teacher and is like goes up to him it's like pop 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 so it's like whapping him with the side of like the foam sword doing absolutely no actual damage except like plus 100 annoyance damage like the annoyance meter is going up really really quickly the actual damage bar nothing has changed but the annoyance bar that thing is shooting through the roof and the teacher's like hey stop it you can't do that. And the Minecraft kid is like, this is for my honor. It starts like whapping him pat, 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 with like the little Minecraft sword. And the teacher, the teacher must have had a bad day and also was just so shocked by the events going on because he grabs the sword, rips it out of his hand and like throws it across the room, super angry. At this point, right, the Minecraft kid is kind of snapped out of his like weird like Minecraft headspace or whatever and it's kind of snap back to reality realizing how stupid the thing he just did was and he's like looking up at the teacher and the teacher looks at him super angry at this point because the teacher is no longer in a state of shock where he just has no idea what's even going on the teacher is looking at him like you messed up kid and he looks at the minecraft kid and he says that's it principal's office now 
Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some that recommended. Go watch one. I'll be very happy. Thanks. Today bye. we have a story time of this Minecraft kid who thinks the wither is actually real and out to get him. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. So sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. So if you also want to send in a subscriber story, you can do so either to my Instagram or the Discord server. Both links are in the description. But the subscriber who sent in today's story, we're going to call him James. And as always, I get these names from the comment section, so leave a comment of a name you'd like me to use. It doesn't really matter. It can be your name, your mom's. I, I don't care. Anyways, right? So James, this happened to him back when he was in second grade. James is, I think, in like sixth grade now or seventh grade or something. He's, he's significantly older at this time. But this was back in the day when like, Minecraft was all the rage. And I don't mean like the second wave, like more recently, like 2019. I mean like the 2014, 15, 16 kind of era of Minecraft. That was a beautiful period to enjoy Minecraft, in my opinion. But anyways, right, so this point, James and his friends had just been discovering Minecraft. And we're going to call one of James's friends Minecraft Kid. And by the way, all these Minecraft Kid stories, they're not the same kid. I, I just call individuals Minecraft Kids. You got to understand that. Anyways, right, so one day James and his friends discover Minecraft, and it was like a huge new discovery to them. They all got super into it, but especially this one kid who we're calling the Minecraft kid, he probably got the most into it out of all of them. So, you know, at least when I first discovered Minecraft, it was like, it was the coolest thing ever. Everything was interesting. You load into a world and you, you build a dirt hut. That is so like exhilarating and now it's like run-of-the-mill whatever but you know they were exploring it they were learning about things and they didn't really have a ton of access to the internet at that time as their parents obviously limited them and the fact that they were even able to get minecraft in the first place was pretty was pretty impressive for them like they were surprised their parents budged that much but yeah so they were all able to install minecraft and they couldn't go on any multiplayer servers and they didn't even know how to do that that was way too technical for them but they just went on one day and they were like building like a hut or whatever like a dirt hut they didn't they couldn't even really play together because they couldn't make a multiplayer server or they couldn't join like multiplayer or anything but they were just all on their own worlds building stuff and creating stuff and you know on the first day of them doing that they would build like their first dirt hut and they'd come to school the next day and james would be like guys i found iron they'd be like what and he'd be like yeah i broke with a wooden pickaxe and it gave nothing and they're like dude I, th I I think you won, bro. I think you beat the Minecraft, basically, bro. Like, it is, I'm not trying to make fun of that because, honestly, that was probably the best era. Legitimately, that was the best era when everything was cool. But anyways, right, so they progress on throughout the game. And, you know, but one day, James and his friends have been playing Minecraft for, like, a couple weeks at this point. And one day, James and his friends are hanging out at, at, at recess or whatever, or they're chilling during a free period. I don't think he had free periods in second grade. I'm pretty sure he had recess, but I don't know. It wasn't specified in the story that was sent to me. So anyways, right, they're chilling, and James and his friends are there, and then the Minecraft kid runs up to them frantically and is, like, panting. It's like, guys, guys, I need to talk to you. And they're all just like, oh, my God, dude, what's going on? Like, is everything okay? Are you good? Like... Are, is someone, like, about to attack us? Is there a scary man in a white van trying to, like, get us all? Or, like, what's the deal here, bro? And he looks at them, he's like, Guys, guys, I was playing Minecraft, and I, I, I got access to the internet. And they're all like, Because <gasps> at this point, right, they don't really have access to the internet. He's like, I, I just had, I figured it out. I, I just had to go on quickly before my parents realized I was using the internet. Dude, to be fair, my mom didn't let me use the internet for a long time, and that is probably for the better. And I was reading this 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 message place, this message board, and they were talking about this 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 creature called the Wither, and they say if if you make it in Minecraft, it it'll come for you in real life. And bro, look, they were in second grade, so James and his friends were like. Is this true? <laughs> like, only in second grade would you not just flat out say, bro, it's a video game. You'd actually sit there, contemplate, and be like, is this legitimate? If I create this thing in Minecraft, will it spawn in the real life and come after me? Like, only in second grade, bro, would this ever happen. Which, like, I'm not even, I'm not even trying to, like, make fun of these kids, bro, because I was literally them. And to be fair, that was a great period of my life.
But at this point, right, James and all of his friends kind of just take him at face value. And I know it sounds absurd, but like, bro, is second grade, it is what it is. But at this point, right, the Minecraft kid, James, and all of his friends are standing there at recess, starting to freak out because they're like, dude, what if we, like, what if the wither comes for us? And then James like, guys, guys, hold, hold on, like you're fine, we're fine, as long as we, one of us, doesn't make the wither in Minecraft, there is not a chance that it will come after us. And even if we do, I am 90, 80, 50 percent certain that it won't actually happen. They're like, are you sure? It was on the internet, it has to be true. <laughs> as you shall learn, not everything that's on the internet is real. But anyways, right, so they all went back home, and they were, I mean, after school, of course, and, you know, they were kind of feeling okay, like, they weren't feeling that worried, they were feeling as if they were safe, because none of them were gonna go back and make the wither in Minecraft, they just weren't gonna do it, I mean, they didn't even know how to do it. And over the next couple days, you know, they eventually learn about the nether, and they build a nether portal, and some of them go in, and they learn, they find all these new things, and it's pretty cool, right, they're exploring Minecraft, they learn about the nether. And then several weeks later, they're just chilling at school, and it's James, the Minecraft kid who was initially, like, really worried about this and brought the whole suspicion to them. Some of the other friends as well, they were just hanging out. I think they were on the swings or something. They were talking about, like, oh, like, I just got, like, my first Minecraft dog yesterday. It, like, helps protect me against, like, enemies, and it's also just a nice pet to have around. They were talking about, like, oh, maybe I've heard of, like, name tags you can find in chess or whatever. And then one of the friends, we're gonna call him uh, Ben because I only need to give him a name once, right? Ben, like, walks up towards them with this look of, like, guilt and also terror. And they're just like, dude, what is wrong? Because, like, something is definitely up. And Ben just looks at them with this guilty expression, this look of, like, I'm so sorry. And he just turns to them, he's like, guys, I, 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 I've done something really bad. And they're all, like, they start to get really nervous. They're like, no shot, no shot he did it, no shot he did it. He's like, guys, I was, I was exploring the nether, I was grinding for hours on the weekends, and I got, like, a bunch of, like, with their skeleton skulls and they're like start to panic because they learn like from like talking to some of the, like the older kids at the school how to actually make a you know a wither skeleton or a uh, a wither and uh, they're like no dude don't tell me he's like i had to see if it was true i had to see if it was true and the second i put the last head on it started to like shake and like a color and glow and it started to go up and i just turned off the my minecraft game i haven't been on since but guys i'm so sorry but it's definitely coming for us now and at this point right ben uh the minecraft kid james and all the other guys are just panicking they're freaking out real quick comment wither down below or comment the wither you can do either of them i'm going to search the comments by the term wither and we'll be hearting as many of those as possible so if you want to farm some hearts maybe even get top commenter on the channel make sure you comment wither down below and leave a like if you haven't if you want to claim your free nothing man i mean that's a pretty good deal anyways right so at this point James, Ben, the Minecraft kid, and all of their friends are terrified. So the bell rings and they have to go back to class. And they can't pay attention at all because in their mind, they think that at any moment, they'll hear down the hallways like the whooshing sound of like the wither when it spawns or they'll see like wither skeleton skulls fly. At this point, right, they read a myth online and they believed it to be true. And they have no idea how it's gonna happen. But that almost makes it scarier because that means that the wither could strike at any time and at any place. So James decides to take matters into his own hands, and James is one of the guys that he went up and actually talked to one of the older kids who did play Minecraft, and by older I mean like fourth or fifth grade, and James decided that he was gonna go talk to the kid and really figure out like how to like defend himself from the wither attack. And James explains the situation to this kid who's in fifth grade, and obviously this kid who's in fifth grade is just like in his head, He's like, this kid actually thinks the wither is real and actually going to come out. Almost like, like the myth of, like, Herobrine. Like, that Herobrine was actually going to come and attack him if he made it in Minecraft. And he's like, this kid actually believes that the wither is going to attack him in real life? And the kid is a thing to himself. Because, like, you know, James is explaining the predicament. And explaining, like, man, what do I do? So, right, this kid in fifth grade because he could have easily said, bro, that's not true. It's a myth that you read on the internet. Like, why would that even be true? But the kid decides to mess with them just a little bit more. And the fifth grader is like, bro, 
bro, you did what? Oh my god, that's the first thing they teach you in Minecraft school. And he's like, you guys went to Minecraft school? And he's like, yeah, I totally did. It's totally real. And at this point, James is like, oh my god. And the older kid's like, bro, like, okay, there is a way to fix it. Just hear me out on this. And the older kid goes on to explain slash make up on the spot that basically what needs to happen is Ben, the kid who spawned the, the Wither, right? He has to return to the world where he made the Wither in, and he has to fight it. And if he wins, then the curse is gone. But if he dies in Minecraft, they're all gonna die in real life. And at this point, right, James is like, bro, that's so much pressure, man. And uh, the, the older kid's like, hey, you should have taken these precautions before spawning a Wither. So James runs back, tells his friends the unfortunate news, and they decide that that night they're gonna like gear up and go to his friend's house. It was like, it was a Sunday, it was a Friday anyways. So like, you know, they just quickly explained that they wanted an impromptu sleepover. And uh, yeah, James's mom was like, all right, well, I wish you guys gave me a little bit more heads up, but I was talking with the other moms and they think it's okay and we'll be hosting. So James, you know, tells the other friends, all right, bring your computers, we're gonna do this. We're gonna get him suited up and we're gonna fight the the wither and we'll be free from this curse and so yeah anyways right james and ben and the minecraft kid and all of the other you know friends you know they all go over to james's house and you know they get set up and you know they're about to they're preparing to open like the computer of you know ben and ben's like guys I, I, I don't think I'm totally stacked. I don't know if I can do this. And they're like, dude, what do you have? He's like, I have an iron sword and iron armor. And they're like, oh my God, like that's not enough to defeat the wither. And they're like, but you have to do it. And you know, at this point, Ben is like, all right guys, this is, this is it. I'm doing it. He opens up his laptop. You know, he fires up the Minecraft world. It's loading and they're all panicking. And when it opens up, right, the wither is about to explode because we don't know. The wither is like a boss in Minecraft that like when it starts actually like begins, there's like an explosion. And Ben is far enough away from the radius of the explosion that he doesn't take that much damage. But like, boom, the wither starts, starts firing wither skulls all around, all around the place, blowing up nearby mobs and structures. And Ben is just like, oh my God, and just turns around and runs away. However, he's hit by one of the wither skulls skulls that has the wither effect that is like still slowly taking damage away from ben and ben's like ah the whole time he's just running away taking damage being shot out being blown apart by this wither and everyone's like ben turn around fight it fight it fight it so eventually right ben does turn around he's on like three hearts left and they're like actually no run 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 and ben's like what do you want me to do and then the wither hits him he's taking wither damage he's on half a heart and then boom he dies and they're all just completely silent at this point. Because in their minds, that's a death sentence. They're all about to be executed by the Wither at any second. So what happens is when this happens, no one says anything. And then they all run down the stairs screaming. And at this point, James's mom is like, what is going Oh, and James's mom is obviously pretty concerned at this point because all the kids come down screaming and like crying and she's like guys what happened and and they're all like blabbering on like we lost in a video game now we're all gonna die because the weather's gonna come out and she's like why one at a time one at a down calm down please and james is like mom we're all gonna die and she's like bro what, what are you talking about because she started to get a little concerned and he's like okay and he basically explains that they're playing minecraft and that they looked online and it said if they made this mob in minecraft that they it was going to come after them and the only way to defeat it according to the older kid at school was that if they were able to defeat it in minecraft and that ben sucks at minecraft so he died to it and now they're all gonna perish in real life and, and james's mom is looking at them like guys that's not real. And they're like, but the internet said so. And then the older kid, he's like, yeah, the internet's full of lies and the older kid was messing with you. And they all stop like crying for a second. They're like, what? Subscribe if you haven't already. And now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some of the recommended. Go watch one, I'll be very happy by Today we got a story time of a Minecraft kid who lies to everyone about having a girlfriend and ends up getting exposed in front of everybody. And it's pretty funny, so sit back, relax, leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. So I'm gonna call the subscriber David, and by the way, you can leave a name down below that you want me to use. I got this name from the comments because I'm too lazy to think of my own, because if I think of my own, I'm gonna use Ben every single time. But anyway, 
anyways, right, so David, he was in fifth grade, and, you know, when he was in class, he was class with this one guy, and we're just gonna call this guy the Minecraft Kid, and by the way, not all of the kids in the titles that have, when I call them Minecraft Kid, it's not the same guy, it's not one guy living a crazy life, bro. I've had to clarify that once in the comments, I think, but yeah, the, the Minecraft Kid across all my videos are not the same Minecraft Kid, it's it's just a phrase, it's just a saying, but anyways, right, uh, David was in, was in class with this kid who we're just gonna call the Minecraft Kid. He was kind of known as the Minecraft Kid because he wore, he kind of reused the same Minecraft Creeper hoodie every single day, so people eventually just started calling him that. But anyways, right, so one day, David's in class, and things seem pretty normal, and it's around uh, Valentine's Day, which happened to be a couple days ago. Very sad day. Uh, I was on Instagram, every single story was someone posting with someone else, like, oh my god, my Valentine, and this reminded me that I am alone. Anyways, though, but to, in this story that took place a little while ago, it was almost Valentine's Day, and people were kind of talking about, like, oh my god, who has a Valentine's here? But since they're in fifth grade, bro, like, no one had a Valentine. Like, maybe, I think there was, like, two kids in the class that had, like, a Valentine. And that meant that, like, when the teacher wasn't looking, they would sneak in holding hands at recess, which was like, oh my god, is that fifth base, guys? Is holding hands fifth base? Like, that was kind of the level that they were at, which, low-key, that was a fun period in my life. I mean, the lady stores weren't it were any better back then, but it was still a pretty fun period in my life. But anyways, right, they were having a discussion on like February twelfth or thirteenth or something about like, oh, who has a date for Valentine's Day? And the Minecraft kid doesn't really speak up in class that much. He kind of just keeps to himself because you know, if he's allowed to have his computer out, he's gonna be grinding away at some like trying to mine some diamonds or something, bro. This kid has his priorities in check. No, but on a serious note, right, the kid, you know, the Minecraft kid kind of pipes up and joins the conversation because at this point, everyone was talking about, oh, does so-and-so, like, have a, like, Valentine? Oh, I heard Jimmy and Jessica, they're going out or something, which by going out literally just meant they were dating. And by they were dating, I mean everyone said that they were dating and they would hold hands occasionally if... That was super scandalous back in fifth grade. But anyways, right, the Minecraft kid pipes up and says, actually, I have a Valentine's this year. And they were all kind of, like, shocked. Not just to be mean, right? But they just never saw this guy talk to any of the girls, which, hey, bro, he's focusing on his crafting. He's focusing on mining some diamonds. I, I respect that. He's got his priorities in check, as I said earlier. But they were kind of confused because, like, the Minecraft kid had never really, like, talk to a woman before i know that sounds bad but like i mean he's had conversations but he never like tried to flirt anyone up or like he never tried to like get to know any of them like that he'd obviously have conversations like he would like if they were lab partners he wasn't like oh my god it's a girl and just doesn't say anything and freaks out the whole time he like could communicate with them but you know what i mean like he didn't like talk to any uh, he didn't like talk to any of them like that or that's what they thought before he said that so they were a little bit confused and they were like oh Wait, who is it, Minecraft Kid? And they said his actual name, but I'm calling him Minecraft Kid. And at this point, right, David was in the conversation, and David wasn't really that close with the Minecraft Kid, but he at least knew who he was, and he was also kind of curious because he felt the same sentiment as everyone else in the conversation, that they'd never seen the Minecraft Kid talk to anyone. And the Minecraft Kids ends up explaining to them that she goes to a different school. And that phrase has been memed so much at this point. But this was, like, long ago enough that, like, it wasn't a mainstream meme for you to be like, She goes to a different school, guys! She's real! Like, this kid legitimately, a couple years- or, like, whenever this happened a while back, like, legitimately was like, She goes to a different school, guys. Like, trust me. And no, he's, you know, he stayed pretty strong and she, and, and then people were like, oh, what's her name? And the dude's like, uh, uh, no, he actually thought of it a little quicker, but it'd be funny if he was like, huh, I guess I never thought that far. No, they, he said that her name was Abby and that she went to insert high school, right? And it's important that he said her name and the high school for later on in the story when he gets exposed in front of everyone. But for now, just know that everyone in that conversation, including David, knew the girlfriend, quote-unquote, massive quotations, name, and the high school that she attends. So a couple of days go by, and it's eventually Valentine's Day, and uh, at the school, there was, like, a little mailbox where you could, like, give people Valentines, and, like, the teacher would write a nice note and put candy in everyone's mailbox, but you're also able to give other people, like, Valentine's letters. Which, to be honest, if I was a teacher, I don't know if I'd do that. I, if I was going to do anything, it'd be every kid, like, writes 
a Valentine's letter to a specific person because then, you know, some kids are going to feel bad or they're going to be like me and not receive any other Valentine's letters. Sad. A anyways, right. Uh, but, you know, the important thing from that day is the Minecraft kid opens up his mailbox and sees one letter from the teacher and then one letter from quote unquote Abby, right? And he picks it up and he makes it very clear to David and the other people in the conversation, right, that, oh, here's my Valentine's letter from uh, from Allie. And they're all like, oh, really? And he starts reading it and he's like, dearest Minecraft kid, obviously says his name, not Minecraft kid, but dearest Minecraft kid, I love you so much. You are so cute, attractive, smart, talented, uh, humble, and wise. And at this point, like, some of the girls in the conversation were kind of looking at each other like, this is kind of a suspect letter. Because, like, they knew that, like, look, everyone is different. But the girls, like, you know, one of them, you know, if they were to have a boyfriend, they weren't about to write, you are wise, cute, handsome, smart, intelligent, the greatest man on planet Earth. Like, they weren't about to write it like that. They might have written a little bit like that, but more of, like, our relationship, how much I appreciate you, etc. cetera. Uh, it just felt a little weird to some of them, but they honestly couldn't pinpoint that it was fake at this point. However, right, throughout the entire day, the Minecraft kid starts to, like, he has a bit of an ego problem because he starts talking like he's like, oh, it must be so sad to not have a Valentine's on Valentine's Day. I'm so sorry, guys. It must be so sad because I'm feeling so good right now and just being like a complete jerk at this point. But anyways, right. So some of the kids that were having the conversation, David and some of the other people were starting to get a little bit upset because Valentine's Day kid knew that they didn't have anyone on Valentine's Day, which is totally fine, guys. Trust me. You can be just like me if you really want to do that. No, I'm just kidding. But like it, they, they were like fine with it, but they knew that like the Valent that the Minecraft kid was intentionally trying to grind their gears, like intentionally trying to like rub it in their face that he had this super awesome relationship. She just happened to go to a different school. So one of the girls in the group, she was like thinking about it and she's like, you know what? I actually have a friend who goes to that school. And his talk, because, like, a afterwards, the kind of the whole group got together again because they were kind of genuinely friends, including David, the subscriber. And one of the girls, I'll say it again, she said to them, she's like, guys, you know the Minecraft kid and his girlfriend? And they're like, yeah, he's been talking about it all day. It's so annoying. And she's like, you know the school that, you know, he mentioned that she went to? And they're like, yeah. And she's like, I was thinking about it. I actually i am pretty sure I have a friend who goes there. And they're like, oh, really? And, and then they're just like, all right. What, what was her name again? And they all kind of forgot until David was like, Abby, the name was Abby. And she's like, oh yeah, Abby. Okay, so I'm going to do a little investigation and I'll get back to you guys to see if this girlfriend is actually real. Because that letter, it was just a little suspicious. And to be honest, I think David and these other people wouldn't have really cared if the Minecraft kid lied about having a girlfriend. It was just the fact that he went like on like a complete rampage talking about how uh, he feels so bad for them because they're single on Valentine's Day and how, oh, it must be so hard for them. Obviously being just to like rub in their faces. I mean, being like, oh, I'm so sorry for you because you don't have what I have is basically like saying, haha, I have something you don't, which like, bro, that's pretty annoying. So understandably, they want to see if this kid's lying, because if this kid is lying, then that's pretty embarrassing. Um, and spoiler, or not really spoiler, because it's in the title, uh, he was. Before I go into the rest of the story, uh, I, I just want to say the secret word now, because it gets really, really interesting very quickly. Uh, so the secret word of today is girlfriend. Uh, please make it one word, so girlfriend. Uh, I, I'm going to search the comments by the secret phrase, which is girlfriend. I'll heart as many of them as I can. I can't get to them all, but I'll do my best. And it's one of the easiest ways to farm some comments or farm some hearts and maybe even become top commenter on the channel. Hey, man, anything's possible. So anyways, the next day rolls around and David, you know, he gets into school and once again, the Minecraft kid starts going on about how, guys, I hope you guys were okay yesterday because after school, I went, at, uh, well, I went out and had a fantastic date with my awesome, super hot, super smart, super popular girlfriend. And everyone's at this point starting to get a little, just a little tilted. And he's like, yeah, I'm so sorry to all the singles in here. And at this point, right, you know, David's like, bro, 
come on, shut up. You know exactly what you're doing. Like, and he knew exactly what he was doing. But his reign of terror was about to end because the girl, we're going to call her, I don't know, we're going to call her Kate, right? The girl who had a friend who went to the school that Abby, quote unquote, apparently went to, uh, st- Kate did a little research last night. She talked to her friend, and she really grilled her friend for some information. And as the Minecraft kid was middle of his rant in front of the whole class, the teacher was out or something or late or whatever, uh, you know, uh, Kate gets up, and she's like, oh, Minecraft kid, like, your girlfriend's name is Abby, right? And he's like, yeah. And she goes to blank high school, because I I don't know, I don't want to make up something, right? She went to X high school, whatever, right? And he's like, yeah, yeah, she does. She's real, by the way. And she's like, oh, well, that's crazy, because I actually have a friend who goes to X high school. And the Minecraft kid's face is completely, like, dropped. Like, he just lost all the coloring from his face. Like, it just, he went pale, bro. bro. He was starting to go a little blue. He forgot to breathe. He just knew he was caught so bad. And she's like, you know what's interesting? And turns to the entire class. You know what is interesting, guys, Kate started to say as she turned to everyone in the class. There is actually an Abby that goes to X high school. And the Minecraft kid's like, see, I told you she was real. And Kate goes on to say, but there's only one Abby who goes to that high school. And that Abby happens to be very, very good friends with my friend who also goes to that high school. And in fact, she's so close that we were able to all get on a phone call together or she was able to communicate somehow, somehow, right? Let's just say group phone call or something. And I asked her, and are you dating or even know this kid who goes to my school? And I said, your first and last name, Minecraft kid. She didn't say, do you know Minecraft, comma, kid? No, I'm just kidding. But she, and the Minecraft kid's like, starts to panic again because he knows he's caught. And, and Kate goes on to say, and Abby very nicely told me she has no idea who you are. And at this point, right, the Minecraft kid, he knows he's done. He doesn't even say anything. He just sits down. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some to recommend it. Go watch one. It'll make me very happy. Today we got a story time of a Minecraft kid who actually thought Hero Brian was real and out to get him. But there's a bit of a twist in today's episode. That Minecraft kid was me. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. This will be a fun one. Sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. This all started on my birthday back in fifth grade. I remember this. And uh, my birthday's in like uh, earlier, like closer to the start of the year. So I was only a couple days in the classes, and I remembered that what I wanted for my birthday was yes, my own very copy of Minecraft on my mom's old Mac, which was like, could barely run it at the time. Like it was even old for like standards back in the day. But anyways, I wanted a copy of Minecraft because I would always go over to my friend's house and they'd be playing Minecraft and I would like, I really liked the game, even though I never actually had a copy myself. And to be fair, back in the day, I kind of did enjoy watching people play the game. I kind of explained it now as like, I enjoyed, you know how you'll watch people play a game as you're kind of watching me play Minecraft right now and still have some decent amount of enjoyment from it, if not a different type of enjoyment. I had enjoyment from watching my friends play it, but I also wanted to play too. So I remember it was the morning of, I don't know what birthday it was, but it was my birthday morning. I walked downstairs and yeah, I booted up my computer and you know, there it was. I opened up my birthday card and it was like a code for the Mojang store to download Minecraft. And I went in there and I downloaded it. And I remember I, I opened up a single player world and I couldn't even move. I'm not even kidding. Like I had no idea what the jump mechanics were. Actually, I could move. I knew how to walk straight. I'd, I had no idea what the jump mechanics or the place mechanics or any of the other mechanics were. So I distinctly rem- remember falling into a hole, it being very dark, and then me having no idea what's going on, and then it was time for me to go to school. And yeah, of course, as time went on, I got better and better at my at, at Minecraft. I didn't continue to not know how to jump, even though I did just miss a jump one second ago, so you might be questioning me. But, you know, as time went on, you know, uh, I got better at Minecraft, I learned more about it, and I got super into it. I remember fifth grade was really the time when me and my friends were, like, super, super into Minecraft. That was, like, the game of the moment. I still really do appreciate the game. I don't really play it as much in my spare time as I, you know, my spare time is filled with things I like 
like to do. I don't have a lot of free time anymore, which is good because I'm, you know, doing things I like. But I will always have a deep sense of appreciation for this game. And it's also the game of choice I use for basically every single background video. Uh, I mean, there I haven't used non-Minecraft gameplay in a long time. But anyways, right, as I was gaining more knowledge about Minecraft, I was also looking stuff up. I remember I spent hours and hours on the Minecraft wiki, man. I probably gave that page, like, hours of watch minutes, if that's even a website SEO thing. I used to stand there all the time, and I remember my first time, you know, spawning the Ender Dragon. Of course, it was in creative, man. I... I haven't even done it, like, I've not beaten Minecraft legit, yet I'm pretty decent at PvP and pretty decent at parkour, and have played hundreds of hours of Minecraft. I've never beaten it legit, and I'm gonna do that one day. Anyways, as I was investigating into Minecraft more and more, let me just say I was a very gullible 5th grader. I was someone who took everything at face value. There was a lot of things that I learned very late in the game that weren't actually true. I don't want to make any references just in case I have younger viewers who still believe in certain things that I'm not going to even get into. I believed in those things for a very long time. Let me just say that the, the one thing I, I believed in was uh, associated with a certain holiday, but anyways, right, I digress. I believed in stuff kind of at face value, and I didn't learn that, you know, not everything on the internet is true. Or, yeah, that not everything on the internet is true, and you shouldn't believe everything you see. And that's when I started to learn about, ooh, Hero Brian, ooh. Real quick, comment Hero Brian down below. Uh, I'll try and heart a bunch of those comments to say thank you. Anyways, right. Um, yeah, I learned a little bit about Hero Brian, and I don't know if you guys remember ever seeing this as a kid or if you saw it recently, but there's like a doctored video of like Hero Brian appearing on a server, or there's like a photo of Hero Brian. I think I saw the photo first on like one of the forums, and then I saw the doctored video because of course I rushed to YouTube to see like, oh my god, is Hero Brian real? And I looked up Hero Brian real footage, and sure enough, I got that video of like Hero Brian like appearing or whatever, and I I was like freaked out. I was like, <sighs> what if he appears in my world? Because I'd always play like single player worlds and I'd play it kind of later to like later at night. I didn't have any siblings. So I'd usually just play it by myself kind of alone. And it wasn't that scary. However, the mobs did scare me for a very, very long time, a kind of embarrassingly long time. I mean, back, throw back to my days on Minecraft Pocket Edition. Um, even the light version, dude, I used to rock Minecraft free. Yeah, there was a free version of Minecraft at one point. I remember when the zombies came out, I used to build straight up and wait for day. And I remember that, like, I was looking into it, and I somehow convinced myself that my, that, like, Hero Brian, because I think at that time I believed a little bit in, like, the paranormal, and I, or at least I wanted to believe, because it would make my life more interesting. So I was like, oh my god, there's video proof. What if he infects my world? And I was like, that was a legitimate concern, bro. Throwback to the days in fifth grade when all the concerns in life, all the things that you were worried about, you weren't worried about school, jobs, relationships. You were worried about Hero Brian infecting your Minecraft world. That was number one on the worry list, bro. That was number one top concern. Yeah, that was my top concern at the time, and I remember I actually, like, began to freak out quite a bit about Herobrine, and instead of playing Minecraft, I just ended up doing more research about Herobrine, because I was so worried that Herobrine would come into my single-player world, and I don't know what he would do, but he would, he would attack me or so- I don't even know, bro. He would do something, so instead of playing, like, Minecraft, I would go on the forums and go on websites and look at YouTube videos. And yeah, there's a handful of people saying it was fake at the time. But you got to realize that back in the day, like people really kind of believed it. Like I'm sure most adults knew it was fake and a lot of them just hyped it up for like content and fun. Um, but more people believed it back then because no one believes it now. But, like people legitimately believed it back then. And it was like a legend at my school. I remember it. I learned about Hero Brian like before I even learned about Minecraft. I'm not even kidding you. Um, and I remember I was freaking out about it. So one day in fifth grade, I go up to one of my friends and uh, he might be doing something with me in the channel this summer. It's not the one, not my other friend um, who's on the other channel, but I, I have another friend who I've made some other stories about. Uh, and I remember going up to him and talking about Hero Brian and how scared I was. And I remember him just kind of giving me this look like, bro, kind of being like Connor. Hero Brian is not real. And I remember being like, but bro, I saw a video. And he's like, doctored. But I saw an image. 
also doctored, but people said it was real. People lined the internet. And I, and I was still not convinced. I was like, oh, how do you know? He's like, dude, there is so many videos debunking it. And also, it is a screenshot. Do you know how easy it is to doctor a screenshot? At this point, I had no idea what Photoshop was. I use Photoshop for all my thumbnails now, and I'm pretty well versed in it. But at the time, I had no idea what Photoshop was. I guess I had I understood that like things could be fake on the internet, but I was just such a gullible kid back in the day that I was like, what? It's on the internet? It must be true! Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some to recommend it. Go watch one, I'll be very happy. Bye. Today we got a story time of a Minecraft kid who bites his teacher after his teacher says Minecraft is stupid. Yeah, not even kidding. Sit back, relax, leave a like on the video, and let's get right into it. So we're gonna call the subscriber who sent in today's story, we're gonna call him Charles, right? And I got the name from the comment section, so if you want me to use your name, your friend's name, or really any name you want, make sure to leave a comment with that name down below. But anyways, right, Charles was in class, and he was in class in sixth grade. And in this class, there's a kid who we're gonna call the Minecraft kid. And by the way, I don't hate you if you like Minecraft. When I say Minecraft kid, I don't mean someone who plays Minecraft. I mean, bro, it's pretty obvious just by looking at the background of this video that I enjoy myself some good Minecraft as well. But anyways, right, one day in class, they were just like sitting there having a discussion and the teacher brings up the fact that they have a pretty major assessment coming up. And this pretty major assessment happened to be a project which everyone in the class is pretty happy about because, you know, whenever I get a project in a class, I'm feeling pretty happy because you can kind of do it whenever at your own pace. You don't have to study a lot of stuff to, like, do it on a test. You can always kind of have someone double-check your work. Uh, even though projects can sometimes end up being more work than studying for a test, you just feel more secure in the outcome, so everyone loves themselves a good project. But anyways, right, the teacher announces that they had a project, and the subscriber, Charles, was pretty happy about this and the teacher goes on to say that go back home think of an idea that you want to do and come to me the next day and we'll talk about it this class was a history class but specifically a history class focused on like great battles or whatever or uh, important battles of history and uh, you were supposed to, you know, come up with an, an idea, choose a battle, and then go to class the next day and give, like, a mini 30-second presentation. The teacher's either going to, like, okay it, or if they deny it, they'll hopefully, like, explain why. Be like, oh, you got to be more specific. Oh, I've seen this one so often. Can you please choose a new one? Or, oh, I don't know, like, this isn't exactly like a battle. Like, let me point you towards a better direction. I don't know exactly, but that was basically what was going to happen. And so anyways, the teacher then says, all right, guys, we got 15 minutes left of class. How about you get into small groups and discuss what projects or what battles you might be choosing slash researching for our mini presentation tomorrow, where I'll basically give you the okay to go ahead on like the two week project to do a big presentation about it. And so, you know, the groups are kind of randomized slash who you're sitting near, and it was Charles, two other kids, and the Minecraft kid, because Charles and the Minecraft kid weren't, like, that friendly, but the Minecraft kid just happened to be sitting next to them. So one of Charles's friends, like, was, like, oh, went over to Charles pretty quickly to join a group with him. And then there's another kid who was nearby, and the Minecraft kid was also nearby. So they all came together at kind of the same table, and we're like, all right, let's just have a little discussion. So they go around talking about what battles they want to do, and they keep going around, so the Minecraft kid was, like, the last one to kind of, like, share, and they go around, they say what battles, they say kind of why or whatever, and then the Minecraft kid talks about how he is going to cover one of the most epic battles on his multiplayer server with his friends. At this point, right, David Charles, I almost called him David, that was the name of the last guy two videos ago, um, and Charles kind of looks at a uh, Minecraft kid like, bro what are you talking about? Like, at first, Charles thought the Minecraft kid was joking that he was gonna, like, use his, like, Minecraft battle on his PvP server. He thought that that was a joke because, they're like, you know, that'd be kind of funny. Like, I mean, it's not, like, the greatest humor of all time, but to say, oh, I'm gonna go, my research project's gonna be on this video game battle I did, that's got some humor to it. That's funny enough. I'll give credit where credit is due. And, uh, but Charles kept looking at the Minecraft kid, and he started to realize that... This kid wasn't joking, man. This kid was serious. And the other guys start to realize this, too. And then the subscriber, Charles, says, Hey, you know, like, Minecraft kid. Obviously said his real name. He's like, hey, Minecraft kid. You know you can't actually, like, you're joking, right? You know you can't actually cover the most epic PvP battle on your Minecraft server. And the, the Minecraft kid says, 
why not? Like, it's a battle. This is battle history class or whatever. I'm going to do a presentation on probably one of the most epic battles of all time. And the kids kind of respond to that like, bro, I think we means a real battle. And, you know, Minecraft kids like, bro, what do you mean a real battle? Uh, did the thing happen on my server? Yes, it did. Therefore, it is real. Therefore, I can do it. End of story. So everyone at this point is kind of like, all right, like, we're not changing this guy's mind. Like, the fact he didn't listen to us is kind of just like, okay, like, suffer then. Fair enough. You do you. Like, Charles, a subscriber, his conscience was clear, bro. Like, he didn't feel bad about anything that was going to happen. And let me just say, quite a lot did happen. Because he warned him. He warned the Minecraft kid. But the Minecraft kid didn't care. And, you know, the next day rolled around, and they all went up in front of the class. And by the way, like, the way that this was done was a little weird. But, like, they gave a mini presentation with, like, one night's worth of research in front of everyone and then the teacher would like publicly be like okay you get the green light or no if i was a teacher the way i would have done it is like had this been done private or even i've just like asked the kids to like give the like just tell me about which battle they chose i guess he wanted to give them an option to do some research but i it didn't make a ton of sense to me but whatever man i'm not this teacher i didn't go to school for teaching like who knows man but anyways right so the next day rolls around and charles does his presentation about like i don't know something in world war ii and his friends do a presentation about i don't know some ancient roman battle that was consequential very standard stuff i think they went up there with like a slideshow with like four or five bullet points on it i mean i think this was like sixth or seventh grade i forgot what i said in the beginning um but this was like kind of like middle school whatever so there's not a lot expected and the presentations were going well and the teacher had actually greenlit every single one like there was no presentation that he was like oh you can't do that i think for one he might have been like oh can you refine this a little bit or maybe can you expand this like this is too too small of a scope but basically, right at this point, the teacher has, you know, greenlit every single project. And this is when the Minecraft kid walks up, all confidently. And Charles and his friends, or his one friend that joined him the day before, they're sitting next to each other, or they're sitting at the same table, however the classroom is arranged, I'm not totally sure. And Charles kind of leans over to his friend, he's like, Alright, what are the odds this Minecraft kid is actually going through with presenting the fact that he's gonna do, like, I don't know, a PvP server as, like, a battle for his presentation? Or do you think this kid chickened out? And the friend kind of, like, leaned back and said, Bradley, there's not a shot he's actually doing that. So things are about to go down, a.k.a., you know, the Minecraft kid is going to end up biting his teacher in front of everyone. But before we do that, I just don't want to interrupt the flow of the video. So just comment Minecraft. I know I said that, like, a couple videos ago, but just comment Minecraft. I'm going to filter the comments by the word Minecraft. I'll try and give a lot of you guys a heart. I'm pretty busy like life and i don't know life so i can't get to them all but comment minecraft down below i'll heart as many of them as i can anyways so right the subscriber and his friend were just like yeah no way this kid's actually going to try and present at minecraft like oh i'm gonna do like in his kind of like low-key serious uh, like class about like histories of like battles and stuff right he's gonna be like yeah so on my minecraft server i fought my friend and it was really important and i think it's important enough that i can do a presentation about it like bro it's just not gonna fly. I don't know how else to say it. It's just not gonna work. Anyways, right, Minecraft Kid goes up in front of everyone, and he opens up his, you know, his presentation PowerPoint, I don't even know, uh, Google Slides thing, and he opens it up, and it's actually like a slideshow instead of just like a list of bullet points. Yeah, so unlike all the other kids who just had bullet points, the Minecraft Kid had like slides, and on his first slide it said, the biggest battle in history ever, period. Like, a little period. I don't mean to be like, period. <laughs> no, I mean, like, a period. And it just, he's like, all right, guys, this is my presentation. And the teacher was, like, kind of intrigued, bro. He was like, oh, man, what is he going to do? Is he going to do, like, uh, D-Day? Is it like, what is he going to do for this one? Goes to the next slide, and it's a screenshot of the Minecraft kid, like, in his Minecraft avatar, standing over, like, a big pile of, like, like swords diamonds like armor basically when you kill someone in minecraft all their inventory like explodes all over the place and it's a screenshot of him standing over a big pile of inventory from his friend he's like this this is the biggest battle of all time at this point the teacher's like hey bro what the fuck and charles the subscriber is just like my boy <laughs> My boy did it. He actually did the Minecraft presentation. And the Minecraft kid goes on to present, basically saying, like, his reasons for why it's the biggest thing ever. 
And uh, the reasons were awful. I mean, I don't know how you guys expected the reasons to be good, but yeah, the reasons were awful. And the teacher looked kind of annoyed because the teacher was having such a good streak of like perfect presentations. Everything had been green lit, like everything was going so well. And then like the teacher was kind of insulted by this because he felt like the Minecraft kid was not taking his class seriously. The thing that he didn't understand is the Minecraft kid genuinely believed he wasn't like pulling a prank or wasn't trolling. Like, at least the subscriber, right, does believe that, like, the Minecraft kid wasn't trolling. There's a chance that he actually was just doing a big practical joke, but the subscriber thinks the Minecraft kid was legitimately, right, legitimately thought that this was an okay thing to do. And, uh, yeah, so then he's like, all right, teacher, kind of looks at him, and the teacher looks back at him with this look of just, like, bro. And the teacher looks at him and says, this assignment was supposed to be about important battles of history. Not about a stupid game that you played with your friends. And it was just the class went silent. Because the teacher wasn't like, come on, man. Like, I mean, the teacher understandably was upset. But it was just like this weird silence afterwards. Because the Minecraft kid, who was looking at him all eagerly, like, ready to be greenlit on his big presentation, right? Is just absolutely destroyed. And the Minecraft kid then mumbles under his breath. What did you say? And the teacher's like, what I said was I didn't expect a presentation on a stupid game. And in the middle of saying game, the Minecraft kid ran up to him and, like, bit him on the arm. And at this point, right, the subscriber and his friends are just completely blown away because they're like, dude, we're in sixth grade, bro. This is in kindergarten. What are you doing? And he's like, ah! And the teacher's like, what the fuck? Like, what, what are you doing? And he, like, the, the Minecraft kid, like, Un, 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 like, uh, he didn't like draw blood or anything this is like when there's like kids biting you or whatever he's like that's for disrespecting minecraft <sighs> yeah the panting sounds were because the minecraft kid was out of breath from running over to the teacher and biting him like that two like foot jog was enough to completely send him out of breath but whatever bro and he's like yeah that was for disrespecting minecraft it is not a stupid game at this point, right, everyone's like, oh, my God, this kid, bro, this kid, bro, oh, my God, <laughs> like, did, what? Is he okay, bro? Because at this point, right, yeah, this kid's going to the principal's office. He's probably getting some detention, if not getting suspended, because he did, like, attack the teacher, basically. Because if you bite someone, that that's an attack. And the teacher just looks at him with this look of, like, horror, because he's, like, shocked. Not, like, scared of the kid, because, like, whatever, he did, like, a stupid bite. But, like, just a look of shock, because he just has... He, he doesn't understand why anyone would even do this. Like, he's like, oh... What are, you, what are you doing, man? And then the teacher quickly composes himself after being shocked and is like, what you just did was unacceptable. Go to the principal's office immediately. I will be following you there to, like, give every single detail. And then and, and he, he quickly, like, whisks the, the Minecraft kid away. Is like, you're coming with me, and kind of grabs him by the shirt and walks him out of the door. At this point, right, the subscriber, his friend, and everyone else in the class is just sitting there in silence and after like two to three seconds after you know the minecraft kid and the teacher walk out of the classroom everyone breaks out into discussion of like what just happened subscribe if you haven't already and now go watch another video there's some on the screen some the recommended uh yeah go watch one i'll be very happy today Bye. we have a story time of a minecraft kid who was being a jerk to someone in class so two of the classmates decide to get him on his minecraft server and absolutely troll him so bad that he actually ends up crying so yeah sit back relax leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing and let's just jump right into it so the subscriber who sent in this story we're gonna call him simon right and i got that name directly from the comments from you guys suggesting a name so don't forget to leave a comment of a name you'd like me to use i'll try and do as many of them as i can and in this class right simon had another friend and his friend was bill we're gonna call him bill at least and also in this class was this guy who we're just gonna call the minecraft kid and I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory to why this story even happened in the first place. Why did Simon and Bill decide to go on the Minecraft kids' Minecraft server and kind of just wreck the entire place and slash mess with them the whole time? Because, you know, Simon and Bill are not necessarily mean-spirited people. They're actually, you know, they're not like the nicest people ever, but they aren't going to do something bad against someone if it's not totally deserved. And let me explain why the Minecraft kid kind of deserved what was coming to him. 
So basically a couple weeks before this whole thing happened because there had to be a decent amount of planning that went into all of this to actually troll him properly. The Minecraft kid, you know, he was kind of a big jerk to someone and I'll explain exactly how. So a couple weeks ago, they had a really major test in one of their classes, and it was a pretty difficult test, and you had to study a lot for it, And but it was still like, even if you studied a lot for it, you could still do kind of poorly on it, because it was a math test, and man, I study for math a lot, and I still, you know, I'm not perfect at it. It's still, it's hard. You have to problem solve. It's difficult. But anyways, right, there was like, you know, uh, you know, people took the, class, the test, and it was pretty difficult, and then one of the days, the teacher went around handing back all the tests. And there's this one kid in the class who we're going to call Ben, because he's not important later in the story and that's my fill-in name anyways right ben gets his test back and he doesn't do that well on it ben you know he fails the test and that happens man if that ever happens to you don't let that you know bring you down try and use that as a learning experience like experience to figure out okay what went wrong here how can i do better but anyways right ben failed the test and ben was definitely self-conscious about it he didn't want other people to know because to him it was pretty embarrassing and also to me it's embarrassing like i don't want people to know if i don't do well so understandably, right, Ben was trying to kind of heart hide his result. Like he saw it and he like flipped it over quickly. He's like, oh God, like that's bad. And he's going through the problems, figuring out exactly why that happened. And the teacher said to everyone, hey guys, I'm gonna have to go leave the room to go do something. I don't know if that something was. Maybe he went over to mine some Bitcoin. Yes, I'm bringing that joke back. You thought it was gone. You're wrong, bring that joke back. Anyways, for some reason, right, the teacher leaves the room. And the Minecraft kid who happened to do pretty well on this test, because he was decently good at math at this point, he was sitting right behind Ben and saw what Ben got. And when the teacher was out of the class, the Minecraft kid went up to Ben, grabbed the paper out of his hand, looked at it, and said, Everyone look! Ben failed the test! In front, I mean, basically exposing this guy in front of everyone. And it wasn't even like Ben and the Minecraft kid were like friends and you know, the Minecraft kid was, like, being hard and, like, trolling him or whatever. He was honestly just being a jerk to feel better about himself. Because, like, we don't know how well the Minecraft kid did, but we're assuming he did a little bit better than fail. But maybe he didn't live up to his expectations. So he was trying to, like, compensate by you know, I don't know, humiliating someone, bro. Like when I heard this in the DMs, cause by the way, if you want to send me in a story like this, you can do so either to my Instagram or discord server. When I was reading this, I was like, bro, this kid sucks. But anyways, right. The subscriber Simon and his friend Bill were in that class and witnessed the whole thing went down and they felt like that just simply wasn't right. And Simon and Bill kind of felt like, wow, like Ben honestly didn't deserve that and this Minecraft kid is kind of a jerk. And why he was known as a Minecraft kid is he ran a little Minecraft server that he basically spent all of his free time doing. And you know, the Minecraft kid had also kind of had a history of being a jerk behind before this, but this was kind of the final straw because both Simon and Bill were pretty good, were pretty close friends with Ben and Ben really took that to heart and it took him a while to get over like how traumatizing that was basically but anyways right the minecraft kid was known as the minecraft kid because he kind of owned and ran the server and it didn't have like it wasn't like high pixel didn't have tens of thousands of players at all time it had like max like five players and it was all kids from the class so it wasn't like this was his job or anything it was just kind of like a hobby but basically right he was just like he was on there and he was building stuff and he had other people go on and build stuff or whatever it was your standard minecraft server that you'd have with your friends I know I definitely have had so many different Minecraft realms slash servers with my friends. The, the list goes on, basically, right? But anyways, right, you know, Simon and Bill were like, all right, Ben is taking this really hard. We got to get back at the Minecraft kid. And what's the best way to get back at him? Troll him and his favorite game, Minecraft. And, uh, yeah, the thing was that, like, Bill, not Simon, Simon played a bit of Minecraft, but Bill was actually quite technically proficient when it came to Minecraft. And Bill said, or Bill said to Simon, like, I actually have a pretty good idea. Anyways, right, so Bill explained to Simon that, you know, if he was somehow able to get backdoor access, he would be able, be able to have, like, admin commands or something, or he'd be able to, look, I'm not technically proficient, I can't completely explain what happened, but Bill knew a lot about, like, servers and, like, being able to, like, I don't know, hacking or something. Dude, if you guys are super technically proficient, this video might sound, like, kind of goofy in the way I explain it. I'm sorry, I just don't know what I'm saying. I'll stick to what I'm told, basically. I'm not going to try and explain anything but basically right bill tries to explain to to simon that somehow if he's able to get some kind of admin or backdoor or some kind of access to someone who also runs the server he would be able basically they'd be able to troll the minecraft kid really hard because currently the server is in like 
complete like survival mode like it's really locked in or something and the minecraft kit wouldn't be able to get out of survival mode at least really easily however there was like some way that you know simon if he was like invited to the world and he also got some kind of backdoor access he'd be able to like enter creative enter all these commands and stuff and really like basically mess with the minecraft kit a ton for what he did i don't know technically how any of that works but that's basically what was said so there was another kid who was one of the Minecraft kid's closer friends who helped him, like, build the world or whatever. And this kid also happened... Oh my god, voice crack. One like equals one prayer. This kid also happened to be pretty good friends with Ben. If anything, this kid was better friends with Ben than the Minecraft kid. And he was pretty upset with the Minecraft kid for what he did. Because he wasn't in that class, but he was told what the Minecraft kid did... What the Minecraft kid did to Ben, and he was upset. So, uh, you know, uh, Simon and Bill decide that this kid, who he knows is friends with Ben, is the best guy to, uh, best guy to contact. And they basically go to this guy and message him, basically talking about how, hey, you know what happened to, you know, Ben. And he's like, yeah, that's so annoying. I'm so upset with him. Like, I'm really mad. And Simon and Bill go on to say, hey, like, you don't have to do this, but if you were able to get, like, a Bill backdoor access, we would basically be able to troll the Minecraft kid and basically... I keep saying basically, I'm sorry. And essentially, there we go, if you guys are going to be happy if I say essentially now. And essentially what we'll be able to do is troll the Minecraft kid and get him back for being such a jerk to Ben. And, you know, the Minecraft kid's friend being better friends with Ben and also mad at the Minecraft kid at the time says, sure, here's backdoor access. And he gives backdoor access to Simon. I mean, Bill, my bad. I keep mixing these things up, bro. It's hard, man. I got a small, tiny peanut brain. But anyways, right, the uh, the Minecraft kid's friend, who is better friends with uh, Ben, explains to the Minecraft kid that, oh, he's whitelisting Simon and Bill, adding them to the server. Because the Minecraft kid and Simon and Bill, they didn't necessarily not get along, but they weren't close friends. And the Minecraft kid's friend basically said, oh, no, they're cool. Like, I met them. I'm just They're really good builders. They're going to be a good addition to the world. Little did the Minecraft kid know that that he was about to get completely trolled by Bill. Anyways, right, so Bill and Simon, they both get whitelisted, and they both join the server, and they learn pretty quickly that the Minecraft kid will be on tomorrow, which tomorrow at this time would be Saturday, Saturday morning. He'll be on from, like, 10 in the morning till, like, 4 in the afternoon or whatever. It's basically what the Minecraft kid does on his weekends, and that's starting to be, you know, Saturday. So Simon and Bill decide, all right, what exactly are we going to do and how are we going to do it? And I'm not going to spoil that yet. You're just going to have to wait and see. Real quick, comment server if you made it that far, made it this far into the video. That is S-E-V-E-R. Uh, I'm going to filter the comments by server and I'll be hearting as many of them as I can to kind of say thank you for watching. Uh, it's the easiest way to farm some comments and get, to and get top commenter on the channel. So yeah, go ahead and do that. Anyways, so this is how it's going to go. And I'm not going to spoil too much, but I want to give you a little premise. Simon is just going to be there kind of watching the whole thing go down naturally. Bill is going to be there, but he's going to be in creative mode and also invisible. So anyways, right, Simon and Bill join the game on, you know, the Monday morning, and there's kind of like a TeamSpeak Discord server or whatever. So, uh, you know, Simon joins that, but Bill does not, right? Bill doesn't want any presence of him being there. So Simon joins the team speak on Discord or whatever, and the Minecraft kid is explaining, all right, so we're going to go mine some resources and maybe continue on the build. I think we're going to do, like, maybe get some withers and get some eye, like, wither stars or whatever. He basically is, like, going ahead and explaining what the plan of, uh, the plan of attack for today is. And the Minecraft kid is, you know, he goes into his base. And there's, it, let me explain this. There's a big base, uh, there's, like, a chest room. And I don't know if you've ever had this happen, but... If a creeper, this happened to me a couple years ago, a creeper wandered into my chest room. And if you don't know, when the creeper explodes, it destroys the chests. And when it destroys the chests, all the items inside the chests are now outside of the chests, right? So uh, it is insanely annoying when that happens. And so the first plan of attack was Simon and the Minecraft kid were to enter the chest room. And the Minecraft kid was explaining to Simon that, all right, so we're going to have to get, you know, this efficiency five diamond pickaxe or whatever. And we're going to go down to the cave system. And what I want you to look for is just get a ton of stone because we're going to make a really big castle building. I just need you to fill up inventory on inventory with sacks of stones. So they go downstairs to go get their picks. And it's a massive room with a ton of chests. And while that is happening, Bill is... 
in creative mode, and Bill is also invisible. And he waits till the Minecraft kid turns around. The Minecraft kid is in one of his chests, and all of a sudden, he spawns two creepers. And the Minecraft kid hears the hissing of a creeper, and in the team speak, he's like, no! He turns around, starts hitting the creeper with his sword, is able to kill one of them, but the other one, right, Simon is like pretending to try and attack the creeper, but doesn't do enough damage to actually kill it. The creeper explodes and hits eight of double chests so basically 16 chests and so many items spray everywhere that the game begins to lag and the minecraft kid is like damn it like how did this even happen there's enough torches in here for these things not to spawn i must have missed a spot god this is gonna be so annoying to clean up so the Minecraft kid goes, like, runs over a big pile of items, picks up a bunch of the items, and then opens up one of the chests to start putting them back. And then Bill, being in creative mode, and also being, like, hidden, or, like, uh, invisible, he gets a lava bucket, and he quickly lava buckets all the remaining items on the ground. So the Minecraft kid is really confused, he's like, why do I hear lava? He turns around, there's no, because he, so what, you know, Bill does is he puts down the lava and then he picks it up as soon as the items are destroyed. He turns around, there's no sign of any lava, but all the items are gone. And he's like, Simon, what happened to the items? Did you get them? And Simon's like, oh, uh, no, I was just looking in this chest, putting stuff back. He's like, how did they despawn so fast? This server's glitching out. So at this point, right, you know, the Minecraft kid is really upset. And he's like, God, this is so annoying. We lost so much progress, but whatever, right? It's fine. And he's like, all right, Simon, you got your pickaxe? And he's like, yeah, I got my pickaxe. He's like, all right, man, come with me. So they just, they start to walk outside. And this is where the big catastrophic event that really is the big, it, the biggest troll, right? They walk outside and the Minecraft kid goes first. And as he exits, he, he opens the door and he walks through the door, and he walks over a pressure plate that was not there before. And the Minecraft kid is like, what? Like, I don't remember having a pressure plate here. He assumes that, because if you don't know, there's two types of doors in Minecraft. One is the manual one, and one is like the electronic one or whatever. And the electronic one needs a pressure plate or a button to open. It's like a redstone door or something. And the manual one, it, you just need to open it manually. He's like, I don't remember having like an elect... I don't know what the actual name is. Sorry, I don't need... I don't remember putting a, a pressure plate here for like a, a redstone door. And then he hears a hissing sound, like a sss. He's like... No, 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 no. Basically what happened, right? During the entire morning, Bill got up at 6 a.m. He got up at 6 a.m., went into creative mode, and dug underneath all of the structures and filled it with, like, a ton of TNT underground, enough to completely craterize the entire place. And when the Minecraft kid and Simon walked into the base, yes, he did a little bit of trolling, but also he placed a pressure plate so that when they left, the whole thing would blow. And so the Minecraft kid is starting to realize, he's like, who could have done this? And the Minecraft kid thinks it's like a little bit of TNT, right? A little bit of TNT. But as soon as the first TNT detonates, the entire game crashes. Or it doesn't necessarily like crash, like they don't get booted, but like the, the pixel, like the frame rate drops to zero for like a solid 30 seconds. And then eventually, right, the server gets back up to space and like things start like rendering again properly. The frame rate goes up and Simon looks around and every single structure is gone it's just a massive set of craters like 30 blocks deep or maybe even like 50 blocks deep this thing was massive like simon put or bill put so much tnt that nothing remained except a little bit of the rooftop that didn't get destroyed by the blast and at this point right the minecraft kid is just in complete shock complete shock just he doesn't say anything and then he's like who did this kind of like kind of like a kind of like a crying whimpery voice of like who did this mixed with a bit of rage as well and he turns around and right bill is still in creative mode and he's still like pre like uh hidden right he's still invisible and the minecraft kid kind of like with tears wallowing up and like very angry turns around and sees a sign and on this sign reads don't F with Ben. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on the screen, some that are recommended. If you go watch another video, I'll be very happy. Today about. we have a story time of a Minecraft kid who punches a tree, breaks his hand, and the ambulance has to come to take him away to the hospital. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim you're free nothing, and let's get right into it.
So the subscriber who sent in this story, we're going to call him Jeffrey, and I got that name from the comment section down below. He went to summer camp with his best friend in the world, and her name was Grace, right? So Jeffrey and Grace, they've been friends for a very long time, and this was the first year that they were considering going off to sleepaway camp. And I know that the first year I went off to sleepaway camp was kind of a big deal because I had never been, like, away from my parents, or, like, with away from my house, too, for, like, a long period of time. So it's a pretty big deal when you choose to go off to sleepaway camp. But anyways, right, Jeffrey and Grace kind of felt that they were in the position where, you know, they wanted to do it, and if they were going to do it, they are going to do it together. I know the first year I went off to sleepaway camp, I went with one of my friends as well for the exact same reason. But anyways, right, Jeffrey and Grace, they choose a, oh, like, an overnight adventure wilderness camp, so they have kind of, like, cabins that they go to, but for one singular weekend, they all go off and they venture quote-unquote far away. It's not actually that far away. They make it feel like it's farther away by, like, making you loop around when you're walking there it's actually pretty close for like safety reasons but there's like part of the camp is they don't just sleep it's not just that they sleep away in cabins but that weekend they have their own sleep away far into the woods in tents and everything and it sounds like a lot of fun so jeff and grace they sign up together they get the same spot and you know school goes by and it's eventually summertime and the summer goes by and it's eventually time for the camp so anyways, right, Jeffrey and Grace get there, their parents drop them off, and they're ushered away into their group, and in their group, they have kind of like a cabin, and in that cabin is kind of the people that they'll be one, kind of at least seeing at night, they'll be having dinner together, and they'll also be going on the wilderness, you know, exploration, whatever trip or something. So they meet the people, and they all seem pretty nice. But there's this one kid who we're gonna call, as always, we're gonna call him the Minecraft Kid. And the Minecraft Kid was went on and kind of talked about how he was super excited for, you know, the event that they were having at the end of the week, you know, the sleepaway aspect, because he said he had been studying all year long of how to survive in the wilderness. And I'm going to spoil this uh, a little bit for you guys, but the way he's been studying is by playing Minecraft. And he's taken Minecraft to a T. He almost, he believes that everything that happens in Minecraft, I don't, I don't think he was like one of the other kids who believed like the Ender Dragon and Wither were real, but he basically believed that every other mechanic in Minecraft was essentially one-to-one. -one. And uh, yeah, at the time, Jeffrey Grace and all the other people in the cabin weren't 100% sure what he means, but the Minecraft kid would go on to elaborate this later. Uh, but anyways, right, the week goes on, and Jeffrey and Grace, they start to like get to know everyone in the cabin pretty well, including the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid, in some of these videos, is kind of like evil, narcissistic, like really weird. The Minecraft kid was like, okay, he's a little weird for what he's about to do, but he's like genuinely like he's just having fun, he's just a good guy. But, you know, he's on the younger side. He was probably one of the youngest people there, and for that reason, a little bit gullible, and believed some things that aren't true were true, as you will see, and as you probably can read in the title of this video. But anyways, right, the week goes on, Jeffrey Grace get to know people, and, you know, there's a lot of fun activities during the week, like, you know, it's a standard sleepaway camp, if you guys haven't been to one of them, they would, like, I don't know, they would learn how to build a survival knife, they'd learn how to properly make a, I don't know, a kind of like a teepee type thing in the forest using sticks so that they can sleep under it if they're ever lost in the forest or something. They learn how to like crush up acorns into like acorn pancakes and cook them or something. I, I went to one of these when I was a kid and while it was like a little jarring of an experience because I was so far away from like home and everything, in retrospect, it was really fun and I want my kids to do it because this is kind of a cool thing to do. But anyways, right? Eventually, the weekend comes, and everyone is super pumped. And, you know, the night before the whole thing happens, there's kind of like a camp, or there's like a, uh, like a camp counselor that is assigned to every cabin, and the camp counselor will be assigned with the group that goes. And so basically, the night before, the camp counselor, you know, sets up everyone, says, everyone come into the common room of the cabin, we're going to have a talk. And the counselor goes on to say, you know, the next couple days are going to be really fun. It's going to be a really interesting experience. It's going to push a lot of you guys outside of your comfort zones. But, you know, the more, most important thing is, you know, you follow basic safety. If you have any questions, please come to us. And if for some reason this is honestly not for you, we can always bring you back to campus. We're not so far out that, like, if something happened, we couldn't get you back or couldn't get help here. Uh, that's just for safety reasons. But otherwise, guys, tomorrow is going to be super fun, and I hope you have a good time. And everyone went to bed super pumped. So the next day came up, 
and they went to breakfast together as a cabin. They normally only went to dinner together as a cabin. And instead of going to the daily activities that day, they ate breakfast. They got, uh, they actually went to one activity. And the one activity was to make like a kind of a satchel or like a bag that they could like carry their stuff with instead of bringing their backpacks or whatever. So they go ahead and they make that. And then they, you know, they get into single file line and it's like, all right, guys, time to march off to the campsite. So the Minecraft kid, you know, is walking with Jeffrey and Grace as they're all walking to the campsite. And the campsite's probably, like, a 30-minute walk away. The truth is, the campsite was really only 10, uh, 10 minutes of a walk, but they made them kind of loop around a couple times to give it more of the feeling as if they were farther away, right? And during that walk, Jeffrey and Grace decided to talk to the Minecraft kid. The Minecraft kid was talking, and he's like, Oh, Jeffrey, like... I'm so excited to use all my skills, and Jeffrey's like, oh, like, that's pretty cool, man, and, you know, Jerry and the Minecraft kid turns to Grace, and he's like, Grace, did you know if you, did, Grace, Grace, did, did you know if you, uh, punched the grass, that you can actually get seeds from that, and that we can make wheat, and we'll be able to make bread, and Grace was kind of like, oh, okay, she knew for sure that, like, uh, maybe there was some kind of seed, but she was assuming that wheat plants were not growing around where the grass was. She kind of knew a little better that, yeah, no, that grass over there, that's not wheat, bro. And also, we're not going to be able to make bread just by getting enough seed, you know? It's just like, uh, I, don't, I don't think that's the case, dude. And the Minecraft kid turns to Jeffrey and has a very kind of solemn expression on his face. He's like, Jeffrey, we need to go over the survival guide. And Jeffrey's like, all right, dude, like, what's up? And, you know, the Minecraft kid is like, Jeffrey, I know it might be tempting, but do not eat rotting flesh. I know it should, like, you know, quench some of your hunger bars, but it's going to give you this poison effect and you're going to lose hunger much faster. And Jeffrey kind of looked at him like, bro, I have no motivation if I see, like, a, de a, a decaying and dead animal to pick it up and munch it, like... Thank you for letting me know, bro, but I was probably not going to do that beforehand. Like, I appreciate you letting me know about that, but I, I don't know how else to say it, dude, but I'm just not going to be eating a decaying corpse anytime soon if it's not like, you know, I don't know, like normal meat that's prepared and everything. Thank you, though, but I think I'll pass. So the Minecraft kid said, all right, guys, so I'm going to run ahead and talk to some of the other people, but please let me know if you see any lava pools around here because we might even try and make some obsidian we might try and make some some uh, some stone that we can use to build a house because there's probably gonna be a water source nearby but a lava source a lava spring sounds pretty rare to me i know it's more common in minecraft but i feel like open lava is going to be a little bit more rare where we are and jeffrey and grace look at each other like bro yeah, no, we're not finding any lava, but okay. And he's like, hey, if you find any, no pressure, but just let me know. And the Minecraft kid said, all right, guys, see you guys around. And he runs up to the front. And Jeffrey and Grace kind of look at each other like, okay, I think we know where this kid has been studying for the last couple months. I think we have a sneaking suspicion to where this kid has been getting his information from. Real quick, the secret word of the day is going to be lava, L-A-V-A. -A. So if you want a free heart on the channel, all you got to do is go down and comment lava down below. I won't be able to heart every single comment, but I'm going to do my best because I'm going to filter the comments by the word lava and heart as many as I can. So if you want to farm some hearts and maybe get top commenter, go ahead and do that right now. But anyways, right, eventually the whole team makes it to the campsite. And, you know, what they see around them is a bunch of trees, it's the middle of the forest, but they also see kind of like a bit of like a lake river type thing. It's running water, the current isn't so strong that they can't go in it, but it's also not stagnant and full of like pond scum and like mosquito eggs and gross stuff like that. So it's a really good location, obviously picked by the campsite before and probably checked for like, I don't know, bears and other types of stuff beforehand. But anyways, they sit down and they kind of like figure out their, you know, their whereabouts and, you know, eventually the team decides that, all right, we want to set up camp there. And the Minecraft kid is like, all right, guys, so if we want to make like a, uh, if we want to make a house, and they all kind of looked at him like, house, we got to get some wood first. And they're all like, yeah, we actually probably do need some sticks if we want to ma make like a lean-to or TP or whatever those things are called. You know, kind of like the collection of sticks. I made one of those when I went to, you know, summer camp too. It's like, you lean them all, you lean a bunch of sticks against the side of something, and it makes kind of a protection from the elements. And the kid's like, all right, yeah, I'm going to go get some wood to go make a house. So the Minecraft kid runs pretty far away, but not so far away that they can't see what he's doing. But they're not paying super close attention to him. 
So this is where things start to get pretty interesting. So Grace is watching the Minecraft kid because she's kind of just, I don't know, she's kind of just bored or whatever. Or for some reason, she happens to be looking at where he's going. At this point, right, Jeffrey's turned around with all the other guys. And Grace watches as instead of the Minecraft kid going around collecting sticks, he goes up to this tree. It's not the thickest tree ever. It's not like a super thick tree that obviously you can't punch and it'll break or whatever. But he goes up to a decently sized tree. It's probably like 50 years old or whatever. So not a pretty young tree. But anyways, he goes up to the tree and he raises his fist. And at this point, Grace is like, no, Shoddy actually does this. And she starts to say, hey, Jeffrey, take a look at this. And Jeffrey's like, what? And that's when it happens. The Minecraft kid, full force, takes his fist and punches it at the tree. And uh, a little spoiler here, it doesn't break into wood logs or wood planks. It just breaks his hand. Uh, I I'm not laughing like I, you know, I'm just laughing not at him, but just at how crazy the situation is, bro. All of a sudden, right, you hear, ah, my hand, and the Minecraft kid, like, collapses to his knees, and Grace is like, oh my god, and Jeffrey turns around, at this point, everyone turns around and starts running, right, because they hear yelling, and the camp counselor and all the kids, like, run up to the Minecraft kid, and he's like, oh my god, my hand hurts so much, and the camp counselor immediately is like, just like, oh my god, what happened, and, you know, at this point, the Minecraft kid's like, ah, why didn't it work, it should have worked, and at this point, Grace, who saw the whole thing, you know, tells the camp counselor he just punched the tree. And the camp counselor was like, Minecraft kid, he obviously said his real name, but he's like, Minecraft kid, why? And he's like, it worked. It should have worked. It should have broken the tree. And everyone's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And the camp counselor goes up to him and says, hey, can you flex it? He tries. He's like, ah. And then the camp counselor asked some other set of things because they were trained if like someone got hurt to see if it was like a sprain or needed like immediate attention. And the camp counselor kind of deduced that it was either a really bad strain or something broke. Basically, it was bad enough that he thought that like they, he needed to go back and go to the hospital to have it checked out. So the camp counselor was like, all right, guys, uh, I, I don't know how to break this to you, but we're going to make a slight detour back. Everyone just, no one was like, oh, man, because they were like, dang, this, this is kind of serious. So they were like, all right, like, that's fine. Like, we, we don't care. Like, that's okay. We get it. And so, yeah, the Minecraft kid is, like, holding his hand in the, in the, the not the teacher, but the counselor is like, all right, don't move that too much. You don't want to, like, put any pressure on it. Just make sure, like, keep it up with the other hand. And they walk all the way back to campus, and the ambulance is called, and the Minecraft kid is taken away. And Jeff and Grace just kind of look at each other like, well, that was not exactly how we were expecting that to go. Subscribe if you haven't already, and now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some that recommended. Go watch one, I'll be very happy. Today by. we have a story time of a Minecraft kid who gets caught hacking on a server while he's streaming on Twitch. And uh, the subscriber reports the Minecraft kid to the admins of the server, and he ends up getting banned and has this crazy freakout reaction on stream, and it's pretty funny. So yeah, sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. So the subscriber who sent in today's story, which by the way, you can send in stories to my Instagram or our Discord server, both are in the description. Uh, we're going to call him Teddy, and I also got that name from the comments. Anyways, right, so Teddy, he knew this kid who went to his school, and this kid was kind of like, he was kind of known as kind of like a bully or whatever. This kid was not a nice kid, and we're going to call him the Minecraft kid, because this kid was known, because he was also, he wasn't just like a bully slash a bad kid, he was also, you know, a up-and-coming Twitch streamer, and by up and coming i mean like five or ten viewers and look no disrespect to people streaming with five to ten viewers honestly that's kind of impressive in itself uh, I mean, obviously, it's not thousands and thousands of streamers, as the top people do, but trust me, there's so many people streaming with less viewers. If you have 5 to 10, that's pretty cool, man. So anyways, right, he was kind of an up-and-coming, in a sense, Twitch streamer. Uh, it wasn't enough to dedicate, like, being, like, a part-time job or anything, but it was a cool hobby. And, uh, yeah, and this kid was pretty notorious, not just for that, but also for being kind of a big jerk. Yeah, and this Minecraft kid, it actually ended up, like, bullying Teddy and a lot of his other friends, and just, like, other people around the school... And it's just, like, overall known as, like, not a good kid. I'm not even gonna go through a bunch of examples of, like, what the Minecraft kid did. Just make an assumption of, like, alright, I know a bully, and, you know, the bullies do X, so Minecraft kid probably did that. 
But anyways, right, one night, you know, Teddy went back home, and he didn't really have anything to do. And the Minecraft kid would only stream on the weekends, Friday night, Saturday night, because that's the only time his parents allowed him to do so. And it was a Friday night. Teddy didn't really have anything he wanted to do. He didn't have really, like, you know, his friends weren't going to do anything. And he was just kind of at home. And Teddy also played a bit of Minecraft himself. And he understood kind of the game mechanics and a lot of, like, the player versus player community, where if you don't know, you can kind of, like, fight other people and build worlds or whatever but anyways right you know he decided you know what let's just check in on teddy's stream and there was a reason why teddy was checking in on the minecraft kid stream it wasn't that he just randomly thought of the minecraft kid it was because of something that happened earlier that day Yes, yeah, so while the Minecraft kid was known for bullying people, in fact, the day before, not the day before, but earlier that day on that Friday, Teddy and the Minecraft kid were walking by each other in the hallway. And the Minecraft kid must have just been, like, feeling like he wanted to, like, do something to someone because he goes up to Teddy and kind of pushes him up against the locker, and he's like, hey, buddy. And Teddy kind of just looks at him like, oh boy, where is this going? And at Teddy's school, you, you had to bring in money every day to pay for, like, your meal, so yeah, this is legitimately like when the bully takes your lunch money, like that kind of cliche. That's legitimately what happened to Teddy, man. The bully basically came up to him and more or less insinuated physical violence because he kind of pushed him up against the wall. And he said, hey, man, if you don't want this to get any worse, I want to have an like double lunch today. So I'm going to need your money. And this is something that Teddy also regularly did besides other things, right? And, uh, oh, not Teddy did, the Minecraft kid did. So, you know, Teddy, who's a much smaller guy in comparison, one of the reasons why the Minecraft kid could get away with being such a bully is because he was just a bigger guy at this time. You know, eventually Teddy, you know, he complied. He was like, fine, whatever. And he eventually gives the kid, you know, his money. So obviously, right, Teddy is, one, hungry, and two, very upset at the Minecraft kid. Just think about how much of a jerk he's been to everyone, including him. And the Minecraft kid has just kind of like been on Teddy's mind for a while. So yeah, now we're back to where we left off, where Teddy's at home, he's got nothing to do on a Friday night, and he's been thinking about the Minecraft kid all day after the incident that happened during that day. And he thinks like, all right, I'm bored. I actually want to see like one of these, the Minecraft kid streams. Because while Teddy had, like, known that he was a Twitch streamer, he never watched his stuff. He never really went out of his way to actually sit down and watch a live stream. However, he was aware that the Minecraft kid streamed on, you know, Friday and Saturday nights. And since it was a Friday night, he decided he might as well check in. And sure enough, the Minecraft kid was streaming. The Minecraft kid happened to be streaming on some random multiplayer server. I don't exactly know what it is. I don't think it was Hypixel by the description the subscriber gave to me, but it was probably big enough that, like, you know, it wasn't one of the friend servers. It was an actual, like, Minecraft server. And it was kind of like a free-for-all type thing where you could go around, like, mine resources, build, I don't know, like, build your own houses, but you also fought other players. So it was like PvP plus building plus survival plus like a little bit of anarchy, but there's a lot of rules or whatever. And it was some type of server like this. And, you know, Teddy immediately realized that something just seemed a little strange with the Minecraft with the Minecraft kid stream. This kid was getting like really good hits. Like he was hitting like when he was fighting other players to get their gear, he just noticed that like the hits were really clean and they were also like just strangely far away and he was just getting combos and clicking really fast. And it just seemed really, it just seemed, seemed kind of strange. And at this point, right, the Minecraft kid was streaming on Twitch, and he was streaming with, like, five, six, seven viewers or something. So not a whole host of viewers. But, you know, the Minecraft kid goes into his menu options, and he, like, flicks open a command or something to check something. And sure enough, like, you know, Teddy is sitting there, and he opens up some hacking client by accident. He opens it up really quickly as he was trying to open something else, and Teddy sees it. Like, on there is, like, Reach and, like, Kill Aura and all these kind of, like, hacks that you can use in Minecraft to, like, beat other people. You know, cheating, though. It it's all cheating. And quickly, right, you know, the Minecraft kid quickly, like, you know, closed it and got out of it and then continued on as if nothing was happening at all. So at this point, right, Teddy was like, oh, wait a minute. Right, this kid's like cheating and all the stuff that he's doing is 100% against the rules of the people on the server, you know, and so he's like, wait a minute, you know, he probably doesn't think anyone caught him, so he's not going to be super careful. If I can catch this kid messing up bad enough on stream and recording it, 
I can send this to the moderators of the server and get him banned, maybe even getting him banned on stream, and I can see this guy's reaction, which would be a little bit of karma for what he did to me today and for what he's done to everyone for, like, the last couple years. And so when, you know, as soon as Teddy thought that, he turned on his recording software and was just recording his stream. So, you know, the Minecraft kid continues to go around, you know, killing people, doing stuff that, like, seems like, you know, he's just really, really good, or he's cheating slightly. It's kind of hard to tell when someone's, like, re like, they're just hitting people a little bit too far away. It's just sometimes hard to tell when it comes to that stuff. So the Minecraft kid just keeps going ahead with, like, what he's been doing, going ahead with his life, just, like, uh, going on, you know, mining blocks, like, building stuff, you know, defeating players. And at this point, Teddy's getting, you know, he's feeling a little hopeless because he kind of feels like he's been watching the stream for, like, 45 minutes. He's like, is this really how I want to send my fri spend my Friday night? Like, I'm just watching my bully's stream, giving him views, basically, right? I'm giving him, you know, attention and clout on the platform he wants to grow on. I'm giving him, like, viewership and watch time why am i doing this like he probably won't even make the mistake again like yeah he opened up his hack client for like a second but i wasn't able to get it on camera what are the odds he does it again and as teddy was thinking that the minecraft kid who had gotten sloppy again accidentally opened up the client actually no this time he didn't accidentally open up the client but he thought he opened it up in another window so that the stream wouldn't see and sure enough right the minecraft kid went into the settings and he upped the reach a little bit so now that he could like beat players a little bit more like he could hit them from slightly farther away and then he also turned on an auto clicker so afterwards, right, Teddy's watching this. He's like, no way. Like, this kid thinks that, like, he's, like, on a different window, that he isn't streaming this. And at the time, right, there's only, like, four other pe people streaming. And no one else in the chat really seemed like they were saying anything. Uh, Teddy, like, said to me in the DMs that he, like, has a theory that the Minecraft kid had, like, four other accounts open. Like, his iPad, his little brother's computer. Just had those things open watching his stream because his chat was completely dead. But anyways, that's beyond the point. So things are about to get really funny when, you know, one of the admins is alerted to what happened, sent the video, and, you know, bans the kid, and he has a crazy reaction. But I don't want to disrupt the flow of that part of the story. So if you made it this far into the video, I want you to comment Steve down below. You might be thinking, why Steve? Well, one, I don't want it necessarily to always be related to a word in the video. And two, Steve is the name of the Minecraft guy that you play as. So yeah, if you want a heart... Um, or you want to farm some hearts, get top commenter on the channel or something like that, comment Steve down below. I'm going to filter the comments by Steve and heart a bunch of those. But anyways, right, Teddy's sitting there and is realizing that, you know, he just caught the Minecraft kid cheating and cheating super obviously. So all of a sudden, right, there's a, on the, on the website for the server, there's a submission place if you want to report someone for hacking not in-game, if you have some kind of, like, proof or something like that. And apparently, right, the mods were pretty active that night. I think, like, Friday and Saturday were kind of peak hours or something. So Teddy files a support, a, a, a report, a support. One like equals one prayer for my brain, guys. Teddy files a report after editing the footage that he had recorded because it was like 50, 55 minutes at that point. So he cut it down to like 30 seconds of the actual footage of, you know, him opening the hack client. He gave the username of the Minecraft kid and then he also gave a link to the Twitch stream, right? To kind of like show the validity of everything that happened. And so Teddy submitted that, sat there, and just started to wait. And Teddy was watching as a Minecraft kid continuing to engage with other players, like, you know, beating them up, you know, as he did almost in real life, but without any hacks. He was just built different in real life. He was just a big kid. And, uh, yeah, he was just beating people up in Minecraft, taking all their stuff, and kind of just being a bully in the game as well, which is, like, fine if you want to do that, as long as you're not breaking the rules, which he was. By the way, don't hack on any servers. You will get banned, as this kid did, and lose everything and all your progress. But anyways, right, Teddy was sitting there and he kind of felt once again kind of hopeless, kind of a sense of loss because he's like, dude, he's not getting banned. He, he, he's still playing. I submitted a report and nothing is happening. And once again, I'm starting to feel like I'm wasting my Friday night, man. I'm watching this kid giving him support on a platform he wants to grow when he honestly doesn't deserve it. Like, I don't know if this is a good use of my time. And once again, as Teddy was thinking that, the Minecraft kid is like hitting another player. And then all of a sudden, right, his clicks don't really respond. Like, you know, if you've ever lagged out in Minecraft, you might, like, do a bunch of features and you see that, like, your hand is, like, punching or hitting something and there's no response. And uh, all of a sudden, right, that was happening to the Minecraft kid. And he's like, oh, 
lag. The server sucks, bro. And as soon as he says that, right, on screen appears like he gets kicked out of the game and on screen says, you have been banned for 28 days for breaking, like, or for hacking. And this is like, you know, uh, auto clicker, kill aura, reach, etc., all that stuff. And the Minecraft kid is looking at that like, what? Like, this is a total mistake. What, what just happened, guys? And by what happened, guys, he means uh, what happened, Teddy, plus the other four bots he has pretending to watch his stream. And he's just, like, starting to panic a little bit. He's like, what? What, 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 what do you mean? I mean, I wasn't hacking at all. I'm, I'm going to submit an appeal. And he's like, what? This, this, is, this, is so, this is so outrageous. And the whole thing was being streamed at this point, right? The Minecraft kid was starting to freak out, and he and he opens up the website for the server he was playing on, and he opened up an appeal for a ban. And for example, I've had to appeal a ban before. I was banned on Lunar twice. Yeah, I, I might. I, I'm not gonna make a story about it, but I was doing nothing. Like I click it like six clicks per second. I'm bad, and they banned me twice. And I'm like, bro. And every single time they're like our fault <laughs> so like they're they sometimes do mess up right and i just so the the minecraft kid he submitted an appeal and he's like dude i wasn't doing anything and the thing was right he got a response right away and on the response the admin said dude or maybe he didn't say dude because he has to be like official or whatever because it's a business or something but he basically says like we saw you open up a hack client on stream why, like, you literally streamed evidence of you cheating. At this point, right, the Minecraft kid starts to freak out. He's like, that's not true. Uh, it, it's not what you think. It, it's not, it's, 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 it's cosmetic. It's a screenshot. It's not real. It's fake. At this point, he starts, like, blabbering on because he knows he just got banned. And the thing is, right, all of his content so far has apparently been from, like, this server and, like, all the progress he had because it's, like, cumulative and you save your progress basically all of his progress was lost at this point so he's freaking out he's like this isn't fair i didn't cheat you don't have any evidence you don't have any evidence and this is any like starts typing and he starts replying he's like you have no evidence of such unban me immediately and within like a minute the moderator replies with no words no images no nothing he responds simply with a 30 second long video file and teddy's watching the whole thing like oh my god that's my screen recording. I got him banned. And the Minecraft kid is like, what? And he opens up the file and the file starts playing. And yes, sure enough, it's his stream. And it shows him opening up his hacking client or whatever in another window that he thought wasn't being streamed, but he accidentally opened it on the window he was streaming on. And at this point, right, the Minecraft kid, instead of responding, ends the stream. So instead of being like, guys, I wasn't hacking. He just is like, nah, I quit, goodbye. Subscribe if you haven't already, and now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some that are recommended. Uh, go watch one, I'll be very happy. Thank the story you, time of a Minecraft kid who actually thought that creepers were real and embarrasses himself in front of everyone in his class during a trip to the dinosaur museum. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. The subscriber sent it to today's story, we're gonna call her Jade, and I got that name from the comment section, so if you want me to use your name, your friend's name, or really any name you want, leave it in a comment down below, and I'll do my best to try and use as many of those names as possible. Anyways, right, so this story happened to Jade when she was in second grade, and she's a bit older now, so this was a little while back, but back when Jade was in second grade, uh, you know, her class was doing this unit on dinosaurs and kind of... Uh, you know, dinosaurs, prehistoric era, everything like around that, fossils, all that good stuff. And they've been studying it for a while, and kind of the big thing for the, for any second grader at that school, and it was kind of known that like for the second grade, their big thing that they would do is they would spend like about a month covering dinosaurs and the kind of the prehistoric age, and then at the end of their long kind of study, whatever, and I mean it's second grade, it's only so rigorous, but like at the end of the day, right, they spend a lot of time learning about dinosaurs, and kind of the, the big payoff for this big kind of month-long study is that they take a like a full day long trip to a really big dinosaur museum that's somewhat near them it's still like 45 minute bus right away but it's a pretty you know it's a pretty fun day and it's kind of known for everyone in the school is like the big fun day that all the second graders have and uh yeah at this point right it's about a week away and jade's getting pretty excited because it's a pretty big deal and i'm going to introduce another character into this story he is the minecraft kid there's nothing more i need to say besides he's in jade's class and things get very interesting very quickly 
And anyways, right, a week passes and it's finally the day. It's the big day. They all kind of like get there kind of early that morning. Their school normally starts around eight, but for that day, they're asked to get there at seven, which a lot of the parents are a little, you know, they wake up, drive up their kids and they're all kind of cranky because they have to get up at seven in the morning, which is a little inhumane. I'll, I'll be real. They don't have to get up at seven in the morning. They have to get up at like six to drive their kids there at seven. But all the kids, when they get there, are like kind of like all wide eyed and excited because, hey, man, it's the big day. It's the dinosaur museum day and so anyways right jade you know she goes in and jade has kind of a friend group of two other people so it's kind of like a three-person friend group and they all walk onto the bus at the same time and the thing is right the bus seats are by twos so they realize that all right so one of us is going to have to sit next to like the other two and you know they make it to about the middle row and all the other seats behind them are filled and they decide you know what let's just sit on this row so the row is has like two different sides and the two of jade's other friends take the two seats on the other side. So Jade is going to take the aisle seat on the other side of the bus, right? And there's a kid sitting in the window seat, and this kid happens to be, you guessed it, the Minecraft kid. Anyways, right, they sit down, and uh, Jade's two friends kind of, they kind of space off slash go to sleep because they're still a little bit tired. As excited they are, you know, they're kind of tired, and the thing is still like 30, 45 minutes away. So they kind of go to sleep, but Jade is kind of awake. You know, she still has enough adrenaline in her to keep her up, and she's kind of excited to go to the dinosaur museum. So she turns to the person next to her, which is the Minecraft kid, who, you know, she doesn't know that well, but, you know, they're friendly enough because they are in the same class. And she's kind of, she goes, she kind of just says something to Minecraft kid along the lines of, hey, like, are you excited? The Minecraft kid said, yeah, this is a pretty big deal. I'm like, I'm really hyped. I've, you know, been thinking about it all night. I couldn't even really fall asleep that well last night. And she was like, yeah, honestly, same. This is going to be a really, like, exciting and fun day. And the Minecraft kid says, I'm so excited to go see, like, to try and find my favorite dinosaur of that period. And, you know, the Jade is like, oh, like, oh, that's really cool. And the Minecraft kid says, oh, before I tell you mine, what's yours? And I don't know, Jade says something, I don't know, pterodactyl or something. And then Jade's like, oh, what's your favorite Minecraft? Uh, <laughs> what's your favorite Minecraft? No, we're getting to that in a second. What's your favorite dinosaur of the time period? And the Minecraft kid said, oh, I'm a big fan of the creeper. And she's like, oh, I haven't heard of that one. And the thing is, like, Jade had no idea what Minecraft was at this time, and it's only in, like, retrospective, looking back on this event, that she thought it was so funny what actually happened. But yeah, the Minecraft kid said, oh, yeah, it's like, it's like a green, it's a little small, it's like on all fours. And he doesn't say the part about how it explodes, right? He decides to leave that detail out, and Jade's like, oh, that's really cool. I don't remember us having a unit on it, but I must have just, like, not paid attention. We covered a lot of material. And yeah, the Minecraft kid's like, yeah, I really hope I'll find an exhibit, and if not, I'll ask around. And so anyways, right, they eventually get there, and they start, like, single file off the bus. So the teacher basically calls them all together, and they kind of get all huddled up in a group. And the teacher says, hey guys, like, we're gonna be uh, walking around. Us teachers will be kind of walking around to make sure you guys don't get in trouble. But you more or less have free reign of whatever you want to do today. Go ahead, explore any exhibits you want to. Go try out anything. You must stay within the dinosaur museum itself. You can't leave it. Uh, stay on the first three levels. If you have any problems, like just come to the front desk, which is right over here, and points to where the front desk is on the first floor, and says, and they'll be able to contact us as we've given them our numbers and the school's number. So yeah, anyways, guys. That's all we really wanted to say. Go off and have some fun. And the teacher says, oh, wait, one more thing. At 12, we'll be having lunch, so please return to the first floor for that. And then afterwards, for about 30 minutes, we're going to have a guided tour. And then for the next hour after that, you're free to go about and, like, look at whatever, uh, you know, sculptures, sculptures like dinosaur footprints or museum, whatever you want to look at, you are feel free to do that afterwards. So anyways, right, you know, Jade and her friends, they go off and they start looking around. And they're going around and they're looking at all the things that they learned and they're recognizing and they, they go up and they see like real life dinosaur footprints and then they're able to, they walk around this kind of recreation of like the prehistoric era. So there's these like fake bushes and a big fake dinosaur statue and it's actually pretty cool. And eventually they meet up with the Minecraft kid who seems to be like frantically looking around. Okay, maybe not frantically, but is intensely kind of like uh, pacing around trying to find something and they kind of look at him and jade is like hey is, is everything okay he's like i can't find the creeper like i i can't find anything about the creeper i've been looking for sculptures i've been looking for any kind of information i just can't seem to find anything at this point right jade had no idea that this was in fact not a dinosaur but instead was a minecraft character 
that the Minecraft kid assumed was real, and since there aren't any creepers around today, he assumed that since, you know, spiders in Minecraft are real, skeletons are technically real, the creeper must have been real too and just, you know, went extinct. So he was really looking forward to finding, you know, the creeper exhibit at this dinosaur museum. And uh, he keeps looking around and Jade's like, hey man, like, uh, maybe ask someone at the front desk. So eventually, right, lunch came around, and Jade and her friends, you know, went down to the first floor, and they got all together, and the, the teacher said, hey, there's a lunch, you can stand in line for it, and then go sit down at the table. So they go in line, they, they get their lunch, and then they sit down at the table. And the Minecraft kid, after like 10 minutes, he gets there kind of late, because apparently he's busy trying to find the creeper, you know, exhibit part of the museum, and the teacher's like, it, you know, Jade is too far away to audibly hear what the teacher says, but the teacher's like, hey, like, the teacher looked a little upset that the Minecraft kid was so late, and then the teacher points to the food and then points to the tables, and the Minecraft kid gets some food, and then sits down at the table, and Jade's like, oh, are you, uh, were you successful in finding the, the creeper exhibit? Remember, at this point, Jade has no idea what Minecraft is. So she legitimately thinks, like, the creeper is some more kind of, I don't know, niche, obscure, uh, dinosaur from back in the day, and she just is like, oh, did you find the exhibit for your favorite dinosaur? Because she was able to find an exhibit with her favorite dinosaur, so she just honestly felt bad. The Minecraft kid so far has been able to say that creepers are dinosaurs to, you know, Jade, because she doesn't know any better, but the Minecraft kid is about to ask the tour guide and be, like, really persistent about it in front of literally everyone, and it's, it's pretty funny, but I don't want to interrupt the flow of the video, so I'm going to do the little comment thing now. Comment Ben. Uh, I'll, I'll heart your comment if you do it. And also, feel free to comment Ben multiple times. Like, you can go down and comment it, like, five different times. There's a, I guess there's a more decent shot I'll actually see your comment and heart it. Either way, if you don't get a heart, don't feel bad. I'm going to heart as many as I possibly can. Just to say thank you guys so much for watching. And also, like, if you haven't already done so, join the Discord uh, link in the description. You can submit stories there and also talk to me occasionally. Anyways, right, uh, back to the story. So lunch is over, and now it's the, like, mandatory 30-minute tour guide. And so the tour guide's like, all right, guys, so we're going to go around and check out all the exhibits and just, like, go over things. And if you guys ever have any questions, just let me know. And before he's even, e before he's even able to finish that sentence, bro, the Minecraft kid, his hand shoots up, and the tour guide's like, yeah, what's up? And the Minecraft kid said, uh, when are we going to see the creeper exhibit? And everyone kind of just looks at him. And the thing is, right, while Jade didn't know what a creeper was, most of the guys and a lot of the girls in his class actually did know what a creeper was. Even if they didn't play Minecraft that much, they were at least aware. And some people started to laugh. And the Minecraft kid looks at him like, kind of like with this look of like, why are you laughing at me? Like, I simply asked the question, where's the creeper exhibit? Uh, which, like, as if, like, no one's gonna, like, laugh at that a little bit, what, but whatever, right? And the tour guide, like, Jade had no idea what a creeper was, so kind of gave him this look of, like, what are you talking about? And he's like, uh, I don't understand what you mean. And he was like, well, I'm just wondering when, because, like, we're seeing the pterodactyl, we're seeing dinosaur footprints, when are we gonna see the creeper exhibit? And once again, you know, the tour guide kind of just looks at him. And the Minecraft kid kind of gives him this look. He's like, oh, this museum sucks. It doesn't even have a creeper exhibit. At this point, right, the teacher's like, Minecraft kid obviously says his name. We'll just give him a name, right? Uh, we'll just call him Minecraft kid. He, the teacher was like, Minecraft kid, don't say that. And for some reason, right, the Minecraft kid must have been super excited to see the creeper exhibit at the dinosaur museum and was just really upset and disappointed that they didn't have one, that he kind of went on this tirade and he kind of stuck with it. And he was like, well, what do you mean stop? I mean, uh, this is a museum, right? This is supposed to be the biggest, most, the greatest dinosaur museum of all time. And they don't even have a creeper exhibit. This place sucks. And at this point, it's like super, super awkward because the tour guides is kind of standing there like, uh, dude, I have no idea what you're talking about. Everyone in the class is kind of looking at him like he's crazy because they know what a creeper is, bro. They know what a creeper is. And they also don't, you know what else they know? They know that a creeper isn't real. The Minecraft kid looks at the tour guide straight on and is like, how could you work? It's such a fraudulent facility. This place is disgraceful. I bet the dinosaurs would be ashamed if they knew that you were doing this, which is just kind of funny, but hey man, it's a second grader. They're, they're bound to say stuff like that. And at this point, right, the teacher is like super embarrassed and the teacher goes up and like looks at the Minecraft kid and is like, stop, stop. I don't know what you're doing, but stop it. And, you know, she's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry about this. And at this point, right, another kid in the class speaks up and he looks directly at the Minecraft kid and he's like, dude, you, what are you talking about? You know that 
you know that creepers are fictional, right? And the Minecraft kid's like, uh, does fictional mean, like, prehistoric era only? Or, and then, and then the kid's like, no, dude, fictional means fake. Like, they're not real. And the Minecraft kid's like, uh, that, that's ridiculous, man. Spiders are real. Skeletons are real. Why wouldn't creepers be real? They're probably just extinct. You don't know what you're talking about. And at this point, right, the teacher looks at the other kid and is like, well, what do you mean fake? Is it from a video game? It looks at the Minecraft kid and it's like, are you making a big, are you making a scene about a video game? At this point, right, Jade is starting to put two and two together that no, creepers are not actually real as everyone has no idea what they are. And in fact, probably from a video game. And yes, they, they are. At this point, right, the Minecraft kid is starting to realize that his logic of if I don't see them now, they must be prehistoric and extinct, maybe doesn't hold up because he's like, oh yeah, the Ender Dragon probably isn't real, and the Wither probably isn't real. And he's like, uh-oh. And he just realizes, right, that he just made a huge scene, called the tour guide like a fraud and a phony, just because his museum didn't have a, uh, a, a creeper exhibit. And the Minecraft kid looks right up at the teacher, who's just eyeing him like, dude, you've kind of messed this up, but you've embarrassed us all. And all of a sudden, right, the Minecraft kid feels this, like, hand on his on the collar of his shirt, and he looks up, and the teacher has grabbed his shirt and starts pulling him away. And Jade is watching the whole thing happen, and the Minecraft kid basically gets pulled away from making a scene, and the tour guide is like, all right, well, uh, let's continue on. So our first exhibit, dot, 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 whatever goes on to explain it, and essentially, right, the Minecraft kid got told that he's got to sit down because of, like, the big scene he made and that he's, he's not grounded. I don't know what to say. He's he's not like in suspension or anything, but he basically has to sit there at lunch for the duration, the rest of the duration of the field trip because he made a scene over Minecraft creepers not being in a dinosaur museum, which is, uh, if you're going to make a scene, man, at least have it be something real. And for like the rest of that school year, uh, you know, whenever the teacher would be like, all right, now we're going to learn about whatever. And she'd be like, any questions? Some like kid in the class would always raise their hand and be like, Yo, when are we gonna learn about the creepers? And then everyone would like start laughing. So unfortunately, unfortunately, right, the Minecraft kid kind of became the laughing stock for the rest of second grade. But he learned a pretty valuable lesson, and that is, creepers are not real. I, I kind of feel like you wouldn't have to learn that lesson, but apparently you do. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some the recommended. Go watch one. I'll be very happy. Bye. Today we have a story time of a Minecraft kid who gets caught hacking, and uh, it's a pretty great story of instant karma. So yeah, sit back, relax, leave a like on the video, and let's get right into it. So the subscriber who sent in today's story, we're going to call him Mike, and I, I got the name Mike from the comment section down below, so if you want me to use your name, your friend's name, your dog's name, it, any name really, leave in a comment down below. I do look through the comments for a new name. Anyways, right, so Mike, the subscriber who sent in this story, he actually owns a server where people can go on and play Minecraft on, and it's not like a massive server. This isn't like secretly Hypixel or something, like this isn't like the owner of one of those massive clients, or servers, I should say, but it's still big enough that like, it's not his full-time job since he's still a teenager, but like it's it's worth the time that he puts into it. There's at least, you know, a couple hundred people on at all times, which is really impressive. But anyways, right, this story happened back, I don't know, uh, a little while ago. So his server wasn't as popular as it is now, but, you know, he did still have like 10 to 20 people on it almost all times, or at peak times, I should say. Not as many people on it like 2 in the morning. But he gave me a story of this time that this kid came on and uh, it, was, it was obviously hacking, but instead of instantly banning the kid, he decided to mess with him first, and it, was, and it turned out to be a pretty funny story. So anyways, right, this happened one day, and, you know, Mike was just, you know, checking his server, you know, seeing if everything was running correctly, talking to, like, the two or three other people that he had help him. At this point, the server didn't need, like, full-time paid staff, so these were, like, his friends slash people he met online that, like, kind of volunteered their, volunteered their effort to help. And, you know, one day as he was just kind of chilling there, he got a report that, you know, there was some kid that was, like, suspected for cheating or whatever. And, you know, as, you know, he did, uh, he went and he spectated one of the games. He got the username of the kid and he went ahead and spectated him, which basically means that he can watch this kid play on his Minecraft server without the kid seeing that he's being watched. So the owner of the server, aka Mike, the subscriber, he spectated this kid, he watched this kid play like some, a PvP duel against another guy, and it was pretty obvious, right, that this kid was hacking, right, that he was reaching from many, many blocks away. 
And normally, right, Mike would have just, like, straight up banned this guy, as was pretty clear that he was hacking. But he noticed that in the chat, right, the Minecraft kid who went on the server and was, like, hacking and beating up other players, right, after winning the duels when he was obviously, like, hitting them from much farther away than, like, was, you know, possible in vanilla, like, he wasn't just really good. It was just very blatant, right? Afterwards, he was typing in chat, like, you suck, you're so bad, you're the worst at Minecraft or whatever, like, I'm so much better than you, I'm, le like, you're legitimately the worst player I've ever seen. Just being super, super toxic and saying stuff like how much better he was, even though he was the one who was the one who was, like, using cheats because he wasn't good enough to play normally, and these people probably would have absolutely rocked him normally. So, norm in most cases, Mike would have just straight up banned this kid, but it's just because he was, like, being extra toxic mike was like you know what i have nothing better to do this morning so let's just let's just mess around with this kid a little bit before we ban him so mike notices that this minecraft kid slash the hacker right uh, there's kind of multiple features to the server there's like a pvp side but then there's also like an smp style side where people can go on and like you know build in a survival world or whatever and have their progress saved so the first step of mike's trolling efforts is he wants to troll this kid in his pre-saved minecraft world right so you know the kid you know mike like kind of teleports to the kid and is still in like the incognito kind of like private spectator mode so that the kid can't see him and he notices that the kid is going going mining right now and it is very very clear that this kid has a texture pack on uh, aka x-ray vision to help him find diamonds because this kid is zigzagging all around with his mining trails and always seems to be finding diamonds right if you don't know x-ray is like a texture pack that if you see on screen right now like all the blocks these are actually, there is a texture pack I'm using now, and you can go through and make different blocks, different like textures. In X-Ray, it basically assigns a clear texture pack to everything besides like diamonds or whatever ores you want to be trying to find. So this kid is obviously using like a X-Ray, which is illegal on most servers to use, and it's, it's super, super obvious. So the first troll that Mike wants to do is, you know, as the Minecraft kid slash the hacker kid, we're just going to call him the Minecraft kid, as the Minecraft kid is cheating to find diamonds, and, like, he has at least three stacks of 64 diamonds in his inventory, Mike just goes in, uses one of his admin commands, and deletes one of the stacks, right? One of the stacks of diamonds. And he watches, and the kid is, like, mining away, and then he stops for a second, and it's pretty clear that, like, uh... It's pretty clear that he's, like, looking in his inventory and trying to figure out where his diamonds are. But then he goes back to mining, assuming that he just, uh, like, thought that, like, it was almost placebo that he thought that he had three stacks, but he really had two. And then Mike goes ahead and deletes the other two stacks. And this is when the kid stops again, and he just kind of, like, he's looking, and he's, like, his player isn't moving, and Mike is watching him. And then he notices in chat that the Minecraft kid types, This server sucks. So laggy. Just lost all my diamonds. So obviously, right, this kid is a little bit upset. So the kid is like, starts, he's like, whatever, man, like this, this server is lagging out or whatever. So the kid starts to make his way back towards his base. And here's the thing, right? The kid has like a really good pickaxe and a really good diamond armor with some really like high level enchantments on it, which took him a lot of time to get. So Mike decides that this would be a perfect time to put a charged creeper in front of him in this like one, in this like two by two tunnel that he made. If you don't know what a charged creeper is, it's basically like a creeper, but like struck by lightning. And the damage it does is like 10, 15 X or what, a lot more than a normal creeper. And the other thing that Mike does before he drops the charge creeper is he teleports back to the kid's base and he breaks the bed. If you don't know in Minecraft, a bed allows you to respawn at a set place where normally you would just respawn wherever the spawn point was. And this kid had built his base really far away from spawn just so people couldn't go in and like blow it up or take his stuff. So when, you know, Mike, in his spectator mode, placed the charge creeper in front of the kid, the kid tried to, like, fight it, and then, like, obviously he couldn't beat it in time because Mike put, like, two other charge creepers behind him as well. The whole, like, the charge creeper exploded, destroyed the Minecraft kid, and, uh, yeah, the Minecraft kid respawned. But instead of respawning in his base, which would have sucked because he lost his armor and his really good tools, he didn't just lose his tools and his really good armor, he also was sent to the beginning of the map. 
super far away from his base. And while we don't know if he saved his coordinates or not, he started like having a rage fest in chat. So we're going to assume that he was not, he did not save his coordinates and he had no idea where his base actually was. Speaking of Creeper, uh, comment Creeper down below if you'd like a heart. I'm going to go through and heart as many comments as I can that say Creeper in them. And if you want a better chance of getting a heart, comment Creeper like two, three, four, or maybe even five times or something. Don't comment it like too many times or YouTube might time you out or something. But comment it a few times down below and leave a like if you haven't already. But anyways, right, so the Minecraft kid was completely freaking out in chat. He's like, this server sucks. It's so glitchy or whatever. And obviously he's this mad because like he lost all of his progress in the SMP style aspect of the server. So when this happens, right, the Minecraft kid, he goes, he leaves the queue for the SMP and he goes in the queue for the PvP element because the server is basically broken up into two pieces, the player versus player duels and then the SMP style vanilla Minecraft type, you know, survival, whatever. And so he's done with the survival aspect as all of his progress is now lost. And he goes back to dueling people. And he's using the most aggressive cheats and hacks ever. This kid is hitting people from like six blocks away. If you don't know, normally you, I don't think you can hit people more than three or four blocks. So this kid was hitting kids from like six blocks away. And then he was like, after like defeating them, as he obviously does, because he's cheating super hard, he goes in chat and says, you guys are awful. I'm the best at PvP. You guys suck. LLL. This to standard toxic behavior. So at this point, right, Mike, Mike has already trolled the Minecraft kid a little bit. And he could just go ahead and ban him. But Mike, you know what? He wasn't done with his trolling endeavors. He had nothing he needed to do that day. And man, he had a lot of fun trolling him on the SMP style. So might as well troll him in the PvP as well. So he didn't want to make it super obvious. So Mike basically went into one of his like admin settings and changed his name so that it wasn't obvious that it was him. So then it was like his name was hidden and it was given like a new random name or something. So no one was able to know that this was actually Mike, AKA the owner of the server. And next what he did was he didn't like dual request this kid because maybe the kid would have ignored it and just stayed in like the general dual queue or whatever. He just made it so that the next person that the kid would play would be him. He had some admin powers that allowed him to do such, right? So anyways, Mike queues in a game with this kid and it's standard kind of like Minecraft PvP. They have a bow, they have a rod, and they have a sword, and they have... And they have like golden apples or something. That's kind of their form of healing. And they go in and this kid is missing all of his rods. He tried, the, the Minecraft kid tried to bow Mike a few times, but completely missed him. So obviously any hacks he had on were not for the rod or the bow because he didn't even touch Mike at all. But when it came to actually swing the swords at each other, this kid was reaching or being able to hit Mike away from so many blocks that it was so obvious that he was cheating. And the kid, sure enough, after, like, hitting Mike a bunch of times, and while Mike didn't die because he was able to kind of escape, uh, kind of rotting the kid back so he couldn't touch him anymore and gappling up, which is a a.k.a. eating his healing, the kid decided to go into chat. The Minecraft kid then said, like, Mike, he didn't say Mike, he said, like, whatever, like, fake username Mike was using. He said, insert Mike's fake username, right? You're garbage, lol, I'm so much better, right? Even though he was obviously hacking slash cheating. So Mike had a set of commands that he had saved to kind of troll anyone if he really wanted to, and he decided to release one of them. So the Minecraft kid was about to heal up, meaning he was about to eat his golden apple that would heal some of his hearts, because Mike, even though being at a significant disadvantage, was pretty good at Minecraft and was still able to get some hits on the kid. So as the Minecraft kid started gappling up, instead of like what a uh, golden head or golden apple being able to regenerate hearts, the kid instead, it was coded because he used some kind of like, he, he had some kind of preset commands that he had that instead the, the golden apple, instead of giving a regeneration effect, gave a poison effect. So at this point, right, after the kid eats the, the, the golden apple, right, he starts taking damage. And he immediately goes in the chat and is like, this server's so bad. Like, what is this? What is this glitch? This is the worst thing ever. And then Mike, you know, starts fighting him again. And, right, the poison effect eventually wears off. And then the Minecraft kid runs away into a corner. And when the Minecraft kid runs away into the corner, Mike kind of lets him 
you know, he's thinking, oh, he's going to heal up again or whatever, right? But instead, the kid goes into the corner so he can exit Minecraft and go to his hack client and make the reach even more blatant. So when Mike and the, ha and the Minecraft kid start fighting again, the Minecraft kid starts hit him, hitting him from like 8 to 10 blocks away. Super, super far. And at this point, right, Mike is just like, oh my god, right, like, how is this even possible? And uh, so normally this kid would probably be banned, uh, but the anti-cheat doesn't ban people immediately so that the creators of the hacked clients don't, uh, you know, learn what triggers the anti-cheat. So this kid was going to be banned by the anti-cheat at some point, but ho Mike was hoping that he'd be able to troll him for just a little bit longer. So the next thing that Mike did was he replaced the sword that the Minecraft kid had and was hacking with, with a stick. So now, even though the Minecraft kid was hitting Mike from like 10 blocks away, it was doing literally no damage. And then once again, the Minecraft kid types in chat, This server sucks! It's glitching so bad! And the final thing that Mike does to troll this kid is he does the slash kill command, and lightning comes out of the sky and just obliterates the Minecraft kid. And in chat, Mike types, he's, he, did now, he now undoes his username, so it's very clear that it's him, the owner of the server. He kind of ats the Minecraft kid and says, you're trash, lol. At this point, right, the Minecraft kid, instead of fighting back or saying, like, no, you're garbage, like, your server sucks or whatever, he realizes, because he would have done that to anyone else, but since he's the owner of the server, he's like, oh my god, like, I don't want to get banned. And the kid said, good game, man. Because <laughs> he, at this point, right, he just realized he's been fighting the, ser the owner of the server the whole time. He's like, oh my god, don't ban me, bro, don't ban me. He's like, good game, that was a really good fight. And the owner of the server, Mike, is just like, bro, come on now. And sure enough, yeah, the Minecraft kid's like, wow, that was such a good fight. Do you want to fight again? And Mike was just like, nah. And then he bans him. He's like, nah, banned. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some that are recommended. Uh, go watch another video or I'll cry. Thanks, bye. Today we have a story of a Minecraft kid who actually fights his teacher. It's probably one of the cringiest slash funniest stories I've heard in a long time. So sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. So we're going to call a subscriber who sent in today's story. We're going to call him Ben because it's kind of been a meme on the channel since a couple, for at least a couple months to call like the subscriber or people in the story Ben. So I'm bringing that back for today. But normally I get names from the comment section. So leave a comment down below of a name you'd like. It can be your name, your friend's name. doesn't even matter. Leave a name down below and I'll probably use it. Anyways, right, so Ben, he was in school and there's another kid. And as you can already tell by the title, yes. This was the Minecraft kid. He's back. Nah, it's a different Minecraft kid. Some people actually think that all these videos are about the same guy, and if that was the case, that would be a very, very interesting guy. That's all I can say. Anyways, right, so Ben was in class with this, like, this, the Minecraft kid. And anyways, the Minecraft kid was kind of known for playing Minecraft in class. Uh, he kind of thought he was going to go to, like, the major leagues of Minecraft, which no one had, no one was able to convince that him that that doesn't exist, because it just simply doesn't exist. There's just, like, no major league gaming or something for, or you just can't really go professional to play Minecraft, at least not to my knowledge, or, I, I really just don't think that's possible. But anyways, right, so, you know, I mean, this guy was, was always practicing Minecraft or playing Minecraft or doing Bed Wars or whatever in class, as he sat kind of towards the back of the class and was able to kind of, he was able to cover up his movement with his, like, mouse pad or whatever. I don't totally understand the logistics of how you could be able to get away with that. All I can say is I know I'd never be able to get away. I don't think I'd ever try this, but I also I don't think I'd ever be able to get away with something like this. I, I, I don't see how it's possible, but apparently it was for at least a very long time. So the Minecraft kid would never be actually paying attention in class. And this class wasn't super easy. I mean, it wasn't, like conceptually that hard to remember or figure out but it was a, like a lot of like memorization and paying attention was pretty essential to do well in the tests and uh ben and his friends would always pay attention to at least a decent extent and if one of the days like ben didn't pay attention his friend would tell him what he missed and vice versa right and but the, the, there was a bit of a problem the minecraft kid would always sit around either near ben one of ben's friends and you know the thing was he wasn't paying attention in class which dude i get it sometimes it's hard trust me i've been there i am there currently all the time 
but sometimes you just gotta do it sometimes you just gotta pay attention and if you're not gonna pay attention man like you gotta pay the consequences but the minecraft kid wanted the best of both wo both worlds because in class he'd never pay a lick of attention he'd always be on his computer somehow getting away with playing like full-on minecraft pvp bed wars type stuff no idea how he got away with that but i think he just he somehow figured out a method that it wasn't loud it wasn't that obvious but i think if like the teacher was to come over and see him it, then it would be pretty obvious which uh, that's a that's that's for a little later in the story but for that reason right the minecraft kid during the tests would always very blatantly cheat off of ben or one of his other friends which, like, the first time, Ben didn't really care. Uh, since they had a quiz every single week and they had a test every couple weeks, they were they were assessed pretty frequently. And, like, the first quiz, Ben noticed the Minecraft kid was kind of looking over to see what he was doing. And honestly, bro, like, Ben was kind of chill. He just, he just didn't really care. He's just like, oh, like, all right, whatever, right? And, but it was, like, over time... Every single quiz, every single time, every single test, he would just notice the Minecraft kid would sit next to either him or his friend and would so blatantly look over and cheat. But the, the teacher really was never really paying that close attention when kids were taking the test. He was always either looking at his computer, maybe getting ready for more material, maybe, I don't know, setting up an installer for mining Bitcoin. I'm bringing the joke back, baby. You can't, you just can't stop me, man. You just can't stop me. I know you want to stop me. You just can't, you just can't stop me, bro. It's impossible. <laughs> Anyways, though, right? But Ben and his friend was starting to get a little frustrated. Because Ben was like, hey man, like, I've noticed the Minecraft kid has been cheating off of you, and he's been cheating off of me for, like, months now, every single week, and it's kind of annoying. Because, like, the thing was, right, if it was, like, a one-time thing, while I don't ever condone it, like, at least Ben didn't care, and I think I personally wouldn't care, too. I'd be like, bro, really? But... I wouldn't make a stink out of it, but every single week, right, every single week, you study hard, you pay attention, and someone just, like, exactly copies your answers for everything. I think the Minecraft kid might have changed one or two answers so he wouldn't get caught, but it was just obviously so blatant, and yeah, you know what? Ben and his friend are kind of upset, because they're like, you know what? We have to pay attention. We have to do all this work. We have to study hard. Well, the Minecraft kid is able to have fun in class every single day, and his grades simply aren't affected, and they're just like, damn, bro, like, that's not cool. So the first thing, that the first idea they have is like, all right, let's actually convince, like, let's actually confront this kid, right? So one of these days, Ben and his friends say, hey, Minecraft kid, can we talk to you at recess? And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. They're not really that friend. they're not friendly. Um, they aren't enemies, they aren't like, they're just like not that acquainted, like they're just not like good acquaintances, so it's a little awkward to do, but they just kind of like told him like, hey man, like, we noticed that like, you kind of like very blatantly like copy off of our tests, and like if you do that occasionally, we really don't care, but can you just not do that every single day, and the Minecraft kid got really defensive, he's like, cheat! Guys, I would never cheat. I have a very strong code of conduct. I would never cheat. That goes against my morals. And they kind of just look at him because it was very clear. Like, they even saw they saw him personally. They saw him looking at, like, the other person. It was very clear that he looked over, wrote something down, looked back at his paper, then looked back over, wrote something down, looked down at his paper. Like, they even checked his answers, like, they would glance over at the end of the test, and they would be exactly the same, except for, like, one that he obviously changed just to keep him safe. And he'd always get that one wrong, because, you know, it wasn't the right answer, because they chose the right answer. And they kind of just looked at him like, okay. And, you know, they didn't get that much from that interaction, but they kind of thought that, like, confronting the guy, being very open about it, and even though he said, oh, I would never do that, I don't know what you're talking about, maybe now that would kind of, like, scare him off, right? Because, because like, he knows that they're on to him, and maybe that'd be enough for him to not do it, or at least not do it so often slash blatantly. So Ben and, you know, his friend are like, all right, well, maybe that will work, dude. Like, maybe that'll be enough to get the kid to, like, I don't know, pay attention in class, or at least at a minimum, just not cheat off of everything we do. But sure enough, right, in class, he's still playing Minecraft somehow. He's, like, training to be a professional or whatever or some, something. I don't know. And, yeah, sure enough, the next time a test comes around, the Minecraft kid once again is just very clearly looking at Ben. Looks over at Ben's answer, writes it down, and even at one point, right, Ben makes direct eye contact with him as he's about to cheat off another answer. And the Minecraft kid, instead of being like, oh my god, like I'm caught, or like looking down, he just looks at him, 
gives him like a wave and then looks down at his paper. And Ben is just completely like, dude, like, are you serious? Like you even just acknowledge that you're cheating. It's just like, you're cheating, you're doing it blatantly, and when we confront you, you're not even saying, hey, man, like, uh, like, can I, like, pay you $5 to, like, keep cheating off your answers? I don't know if that'd be a great solution, guys. I'm not saying that's the right answer here. But Ben was like, bro, you lied to my face, you're gonna use my answers, and you smile at me? We're not boys. You can't be doing that. W what? And you might be thinking, how on earth does he actually fight the teacher at this point from what's happening? Trust me, it gets really crazy really fast. But before that, comment teacher down below. I'm going to try and heart a bunch of those comments. Maybe even comment teacher like two, three, four, five times or something. I can't guarantee that I'll heart all the comments, but I'll do my best to get at least a good handful. And also, while you're down there, first line of the description, or one of the lines in the description, is my second channel. I have been posting a decent amount there. So if you want to check out some other kind of more variety content, go ahead and make sure to subscribe to that channel. But anyways, right back to the story and the Minecraft kid is still cheating. So Ben and his friend kind of like go up to each other after that class and it's like, dude, Ben was like, dude, he still was cheating off of me. And the friend's like, yeah, bro, I watched. It's very obvious. And Ben's like, I even made cont eye contact with him. I thought he was going to look down all embarrassed or whatever. But dude, he looked at me, smiled and waved. He thinks we're boys. We're not boys. So they kind of came up with a plan, and they were like, you know what, Minecraft Kid is going to be playing Minecraft in class, he keeps on getting away with it, you know what, I have an idea. I'm not going to spoil it, I'm just going to tell you what happens, and you'll figure out the plan as we go along. But anyways, right, next day rolls around, and Ben is sitting next to the Minecraft Kid, and once again, the Minecraft Kid just gets into his Minecraft game, is playing as usual, playing as always, no one knows how he gets away with playing in class, but when the Minecraft Kid starts playing... He kind of gets really into it, and it's as if, like, the surroundings kind of fade away. Because in the beginning, he was a lot more, like, listening to what's happening. He, like, closed down his game several times if he thought the teacher might have been paying attention. But he's been doing this for weeks, if not months now. So he's feeling pretty confident, and his confidence has led him to be cocky. And cocky enough that he just, like, turns on his Minecraft game, tunes out the rest of the class, and by the time the bell rings, he just shuts off his game and leaves. Like, he, he's at that point, right? And Ben kind of realizes this, or at least he's betting on that being the case. So anyways, right, the next day in class, you know, they're, they're talking about something, whatever, the teacher's talking, and Ben's like, oh, I have a question on the homework. So the teacher's like, all right, Ben, like, what's up? And at this point, right, Ben is sitting right next to the Minecraft kid, and Ben's like, oh, it's like, can, can you help me, like, I, I have a very specific question. I don't think it'd be important for the whole class to hear. Can you come here to help me with it? And the teacher's like, yeah, sure, like, whatever. Because, like, people were kind of working on some assignments or readings or whatever anyway. So it wasn't like he was stopping class to individually help Ben. Uh, he was just kind of, like, answering general questions. And if the question didn't help everyone, sometimes this is better to have the teacher talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. So the teacher's walking over towards Ben, and the Minecraft kid has no idea that, you know, Ben raised his hand, asked a question, and or the teacher was coming over. He was just so engrossed in his game and so confident and cocky that he would never get caught that he wasn't even paying any attention. Like, all the, like, the sound around him kind of faded away. And sure enough, the teacher walked down and was kind of paying attention towards Ben, but as he walked closer to Ben, he was able to get at, a, at, a, at like, an angle where he could see exactly exactly what the Minecraft kid was doing. And the teacher was like, oh, is he like trying to open up a file to do work? And he like turns the corner a little bit or whatever. He gets into a position, he gets into an angle where he can see exactly what the Minecraft kid is doing. And he realizes he's been playing Minecraft and he, the, the teacher comes to the conclusion, this kid's been playing Minecraft the whole time and there's a good chance he's been playing Minecraft, not just today, not just the day before, but for a very, very long time. So the teacher walks up to the Minecraft kid and says, what are you doing in my class? And takes his hand and shuts the screen of the game. So it was like a laptop. It wasn't like a desktop or anything. He wasn't wheeling in a full on desktop or something. But, you know, you know, the teacher goes in, shuts the screen of the game. So obviously that kind of either pauses it or quits him out of the game. But, you know, it's a multiplayer game. So you can't pause a multiplayer game. Mom, I can't pause the multiplayer game. And he looks up. He's like, dude. What the heck, bro? I was in the middle of a game. You can't just do that. 
And the teacher's like, you, like, don't talk back to me. Like, I just caught you playing games in class. That's, like, super against the rules here. You can't be doing that. And the Minecraft kid stands up and says, well, yeah, you know what? I'm training to be a professional. I'm putting in the grind. I'm putting in the grind every day. I'm going to make so much more money than you or anyone else here who goes to the school. I shouldn't even be coming to class. I just have to. And the teacher looks at him because, like, this kid never really spoke up. So the teacher was a little bit, like, taken aback. And the teacher's like... Well, I'm confiscating this till the end of class and grabs the computer. Yeah, you might say that grabbing the computer might have been an overreaction. You can also say there's a perfectly fair reaction. Either way, it paled in comparison to the reaction from the Minecraft kid. And the Minecraft kid's like, give it back! And punches the teacher in the nose. Like, straight up, is like, bah! At this point, right, the teacher just, like, stands there in shock. Uh, the, the Minecraft kid didn't, like, knock him out or push him back or anything, but he did, like, some solid damage to them. I mean, he didn't, like, break anything, but it, it was, like, a full-on punch. It, it was, like, legit. It wasn't, like, a little tap. It wasn't, like, a whiff or anything. It was, like, a full-on legitimate whap. At this point, right, the Minecraft kid, all, like, the, uh, I don't know, all the energy he had, all that energy he had against the teacher, being all, like, oh, uh, like, like, you can't do that to me, like, I'm trying to be a professional, all that disappeared instantly as he hit him in the face, because he realized that he messed up big. And the teacher just looks at him, and at this point, the whole class have been watching this whole thing going down, and after, the, the like, the Minecraft kid punched the teacher in the nose, they all kind of gasped, and it went so silent, because they're just like, they've never seen anything like this happen before. The Minecraft kid's like, uh, sorry, it, it was, it was a reflection, it, it was, it wasn't on purpose, bro, like, that, that, that's on me, that's on me. He was, like, really trying to back hard, backtrack super hard, because he knew that he was in such big trouble, and the teacher just looks at him. And just points towards the door. He's like, get out of my class. Go down to the principal's office. I'll be following you there in like one minute. Don't try and get out of this. Don't tell the principal anything that isn't happening. Because I'll tell him if you don't. And the Minecraft kid's like, yes, sir. And gets up and leaves. Because he was like, all right, I need to minimize how bad this is. And at this point, right, Ben looks at his friend. Because like, Ben just wanted the Minecraft kid to get a little bit of karma for cheating off of him every day in class. He had no idea that it was going to accelerate this crazy bro. And Ben just looks at his friend with this look of like, Well, that was unexpected. Subscribe if you haven't already, and now go watch another video. There's some on screen, some to recommend it. Go watch one. It'll make me very happy. Today Bye. we have a story time of a Minecraft kid who was caught... <coughs> Normally, I'd cut that out, but I don't know. I just played that back. It sounded pretty funny. Anyways, today we have a story time of a Minecraft kid who was caught cheating in his kind of school-sponsored Bed Wars tournament after telling everyone that he was the greatest. And uh, yeah, it, the ending was pretty hilarious, so you want to stick around, sit back, relax, leave a like in the video to claim your free nothing, as always. And yeah, let's get right into it. Subscribers sent in today's story. We're gonna call him Robert. I got that name from the comment section. You know the deal. Leave a comment with a name you'd like me to use. It could be your name, your dog's name, your arch enemy's name. I really don't care. I'll be using your names in the comment section. Anyways, right, so this guy named Robert, at, at his school, kind of like the kids came together and they decided that they wanted a kind of a a grade-wide Bed Wars tournament for anyone who wanted to join in. For those who aren't aware, Bed Wars is a mini game, a Minecraft mini game you can play on Hypixel. I've had a lot of fun memories on there. I've also gotten really mad when people come in and like infinite god bridge 10,000 clicks per second over to my base, knock me back away from 20 feet, and then destroy my bed within 0.1 microseconds. Like, that's a little frustrating. I remember playing in the days when it wasn't so sweaty, and I enjoyed it a little bit more. However, I've had great memories on Bed Wars, and I think it's actually a pretty cool idea that his kind of his grade came together and organized a Bed Wars tournament. Uh, so it wasn't necessarily like the idea of the school to put this thing together. However, it was like kind of organized a little bit by the parents, kind of very generally, but it was up to the kids to really organize it. And it was like, it, like the school kind of gave it the A-OK, -okay, like the thumbs up because it was kind of contacting everyone in the class. And to do so, I think there were some school regulations, but they gave it the A-OK. -okay. But anyways, all you need to know is that there was a Bed Wars tournament and anyone in the class could be eligible. So it, not everyone played, obviously, because not everyone played Bed Wars. But on one of the days, they announced the tournament and they said, within a couple days, we want everyone to submit, you know, if they want to play or not. 
You were also able to submit people you wanted to be teamed with, but you could also submit to yourself as like a single pool. Uh, you didn't have to go in with anyone, and they would just assign you team members from other people who didn't really have anyone else they wanted to be teams with. And by the end of the like two or three day period, there were four teams of four people. So 16 people from the grades signed up for the Bed Wars tournament. And I think the prize was like uh, an all you can eat, like, because there's like a local Sunday place and there was like a, uh, the prize was like, you can get whatever you want. One, I mean, obviously one ice cream, you can't get there like infinitely every single day, but you could get one, you know, what all you can eat ice cream prize. If you win the bed wars tournament, I think runner up was just like, I, you got nothing. It was just like when it, it, it was all or nothing basically. And so uh, Robert, the subscriber, he signed up with his friend James, and I'm giving him a name because he actually is kind of relevant in the story, and I will be referring to Robert's teammate and his close friend James as James from here on out. However, there was also another kid who we're going to call the Minecraft Kid, and he's called the Minecraft Kid because, I don't know, he's called the Minecraft Kid. He plays Minecraft or something, but he was also kind of a jerk. He was kind of, a, he was kind of like that kid who no one really liked. And he didn't have any friends. And it wasn't because, you know, you know, uh, for unfortunate reasons, like, oh, he looked funny and all the kids were mean, so they refused to be friends with him. No, he didn't have friends because he, had, he basically alienated himself from everyone because he was, like, cruel to everyone for no good reason. And he was also very boastful and full of himself. And uh, he definitely displayed a lot of that the week before the Bed Wars tournament itself. And the Minecraft kid for the entire week up until the actual day of the tournament was talking about how he was significantly better than everyone and how he was going to absolutely wreck everyone and completely destroy everyone and how they shouldn't even bother. They shouldn't even bother because he was just so much better. And so, yeah, Robert and James, who didn't already like this kid in the beginning, kind of made it their goal to... Make sure to beat this kid. Make sure this kid could be, couldn't beat them. So Robert, James, and the, and, and the other two teammates who I'm not going to give a name to because they weren't super important. I'm just going to call them Teammate A and Teammate B in case I need to, like, say any – in case I need to reference them specifically. But the four of them, you know, during that entire week after they finished their homework, they trained. They were on the grind, man. They were grinding to get that number one spot because they wanted that all-you-can-eat, you know, ice cream – whatever coupon thing but that wasn't even that important to them honestly that was just like that was the cherry on top that was a little extra the real prize they wanted was to beat the minecraft kid because he was a big jerk and he also was super full of himself and he was super confident he was gonna win and he made it so publicly of course that's that's the best prize in the world man Anyways, Robert James and player A and B, they trained pretty extensively that entire week when they were done with homework. And finally, by the end of the week, it was the day of the tournament. So the tournament was kind of like bracket style, or it wasn't like that much of a bracket. It was just like the four teams, two of them play each other, and then like the winners play for the final round. And anyways, right, Robert and James and their team did not play against the Minecraft Kids team in the first round. And if they both won their, like, their next positionings, they were going to then play it uh they were gonna play each other in the final round so anyways anyways in the first round robert and james they got in their team they kind of they kind of went pretty easily they were just simply better there's nothing really i need to say here uh but also the minecraft kid and his team won as well and while you know uh, robert and james weren't able to see it you know his some of his classmates who didn't opt in to play opted in to watch and they like one guy texted you know robert and was like yo bro like Minecraft kid is pretty good. Like, his team swept the other team. And, you know, Robert and James were feeling pretty good coming off of their win, but, you know, kind of that good feeling dissipated as soon as they heard that, you know, the other team also got swept and that it, like, wasn't just them, like, clearing house and, like, destroying everything. And, you know, they were a little bit concerned, to be honest. Real quick, comment Bed Wars if you made it this far into the video. I just want to see how many people made it this far, and I do appreciate it. Commented a couple times. I wasn't able to get, like, to heart a bunch of comments yesterday, but I will do my best today to try and heart some comments to say Bed Wars. So comment Bed Wars down below. Maybe even comment a couple times if you'd like. But anyways, right, it's finally here. It's the final, the finale, the moment that Robert James and player A and B have been training for this entire week. An opportunity to beat the Minecraft kid at his own game, supposedly. So they enter into the match, and right away, right, they have this kind of like bed defense strategy where three of them go in, one stays back, 
Um, they're rushing middle. One rushes diamonds to get some upgrades. One is putting down the bed defenses. Everything is going to plan. And then, you know, uh, James, not Robert, the subscriber, but James, you know, he's in middle trying to get some emeralds, maybe even put some pressure on the other team. He encounters the Minecraft kid. And Robert and James, they're both, they're not in the same place because they're not all like at the same house or whatever. Some kids went over to some of the kids' houses to watch, but Robert and James were connected via Discord. And Robert heard James go, whoa, whoa, hold up now. Wait, 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 wait. And all of a sudden, right, you know, Robert's just like, James, is everything okay? Like, are you good? And, you know, he looks in chat and sure enough, like, James was slain by the Minecraft kid or whatever. And James is like, that, that guy hit me from so far away. I, I don't know how he did it. And at this point, right, Robert and James weren't really suspecting anything, like, hacking-related, as you will see in the title, right? But he's like, oh, wow, maybe he's just really good at player-versus-player, player, like, battles, like, PvP stuff. So, he, you know, and then Robert was like, all right, James, and player A and B, because they were also in the VC. He's like, all right, so we got to really step it up when it comes to not, like, PvP. Like, we got to be really good with strategy and breaking beds effectively and efficiently. We should probably also get stacked up, because apparently he is really good at PvP and we, we just need to, to have a winning chance. We need like prot four diamond or whatever. Diamond's a little excessive. I played a little bit. I know it's not necessary. But anyways, right, the game keeps on going on. And finally, right, J Robert's bridging to one of the islands. And at that island, sure enough, is James, uh, not James, but the Minecraft kid. And then Robert, you know, is like, all right, let me fight this guy. And he doesn't even get one hit on this kid. And it's, it's not super clear. Like Robert at this point is suspicious. But there's also a chance that he really just is as good as he claimed to be. Like, maybe all the boasting and bragging wasn't for nothing. Maybe he just genuinely was that good. Because some people are just so good at, like, you know, Minecraft, you can't even touch them, man. Like, I don't play that much. And, you know, when I do, and I go on, like, a practice server, I just queue into something. I'm like, oh, let me just get someone at least my level, maybe a little bit better. I get, like, someone whose username is, like, one character long. And they, like, combo me, like, 50 times in a row i'm like yeah this game is just not fun <laughs> like a uh, ranked rank i uh, like skill based uh, matching like matchmaking just is this not a thing i guess okay either way right robert and james were like all right even if this kid is cheating like he's not getting caught for it and he isn't cheating so blatantly that we think he's gonna get like banned mid game so we really gotta like sit down strategize and figure out a way just to survive this like even if we tie we just can't lose to this guy all right i can already hear all you guys typing away on your overly expensive keyboards about how you can't tie in bed wars and it goes to like bed's broken and then like dragons or whatever you know what i mean okay right they're trying to like they're trying to at least make this game close at a minimum but anyways they're losing ground the other team is like you know getting upgrades they're you know they're putting pressure on them the minecraft kid was like really close to breaking the bed and was just like knocked into the void you know by uh james or whoever right it was getting really close and right, they were just talking to each other like, we got to do something like kind of quick because we're going to run out of, and as soon as that happened, right, they all happened to be at mid aggressively trying to get emeralds, bed broken. They see that message pop up in front of them. If you don't know in Bed Wars, you get, you respawn in infinitely. You can respawn as many times as you want, but only if your bed is still there. Once the opposing team breaks the bed, then it's GG. You know, it's, it's, it's unlucky. Like you will not respawn. You're still alive. You're still alive, but once you die, you will not respawn. So it's a really big deal, and you try not to have your bed broken. And they're like, that's it, man. Like, we need to get this bed. We just, we just can't win without getting the bed. I mean, obviously. And Robert and James were talking to each other, and that's when they notice in chat, final kill, player A, and player A, and the Discord's like, god damn it. Like, and they're like, dude, what happened? He's like, I don't know. He just snuck up behind me and just knocked me into the void. And then soon enough, a little bit later, later, player B knocked into the void as well. And, and they're just like, oh my God, like, what are we going to do? And this is when Robert and James say, you know what? This isn't, you know, this isn't like the, the best way to win. But we're going to wait till bed breaks. Because if you don't know, after a certain amount of time, the beds will just automatically break, even the ones that haven't been broken yet. And it was about two minutes till bed break. He said, you know what? We're not going to risk it. Let's just wait it out. So they decide to camp at mid collecting a bunch of emeralds and kind of very carefully running back to one of the islands to buy upgrades and stuff and all that good stuff. 
So yeah, sure enough, Robert and James as the only two left on the team versus a team of four with a bed. They bought everything in the book. They bought, you know, punch bow, fireball, ender pearls, you know, speed pots, invisibility pots. Like they, they, you know, they even had a knockback stick. They bought everything they possibly could, camped up middle, got geared up as much as possible. Because at that point, right, it was close enough to bed break that it was just, it just seemed worth it to try and hold it out like that. So anyways, right, the time ticked down, and then finally, all beds broken. It's a 2v4. They're stacked up as possible, they pre-gap, they're in the middle, and they're just waiting. And sure enough, right, Minecraft Kid and his three other teammates, they start walking to the center. And as they're walking to the center, or moving to the center, running, whatever, sprinting, however you want to say it, James is able to get an expert bow shot on one of the players and hits him as he's jumping over, which just sends his, like, knockback just enough to send him into the void. 3v2. So now that, you know, odds are looking a little bit better, but still the Minecraft kid is yet to be defeated in PvP. He has died once or twice, but this is either, like, a very, like, he falls into the void on his own accord, or he was knocked into the void when he wasn't fighting back. So they did kind of realize that there was a massive skill gap between the Minecraft kid and the other three people that were playing with them, because they were randomly assigned. The Minecraft kid did not come in with a teammate, because no one in the class really liked him that much and wanted to play with him. So it was just the other random people who didn't sign up with someone. Or maybe two of the players signed up together and just got assigned in the group of four. But anyways, right, Robert says, I'll take on those two, James, you take on him. So that kind of evened out as they assumed that two versus one, two of like the other players would equal at least one of the Minecraft kid. So they went into fight and uh, Robert was, you know, it was kind of close and he almost died and he healed up afterwards, but he was able to defeat the two other people. But he looks over as James is just getting comboed, hit again and again and again. And he's like fireballing and purling out of there. But the Minecraft kid he realized beds were going to break, so he got some pearls. He got some gapples as well. He stocked up not as much as those two, but just enough to keep like catching up to, uh, catch, catching up to James, not letting him fully heal, and sure enough, final kill, James. And it was a 1v1. And at this point, Robert was like, there's no way I beat him. Yeah, my stuff is better, but he's just so significantly better than me. And Robert, you know, you know, you know, looks at the Minecraft kid who now turns to him, is finishing up, healing up, and looks directly at him and starts kind of like pacing towards him or sprinting towards him or whatever. And, you know, Robert, you know, he, he kind of fires some bow shots to kind of knock him back a little bit. You know, he pre-gaps gaps again as his like other absorption hearts were like removed or whatever. But finally, man, he can't do anything else. He has to fight. And this is when he kind of felt the sketchy hit. So he went in for a hit. He didn't make it. The Minecraft kid hit him. He flew back at least five or six blocks. And as he's flying back, he gets hit again and flies back another five or six blocks. And yes, you could say it's, you know, ping or connection to the server as Hypixel is not known for its great ping. But this just felt sketchy to him. So he had two Ender Pearls and he took one and he pearled out of there and he pearled to an island. And the Minecraft kid apparently didn't have any pearls, but was starting to bridge over. And at this point, right, Robert was just like, oh my god, like, this is it. This is it for me. And then all of a sudden... He sees the Minecraft kid, you know, bridging over, and the Minecraft kid pops. He explodes, and his inventory spills everywhere, and then the victory screen appears on screen. And he's like, did he log out? Did he quit? And then he checked, and he's like, what, what just happened? And everyone else on the Discord team speak was like, oh my god, like, Watchdog just got him. If you don't know, Watchdog is Hypixel's anti-cheat. The Minecraft kid was cheating, and he just got banned. Subscribe if you haven't already, and now go watch another video. There's some of the recommended, some on screen. Go watch one, I'll be very happy. Goodbye. Today we got a story time of a Minecraft kid who thinks the back rooms are actually real and it's a serious danger and threat to everyone. Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Sit back, relax, leave a like on the video to claim your free nothing, and let's get right into it. So we're going to call the subscriber who sent in today's story, we're going to call him Will. I got that name from the comment section down below, so if you want me to use a name, either your name, your friend's name, your dog's name, basically any name that you like, if you want me to use it in a future video, just leave it down below in the comment section. And I'll definitely make sure to go through and find and look at those. And I mean, I use those names in the comments of all the or the names of all the videos. But anyways, right? 
So Will told me the story about, you know, this was actually quite recent. So if you don't know, a pretty viral video came out or set of videos where someone made a very realistic, uh, like kind of like movie type short film about the back rooms, which if you don't know, it's like an old internet legend that like, if you're not really careful, or if you're really unlucky, you can quote unquote, no clip, which is like in a video game where you like clip through a wall, you can no clip out of reality into the back rooms, which is like these repeating, really dark, musky kind of, uh, this kind of like dark, musky, repeating set of office type rooms where these like monsters live. It was a really great short film that was based on that, uh, based on that kind of like internet mystery or whatever. And when it came out, right, it was like they made it really realistic. I mean, obviously, it's it's as realistic as a fantasy horror like a house made film would be, correct? But at the same time, they did a really good job. However, recently. The subscriber, Will, said that his friend, who was definitely a Minecraft kid, saw the videos and believed that they were 100% real. This is kind of giving me vibes of, like, uh, I don't know, Salem Witch Trials, or not Salem Witch Trials, the, uh, what's it called? The movie called The Blair Witch Project, where when they released it back in 1999, before the internet was as, like, normalized as it is now they made it like as if it was a found footage and that like what was going on was actually real and people kind of did believe